again you have to keep low offset stems available because we are bringing the acetabular center of rotation laterally there will be issue with reduction so if you put a standard neck length and offset it may not reduce so that you must keep in mind then we had ramnamurthy very non challengely demonstrated a severe flexion varus knee through a ps uh, surgery because they are all experienced surgeons you know they've done hundreds of cases like that but we have to uh, follow the whatever is the sequence coronal plane your capsule release normal cuts additional distal femoral cut if required and then we should see whether we are uh, doing a ps knee or a cr knee or whatever is the issue and finally we had a revision hip by professor rajesh malhotra from aims it was a failed pf and again a common scenario in our country infection again a common scenario in our country so we must make sure that we pay attention to the ot protocols have a good antibiotic prophylaxis make sure that our juniors who are the uh, ot nurses so we assume that they know how to scrub so a lot of them do not know how to scrub what is the time for uh, contact how to conduct themselves in the ot that is an important part of an arthroplasty setup how they should not open the doors and all even in our setup i find lot of them they try and open the door and come in when the surgery is going on so this we is a non negotiable thing which you have to be very very cautious and in a tertiary referral center we are seeing many many uh, infections which are uh, gram negative multi drug resistant and that is going to be the next bug bear for all of us because if we have multi drug resistant infections believe me it's very very difficult to treat and you can lose patients as well so i have lost three patients in the last two years to multi drug resistant infections so we need to be extremely careful about that how we are going to uh, make sure that our ot setup everything is up to the mark up to your own standard uh, the sterility the autoclaving the way the people conduct themselves very very important so he showed us how to use a distally loading stem uh, in that situation so distally loading stem uh, like monomod was used in this particular case so, so people still use cobalt chrome distally loading stems which are not good because the cobalt chrome will fail if there is no proximal femur it will break after 5 6 years it will break so don't use fully porous coated cobalt chrome stems the standard of care today is to use a titanium grid blasted stem which is conical in shape and which has got flutes for fixation and in a complex situation where there is trochanteric insufficiency we have to do a dual mobility cup to begin with because you don't want to take a chance especially if the cup size is smaller you can't put a 28 mm head because the risk of instability is higher even if you put the component in fantastic position it will still have a chance of instability so any revision surgery the most common cause of failure is uh, instability so we have to keep that in mind and you know preempt the complication already they are in trouble there are so many surgeries they have gotten done another dislocation now we are in trouble you know because financially there is an issue in our country who will pay for this and uh, that's a big challenge so you have to preempt all complication the other thing is trochanteric refixation it's a mandatory thing so if your trochanter to vastus lateralis sleeve is intact in general it is fine but you should definitely try and fix the trochanter back to as much tension as possible to increase the stability so that was well demonstrated so now we are ready for today uh, it's a hectic day so we have to start on time so there is no choice is it ready i think we have a primary tkr by dr balu and uh, vinay will uh, coordinate this session okay i am always there any questions please feel free so this is a open platform this is not like we are not trying to you know di do didactic it's an interactive thing you have a very small doubt please feel free to ask please feel free to ask it's a learning session all of us will learn in the process don't feel it's a small doubt you don't go back with any uh, unanswered question please feel free to ask you can catch me chandrashekar vina any of us we are outside also you can call, catch us and then ask a question please feel free good morning to all the doctors happy doctors day to all the doctors who have come to share, share your knowledge here so this is a case of a patient 58 years old female so by actually it's a case of bilateral osteoarthritis in primary we have planned for left tkr and our pre op evaluation shows her rom was from 0 to 90 degrees and uh, comorbidities was hypertension this is her uh, x ray we planned for uh, left knee uh, tkr showing uh, tibial lateral defect this is her scanogram 
and these are rvm videos i mean next uh, pics showing a full extension and uh, range of flexion but crp was within normal limits 65 and hp was 12.4 ESR was 50. Yeah, this is our video of uh, left knee showing our volume. Maximum we are getting is 90. Sir, gate video. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Balwardhan, sir, is uh, operating surgeon, and Dr. Vinay Kishor, sir, is the moderator. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Balavardhan, sir. Uh, can you hear? Yes. Morning, Vijay. I'm, 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 am I audible? Yes, yes, you are very clear, sir. So, yes, sir, uh, we, the our delegates have just been shown the preoperative x-rays or clinical videos. Okay, and okay. We, we can, you can start off, sir. Yeah, by far, I feel this is, this is the most uh, simplest of the cases uh, compared to yesterday, yesterday. But we cannot take any any case as a simple case or a straightforward case because, as we all know, uh, we don't know where we land up, how we do. But uh, we treat any 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 case or every case as a, a, a case with a, to have a better outcome, and patient should be you know benefiting from this surgery. What we do, that would be the motto for all of us. I'm starting. Yeah. Okay. So just yeah. before you start off, like what approach do you generally use, sir? I'm, I'm, I'm using a medial parapetalar approach. Okay. Generally, uh, people pre prefer to, uh, you know, go in a central, but I keep my skin incision also a little medial to tibial tuberosity so that when we do a compression dressing and all that, I don't use a, a drain or anything now. Okay. So to not to give a compression over the tibial tuberosity, can you see? Yes, sir. We can yeah. see. Uh, yeah, tibial tuberosity. Or... That's okay. Yeah, tibial tuberosity. So I generally take incision little medial to where we take the medial parapetalar incision deeper. So I'm starting my incision medial to tibial tuberosity and five centimeters over the superior pole of the patella center. Amma, give me that knife. No knife. Yes. And we assume take that you can under turn. Take a cautery. Ah, oh, pardon? Uh, I assume we are doing it under tourniquet control, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. How yes. much pressure do you generally use? Generally, 330, 350, depending on the blood pressure. Okay. Do you use exsanguination, sir, as a routine? Because I've seen a few surgeons who do exsanguination. Pardon? Pardon? Exsanguination, uh, generally, we do. Generally, we do. This, this gives a better uh, uh, yes. clear cut tissues and all. It's very, very nice and neat, tidy. Yeah. Ah, touch this, Chetanya. Touch that. Touch Generally, we have this small vessel there, infrapetala. I straight, I start from there, then go, leave the cuff little medially on the patella. I'll be going over the tibia and touching the femur also. Then I take a curve over the uh, superior, lat superior medial pole of the patella. Then I generally give a, a lazy V-shaped cut on the 
uh, quadriceps so that when I'm closing, I can identify that spot and start closing from there. Some people have said, you know, uh, the marking and all, marking and all that stuff. So I generally do a lazy V shape, L shape or little lazy V shape. So I do that so that my closure will be accurate where I want to approximate the tissues. I generally take a little longer incision above so that I don't have any patellar issues or anything. People say that, you know, it causes some pain and all that stuff. But if you do a proper balance and proper uh, tissue handling, that should not be an issue. Yes, sir. I do agree with you. Yeah. So I use, uh, not like, you know, I don't use cautery or I don't use knife always. But I, I do as as far as my need is. Can we switch like, the cameras? Cautery or yeah. I'll 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 move the camera a little this way. Can can you see now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. it's very no, that's not that's nice. That's nice. If 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 any hindrance, please let me know. Do we have a top view, sir, in this OT? Pardon? Do we have a view from the top? Does the OT top. do the OT? Yeah, light? yeah. They are they are trying to do something. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll. This is the camera is in the light. Camera is in the light. Okay. So we are trying to focus on it. Yeah, I think that would be better, isn't it, Vijay? Yes. It's good. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah. This is this is where I gave the I gave the lazy V shaped uh, incision so that you know I can approximate this and this area when I'm closing when I see the patella tracking before closure. I'll see the patella track, tracking with uh, two or three sutures. That gives me, I don't know, but I, I that gives me a different confidence. Like, you know, before you close, you did the best for the patient. Yes. Yeah, I'll go up to mid coronal plane, mid coronal plane. I'll separate the meniscus also along with that. So you have done all your medial release now, sir? Yeah, medial release. Most Amma, I, I need only dry mops. I try to, you know, help myself with these, releasing these uh, structures just behind and inferior to the uh, inferior to the patella, lower pole of patella and behind the uh, patella tendon over the tibial tuberosity so that I can evert the Patella on set. Comfortably, 180 degrees. So you evert your patella, sir, with your approach? Yeah, you were generally, generally. That gives me a, a different comfort. Of course, in, in some valgus knees, valgus knees, patella doesn't evert. Yeah, so you just slide it. Doesn't evert. Knife, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll not take off the whole fat here. Yes. I leave some amount of uh, fat on the on the patella tendon, whatever the benefit it has. Chaitanya and Ashish have been helping me whenever I'm here for my visit. Uh, they've been very good to me and they're taking care of everything as we do and leave, that, that thing will be there, whether the patient did well or not. They'll be updating me what all patients are doing. You know, initial stages when we came here, uh, we did a lot of uh, uh, post-traumatic uh, valgus, fibrosis, whatnot. Uh, hope I had that kind of a knee here, but lack of time, we cannot do those time-taking surgeries uh, probably on this juncture. The di very difficult primaries, I would say. Spike? Yeah. Big, Sir, uh, Bird yeah. has amazing uh, variety of clinical material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a boon to the boon to the patients. Uh, uh, careful, Ashish. No, yeah, it's a bit tight compared to. Yeah. To come here. Yeah. Tibial tree ready, wait. Kunama. Tibial cut. As, as, and when needed. As much as needed. I'm trying to do that. You know, snapping the tendon is not good. So you can you can try to little bit of release. That's okay. It'll be better. Once we do cuts, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. 
don't this do release more. you have d- just done sir is that a routine thing or do you But, just tailor it to a specific case tailor it to the specific case okay. specific case yeah i don't generally do routinely as per, as as the difficulty yes sir yeah as the difficulty we face then we'll do that i didn't check the laxity or whatever in, just before starting the case but i i i understood what exactly because before cameras were on i checked so it's it's a well balanced knee not a really lax knee with the move jaisindra two bet in right la chun center kodu ha middle edge esko middle edge esko but you don't really require because uh, there is no tibia vara ha uh, uh, there is no tibia vara so there is no tibia vara here so we, we are not we are just trying to keep that in the center of the ankle yes. so you do always do your tibia first sir yes always i do tibia first But when we do bilateral my other colleague will be operating on the opposite knee i generally do do right and the other colleague of mine will be doing the left knee left knee so he when i am doing this he'll be doing the femur first so that you know instruments and all will not, there will there won't be any issue with the instruments so we we do simultaneous bilateral knee replacements most of the most of the uh, knees in my practice Yeah, uh, 80 percent of the knees are uh, bilateral, simultaneous. Yes. Even in robotics, we have done bilateral. Yeah. Bilateral, but it's it's time taking, a little bit of time taking. Otherwise, uh, you can't do both would, at the same time. Yeah, same time. It's it's time taking, but we don't if you don't have a big list on that day. Fine. Fine. Okay, for the sake of patient. Yeah, this is appropriate cut. I'm not I'm not really going deeper. Yeah. It's a three degree slope. Locking pin as well. Just a lock. How much cut are you taking from the affected side, sir? Yes. Just two mm from the medial uh... affected side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no. It's just gonna. Osta. Be careful, gentlemen. Be careful. <laughs> i do very gently till i lose the resistance of the posterior aspect of the tibia generally people dislocate i keep seeing people dislocating the knees after cutting all this but i generally don't dislocate i feel we are uh, strip, stripping more of soft tissues on the back yes sir that is a very good thing to do sir because dislocating any will cause a lot of soft tissue to rip off from the posterior parts of the bone and yeah. probably that yeah. will lead that will decrease now the to pain this is yeah. now the concept of concept is do less yes. gain more yes. do less and gain more definitely a very good idea but not at the expense of not, not in all the cases not in all the cases though not in all the cases some cases you definitely you need to you need to you know do all, all you require to in in some knees in some knees uh which are little difficult and not straight forward not straight forward what we do is uh we we i i do generally ps so i take off the uh, the the pcl straight away so so are you planning a ps knee or a cr knee in this sir because i didn't ask ps ps a ps knee yes. so i generally is... don't do uh okay. uh a ps uh, cr knee okay fair enough nowadays i have started doing few few of them with the when i'm using striker the smaller knees 
So at what stage do you remove the PCL, sir, in your practice? If if uh, if if the, it's a lady patient, if it is a lady patient, smaller knees, smaller knees, I try to avoid box cut, preserve PCL there and then. Now initially itself, generally we do ACL, we take off ACL and uh, um, uh, we take off ACL, then we we hold on with. With PCL, we don't take it out in the in the beginning itself. Once once we we see, then if the femur is femur appears to be smaller, we try to avoid box cuts and preserve PCL. PCL is good, not not too many osteophytes on the uh, PCL area. We try to one sec take it out. Yeah, yeah. I'll just see the. Uh, amount of TBI cut. Yeah. Can you can somebody see this? Yeah. I'll just see the gap here. Hello, Vijay? Yeah, yes, sir. Are you there? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can see yeah. you. Yeah. That's it. I'll see this gap. It's sufficient. It's 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 apt. Yeah, it's so, yeah. good, sir. Yeah. 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 I try keep it there. Yeah. Now this is transepicondylar line. I generally don't. I'm, what I'm doing, I'm just doing it. Uh, yeah. It's transepicondylar line, and I feel the femur. I'll take the center. It's slightly. If you if you white side line, you uh, draw and the transepicondylar line. This will be on the superior medial medial quadrant of the core. Okay, thing. that's the yeah. entry point for the yeah. The entry point for the femur. What we do for the retrograde femoral nailing? Yes, sir. Retrograde femoral nailing. Say about 5 to 8 centimeters above the notch, ACL attachment. Drill speed, isn't it? Yep. I generally do this, but uh, striker drills have this uh, oscillation. This is going only one side, but when you press both the buttons, it, it oscillates back and fro, back and fro. Once I enter, I just do back and fro. Okay. Uh, one sec, one sec, back and fro. And generally, I I try to you know wash medulla before putting the medullary canal. Yeah. Some studies have shown you know uh, washing the medulla medullary canal before you put the bone plug. And what's the valgus you generally use, sir? Five degrees. Assume. Generally, generally I wash by yeah, five degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Usually we put five degrees. One sec, dear. So you do strict mechanical alignment with all your knees. Yes. Yes. Now put the pins. Don't tap. If you can drive the drive the pins, that would be better. It's sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. I think minimal femoral cuts would be fine because she has got very good extension, though flexion is restricted. Flexion was up to 90. So that's the reason I had to, you know, release this quadriceps a bit for. Uh... Yeah, but the extension was complete. Right? Ah, extension was complete. Yeah. So uh, you, we generally expect the quadriceps tightness here. Yeah. Yes. Keep it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. You always do your uh, complete surgery standing at the foot end of the patient, is it, sir? Because I personally move around a lot when I take my femur cut, I go to the other end of the patient. Yeah, it appears a little less, but I would be it should, it should be okay with me. We'll just see the extension sp spacer, we'll just see the extension gaps, then we'll see what we can do. 
Out Spikes. Yeah. We can't see the gap. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah, she got a good. That's a 9 mm spacer that has gone in, isn't it? Yeah, 9 mm spacer has gone in. And even you see the. Uh, the I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah. You are, if you wear the gown, then that would be. Yeah. Can you see, Vijay? Yeah, that's a, that's a good alignment. Camera? Screen, screen, dear. One sec, Vijay. This, this, this. Show that. Show that. Show that, bro. That 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 is visible there. The projections, sir. Ye bata do na, bhaiya. Vijay. Oh, mata ni bhai. Mata ni. Adi kar ekta sound gudo bhai. Ha, Vinay. Vinay. Are you there? Balardan, sir, sorry, we we had lost you for a couple of minutes. You're just back on screen now. Vinay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Now the spacer Yama. Can you see us, Vijay? Yeah, yeah, sir. Nice. Yeah. Sorry, Vinay, just you when you put the spacer in and yeah. And we are trying to see the alignment. The spacer not gone in completely, but when we do post release and all that box cut, we do all that, it will come. This is alignment. Can you see? Yes, sir. The axis looks good. Yeah. 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 That's it. And it is, it is stable. It is no very stable. Very stable. If I can have this kind of a stability and balance, I think that should be fine. So that looks like a good adequate rectangular gap. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Take off all these pins. Ashish, ye bhi nikal do. I'll clean up just Kondi. Then, meanwhile, I'll just take off this. Oh, I'll rally the camera. Rally the other. Bristol is a man. I'll go to Bristol. I'll go to Bristol. I'll go to Bristol. I'll go to Bristol. No, people will be waiting there. So, we, we just scrape it off with the Bristol. One cut, then rest all. Just scrape it off. Anyway, we'll be taking off this synovium yes. till we'll preserving fat layer over the synovium. Can we? Can, I, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, I'm just trying to denude this uh, area, supra uh, uh, trochlea, supra trochlear area, anterior surface of the femur okay, yes, with yes, bristol. Yes. We make a small cut and bristol so that we don't disturb the thing much. But once once we are done with the femur, oh, oh, oh. Chaitan, you will score the big room, the tight on the other focus. And then I'm not calling him. The neighbor, 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 that it's not very clear for us, but uh, is that a big lesion on the medial distal femoral part, sir? Pardon, pardon? Uh, the distal femoral cut surface. Ah. Is there a lesion on the medial distal femur? On the cut no, surface? no, no. It looks like, you know, it's, it's a part of it, blood, 
part of it didn't bleed yeah that's why it is like that so we are trying to do with the minimal light so that because i yesterday i was sitting there i felt that the light is too bright and you know it's it's hampering everybody's vision so the cameras are showing as if you know it's very bright and all that stuff the reason i'm saying it sir because we've had cases like this you know similar looking x rays inocus looking x rays yeah we keep denying the patient surgery but they keep coming back and they insist for surgery and when we actually do commit to do a surgery and we do it we it, in my practice in my practice i counsel them a lot against surgery because it, 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 it's in the market it's all number game nowadays it's all number game nowadays i think all the junior upcoming surgeons should take one 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 of my these sentences as a guidelines for the for the for their credibility in the market their uh, confidence on their their patients you know you know you you do what is required for the patients whether whether patient goes and gets it done or and with another surgeon that's okay but you have to follow your ethics and you have to stick to your ethics and try to take your time to counsel the patient who come prepared for surgery with you because somebody has got it done next to their house by me so they were very happy so they want to come and get that done whether they required or not it's the second question there are pains definitely mild pains but that's not the criteria for the knee replacement balu that point is well taken uh, the point we never trying to make is some of the decision making is not necessarily on the x-ray it is on the yes yes it appears but the tibia, tibia was tibia was worn out definitely and femur also was slightly worn out and if the patient keeps coming back repeatedly there is a possibility of what we call as a spontaneous osteonecrosis of the knee it's a very painful condition painful condition yes but this is one of those repeatedly and a middle aged or you know around 50s you are not convinced about knee replacement do get an mri done mri yes yes very often is a, there is a posterior horn of medial meniscus root tear which is not yes. in the common uh, people because you don't know degenerative and, degenerative meniscal tear yes, yes. can root i go ahead with the cuts uh, kiran because you leave it in a couple of years it will progress to arthritis so these people will have a sort of a empty posterior part of the meniscus you can't see any meniscus meniscus is extruded uh, out of the joint there is subtle edema on the femur and tibia and it's very painful and if you look at the uh, the coronal sections then you can see that the root has avulsed from the insertion onto the thing and it's a very simple procedure to just reattach the root through arthroscopy and if somebody is coming back repeatedly with severe sudden onset pain in the medial side of the knee and the age group is between 45 55 don't neglect that don't just give some painless just do an mri scan see whether it's a meniscal root tear address it appropriately address it you can do an arthroscopy and address and also and also sometimes when you do a proper physio pain modalities and uh, uh, some medication whether they work or not it's a discussion so it's a separate discussion but you know a lot of people of this kind of uh, knees with good physio and medication and uh, 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 counseling they have done really good so i could we, in initial days we could postpone the knee replacements up to 5 to 6 years even in the age of uh, say 40 Five fifty-three, fifty-four, around fifty-five. Yes, sir. But uh, as K K sir was saying, we have been seeing a lot of these song lesions where the X-rays look innocuous, and we are not convinced. But the patient convinces us to do the surgery, and we are convinced when we do the femoral cuts. Yes. Can I? Can I see? Sorry, ma. Small blade. So, how do you adjust your rotation here, sir? i i took 3 degrees of uh, acceleration but if you see in some sudden situations uh, where you have a prominent uh, medial femoral condyle with lot of varus then i try to take 6 uh, degrees of external rotation that really helps because in, in flexion also you will be able to get that rectangular gap what you got in extension yes i'm doing the trochlear uh, cut now yeah to remove so reverse
Nibbler de Yeah, you don't have to lift here. I push it, it comes forward. <laughs> that lifts up automatically. Ashish, yeah. you may take the whole knee that side. You're too energetic, man. <laughs> Sorry, sir, but these osteophytes. But have you removed the PCL yet, sir, or it's still there? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I would try if it is good because not much of a destruction in the knee. Yeah. Probably we would go get away with this okay. lateral meniscus. We'll take off. I'm trying to take off the lateral meniscus now. Okay. Uh -huh. Just want to. I just want to uh, check the surface, the junction, so that you know you preserve the popliteus and all that stuff. You need to go up to the rent of the uh, uh, meniscus. And take off without uh, doing anything to the popliteus. The popliteus is also important. Yeah, I'm trying to take off the meniscus. Yes. Go in line with the, the menisco capsular junction. Go up to the rent, which is there for the popliteus. Popliteal hiatus. Yeah. Yeah. So try and I'm taking off the uh, box now. A little bit of uh, lat posterior lateral condyle uh, of the tibia is left here. Yeah, I'm just trying to take it off. Go part to open Jesus. Yeah, you can see it here. No, yeah, it's just behind. We have, you we, have never we, really completely subluxed your knees, isn't it? Sir? No, I never did that. Only in certain difficult knees, not, not yeah. stuck to one concept, but but mostly I would prefer to do like this, what I'm doing today. Uh, uh, leave the soft tissues as they are, unless, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, pop little sister bursa developed and bursal tissue is around there. So try to take off that bursal tissue. In those situations, I may take off. Otherwise, that's mostly commonly seen in posterior medial aspect. But Amma, uh, CR femur, itches. CR femur, CR femur trial. We'll try because PCL is preserved. We'll see if it's good. It's good. You can trial and see what. Can yeah, be. yeah. I just want to do the trial. Ah, uh -huh. CR trials leva raja. Huh? It's all flat now. TBI is all flat with, with you know, as much as needed. Soft tissues have been taken out as much as needed. Yeah. Ashish, hold this to you. Hold this. Yeah. I'll try to uh, release a bit on the on the medial aspect so that there are there are a little bit of osteophytes very small though but i'll take them off to to clear the uh, you know tenting of the uh, medial collateral you know that also one of the causes for pain yeah medial gliding surface should be the medial gliding surface for the menis uh, the collateral should 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 be smooth so that you know it doesn't trouble gliding of the collateral there are osteophytes. Yes. On the post medial aspect. Probably these are the things which cause pain for a few people. But she, she had a good extension though. I generally, before cutting the box, I try to take off these, uh, the post medial osteophytes here and the post medial osteophytes here okay. so that I can centralize the femur properly. I can, I can centralize it. See now, if you, if you rotate the ex leg externally, you can see all the post medial aspect. Yes. Now, I didn't. I didn't finger any of the soft tissues. Mm. I didn't fin finger any of the soft tissues. I feel she'll have very less pain post-operatively if you if you follow this. Come on, you have a small nibbler. Definitely, sir. As you said, yeah, I'll, less is I'll, more. yeah. I'll be stripping a little bit of uh, the structures here. You can, yeah. 
these are the structures here so not not really down below pol uh the 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 popliteal uh, oblique popliteal ligament and all we don't i don't finger them only in case of uh, bad wearer's knees i do otherwise half a centimeter from the surface of the tibia half a centimeter from surface of the tibia i try to uh, strip and uh, that's it leave it there leave it there as much as possible uh, take off osteophytes yeah some people do uh, uh, this after you know doing a tibial trial yeah so this but, 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 is a but, standard but, part of your and um, technique or it's just customized to patient sir it 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 i'll definitely customize according to the because i don't as i told you i don't stick to one kind of a thing but okay. basics this basics are same like you no know, stripping yeah. tissues very less and now because the cr trial is coming it's on way on the way so that i thought why to waste time so i i just do this okay they don't have cr trials <laughs> yeah save some time yeah yeah we got the cr team oh yeah gentle taps yeah give me give me give me give me give me the, give me the hammer yeah this is a this is a replica appears to be replica of uh, you know lps and all that stuff so yeah. we took less tibia less tibia it should come well but generally in these knees i usually take little more of uh, P, uh, tibia 2 mm more we'll see this now it appears it, it appears tight just see yeah see it doesn't go it doesn't go yeah both sides it doesn't go so i would do 2 mm of tibia and leave it i'll repeat 2 mm of tibia i'll cut yeah then everything falls into line all these which you know if you see all these uh, uh, zimmer uh, all these implants have this posterior edge a little this is not there in this but implant it will be there the extension is also tight sir is it pardon the extension gap is also tight it will be definitely okay Okay. That's okay. So many cases they are arranging. That's not there. Probably there are lack of sets. Because all the needs of all the surgeries are being done with max implants, so they they are facing some issue with those. Yeah, they're facing an issue with the. with the implants or instruments we have to get going see blade generally i i take it 2 mm extra in in these these max implants uh, implants are when i do zimmer zimmer i take 2 mm extra yeah that's that's a usual practice but here let us let us see people are watching us so let us see how things go so all all of them can uh, you know understand this with these implants you know, it's nothing but tailoring tailoring things in particular to the patient and also implants i'm taking two mm more yeah this will be because the tibial surface was very smooth 
I was just thinking how uh, cement interdigitation is going to be. So this will help in cement interdigitation uh, also. Uh, better tibial surface for cementation. Better, now. Yeah, better tibial surface. Do that a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. This is good. Mm -hmm. Give me give me that file. Oh. Yeah. See? Punch. Gone in. Gone in. This is nine MMR. Yep. Well, it appears to be tight. Got to most of that here. Hmm? Does it still look tight, sir? Yes, it still looks tight. Tight means it's just it. Minus the better, say. Huh? Nothing but it's a minimalistic approach. Yeah. Zero to two M is Yeah, that's oh. okay. We'll get a bigger insert. Yeah. The side session. That's all. That's it. We took a little bit of TB again. Hammer. Nibble riches. Yep. Generally, you know, first cut itself, I take little extra. For uh, CR knees, it's uh, uh, better to do a tibia first followed by the femur. Don't you think so? Definitely, yes. Yeah, so, and even with the trial also, sometimes I find it is difficult to push the uh, tibia after the femur because PCL is intact. Yes, uh, yes. So if you are in plans. Push, then it is probably too loose, the flexion. Too loose, yeah. Sometimes we do, we make the tibia sit, then slide the femur over the so femoral implant. 
Yeah. Then you check whether the polyethylene is articulating anteriorly or middle or in the posterior part and posterior part. appropriately recess the PCL. Yes, yes. yes. For PS, this is fine. You can put the femur and then tibia, but CR, yes. my observation generally, it is difficult to do. Uh, the, yes, difficult to do. Most of the modern CRs have got some lip or something they've made for additional stability. They're not the uh, correct yeah. flat on round designs. Yes, <laughs> yes. Nowadays, TBS is also, even with the, with the uh, CR, you have a deep dish. That's deep right. dish, so, even in the, in the, in those the, things, in the we cannot just push them inside. Yes. If you're able yes, to push yes. it, it's too loose. Too loose, yes. Now it's gone very comfortably. I generally don't want to push it really hard also. Can you pull out the pins, please? Pin puller it, It's a puny knee. So try and preserve. Yeah, that's perfect balance. And good extension, good extension. You're getting good flexion too. Yeah, quadriceps is a little tight, but you don't have to do. On physio, she would get. She's That's getting very well balanced. Sir. Yeah, well balanced. And sir. mid flexion. Yeah. There's there no pull out. Yeah. So nice. Thank you, Balu. We'll leave you to cement and prepare the tibia and cement it. Thank you very much for a very. Uh, nice demonstration of a cruciate retaining uh, knee replacement. So it's shown Thank all you. sequentially. And uh, this is what we require as surgeons. We need patience. Surgeons. Patience. Right. You need to have patience. That's uh, what is needed. You get everything right in the first go, especially if you are not using technology. So yeah. you come into a very large tibial cut. So he has done it properly in a conservative tibial cut. If required, you can always revise and then get your uh, balance right. Okay. Right. So we are yeah. ready with the next surgery. Uh, thank you, Balu. Huge round thank of applause you. for your uh, uh, good surgery. So this thank is you. a case which is a revision TKR by Professor Rajesh Malhotra. Uh, case, can you? Oh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Dr. Chandrasekhar will be moderating this session. Uh, good morning, Dr. Chandrasekhar. Are you looking as handsome as you were looking last evening? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. So, uh, if you can show the x-ray. Uh, no, in fact, uh, I thought you will say, sir, I'm looking better today. But anyway, this is uh, a patient who's 69 year old, had a primary surgery done in Hyderabad. And uh, there's apparently a history of trauma. I don't know how much to believe it. Because once you're unstable, you can just fall. And... Uh, then uh, these are the x-rays, so there's an all polytibia and uh, uh, and the femoral component which looks to be rather well fixed. The petla has not been resurfaced and, uh, you know, I will do just what I normally do, uh, not uh, inflate tonic in a 69-year-old right from the beginning. So it may be a little bloody, but I think it's okay because uh, I don't believe in doing things differently during demonstration surgery from what we do. Normally, it's good to have, uh, you know, it's good to um, uh, have Tony K on. Uh, so, we have started the exposure and uh, just give me a moment, please. Taken the medial parapetal approach, we have done an aspiration, just show the syringe. So, before that, uh, you know, this is clear fluid. Obviously, it is yeah. Not, uh, uh, what's your name? Your name. You missed that initial exposure, sir. But did you have to do any uh, quadriceps snip or anything? For no, no, we are just at the very beginning. I have not done any quadriceps snip. Let me introduce my team. I've got Dr. Deepak with me here. And uh, then I've got Nirmal. I've got Tejasvi. I've got anesthetist, uh, Dr. Vineet. And we have the technician from anesthesia. Girja, and then we have the scrub nurse here, Padma. Right? So, I have not yet done a snap. So, I am just seeing uh, how we go. And if required, I will have a very low threshold for... Uh, give me a straight home. And, yeah, they, give me this one. doesn't matter. So, let's keep it here. So, um, let me externally rotate. Keep rotating. So I think the key thing here is actually 
removing the implants without causing further bone damage, bone loss. Assess the integrity of the collaterals, manage the both flaws, and decide the constraints. And get a good fixation of the implants into the host bone. For this kind of cases, what uh, implants would you uh, sort of preoperatively plan and order for, sir? So I would keep a, a constrained implant. I, I could get away with the PS kind of implant, but actually, I will definitely keep a uh, LCCK or the various values constrained implant or even a hinge in the backup because yes. I tried to see various values under NFC, there was not much. So I'm hoping that the collateral, um, collateral will be fine. Just a minute. I'm not, I'm, don't worry about it. So we have a little, a little more better relief laterally, but you see, I'm not in a hurry to um, to evert the petla. It becomes easy one. So like, give me a moment. Oh, yeah. Give me this what one. blood parameters you look for for a single stage revision before going for single stage revision? Omen. So there's a question from the audience. Yes. Uh, what blood parameters would you uh, preoperatively order for when you are planning for a single stage revision? Which tests? So for a single stage revision, I think uh, most important thing is whether you know the bug or not. What is the status of the soft tissue envelope and the kind of the bug which you have, whether it the bug is uh, uh, if it is resistant to multiple drugs and it's not a suitable case. If the soft tissue envelope is bad, it's scarred, it's not a good case. And the physiology of the patient, you know, the a uh, very old coma patient with comorbidities. I would be, although they are the patients who often ask, interestingly, or there you think that patient may not be able to tolerate too many surgeries, but uh, they are the cases which actually uh, may not do so well with one stage, but they are the ones who ask for it. So that's, it's interesting because, and even the, you also as a doctor think that if you, this patient may not be able to tolerate two surgeries, so you will have to take a call accordingly. Yes. So, so I can see this tibia is not looking very great. As you thought that uh, you would have such a guess from the x-rays, there's extensive bone loss on the tibial side. This is just stunk. Right? So, a lot of people, people remove the femur first because it's somewhat easier. I remove uh, tibia first, mainly because I can actually hinge against this component. If I remove femur first, I'll still put, I'll still put the remove femur back there, and uh, you know, next yeah. more, and then retract it against the the take the retractor behind and make sure that I'm not crushing the bone. Then we keep it here. Keep it here. Okay. I need another woman for a minute. Another woman. Do you have? Yeah. Keep it there. Take it out. Take that one out. Yeah. So keep it here. So to keep an eye on the petrol tendon all the time, but I think we are gradually getting there. Reasonably good. And uh, uh, just give me an optotome. Let me just try. How, how was your experience with all poly, sir? Because you, I know you were doing quite a lot of ascula up uh, before, but uh, any experience with uh, all poly, sir? So, you'll be surprised. I've never done an all poly. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, I don't mind the concept. In fact, we are designing a knee where uh, the eye poly is there, but only in one form, that is the medial stabilized. Um, just need a little more delivery forward. Let's keep it here. Let's be very gentle. Yeah. It should come out. So, uh, but I think it's it's a good option, really. Uh, literature has shown a lot of very good results. Uh, 
some of the reasons are you know you, you don't have a proper design available to you in india what you do is also decided mainly by availability of the implant which you have yeah yeah i can see that Just leave it or leave it here give me ah. leave it yeah okay give me another moment so i was listening to the uh moderation of the first case and i think a lot of very important messages were given including you should be very patient and it is it is actually very relevant get in the room and change my gloves so i can take an easy way out i can just take a saw and cut it i'm just seeing if we can manage without that I can just take a saw cut off the keel and do it but i have a feeling that we might just get away with it a little bit of patience a little bit of time otherwise there's nothing stopping me from yeah i just need the the beard to be subluxed a wee bit more forward maybe i'll try a little more relief uh, posterior medially let's see that your uh, ostetum yeah ostetum Very small. Didn't have anything bigger. Okay. Oh, oh, this couldn't wait to come out. Yeah, right so now, it may be somewhat easier to. You want the petal and get it out of the way. So this is this was the main culprit because as it was evident on the X-ray, also X-ray it looks as if the femur is in too much of valgus, but uh, it was the tibial component which was uh, sunken and loose. So let's start with the extraction of the femoral component. So let's divide both it, please. This is the Peter catch it too. This is an old man. Forceps, forceps, please. So this is what my mentor David Morgan used to call the demolition phase. So demolition phase, we will actually just take out everything, and yeah. then you start reconstruction. Finding the plane. This kind of reaction is very classical of a reaction to polyvir. Just send it for histopathology. Okay, now we'll take. Give me a human. Give me a human. Okay, or give me reciprocating saw. Okay, can just hold it here like this. Okay, you have the reciprocating saw. I'd ask for it. Do you have a giggly saw? Do you have a giggly saw in the meantime while you are setting up the Atul? Where is Atul? No, no, you give me something to remove this, please. Atri, Atri. I mean, keep the old keyless. Jen, not a good idea to do 
missing okay sir there's a question from the audience yeah uh, so they're asking if the femur is well fixed yeah get away just with uh, you know tbl revision yes that the is a described sir. thing we all surgeons will try to find out the easy way out so uh, i'll tell you what the issues with that are one is it is of course i would prefer that in an old patient provided you have a you know what the implant is which in this case i don't know but it's definitely not meryl the second thing is that uh, the component which you are retaining should be not only well fixed but undamaged and uh, other thing is that some people have shown that the uh, results of one component revision are poorer so that is something you have to keep in mind and weigh this thing very carefully many times the problem with some uh, system says that uh, if you need a, to put a revision uh, poly you need a stem or a taper plug or something in the tibial component to lock it yes. if it is not there the component will not lock so yes. that is why uh, sometimes we just put uh, uh, a taper plug or a stem uh, so that in case there is a only a poly wear subsequently you may be able to change the poly liner only but then those the literature is not very uh sort of um supportive of that but it's a good convenient way so a short answer is yes if the patient component is well fixed and uh, is not damaged and you have a, a compatible component on the other side so we have the saw yeah but by and large i think single component uh, revisions don't have that great results so this is here so like you were discussing it's important it to take out the the component is very well fixed you know what the component was what the make was and uh, if you're pretty confident that you know there's absolutely no problem on the other side perhaps in exceptional cases you can get away with that yeah the other and especially when you are doing a revision you have to put a stem so Mm, let's take it. Might need a change of battery. The Is key, anybody looking for a giggly saw? The key, uh, the key step while uh, extracting any well-fixed component is to stay in the interface between the implant and the cement, rather than between the cement and the bone. And you have to minimize the bone loss. No, it's okay. So the idea is not to damage the bone and have as little bone loss as possible. But you know, it really is uh, made very challenging by the fact. because then you cannot work around the distal condyle because the pegs are in between you just hope that pegs come out of the come this way it's there Found a giggly saw. Let's give me some time with that. So these old-fashioned instruments will work very well. Okay. Yes.
Okay, so that's the usual thing. Okay, that's all right. We have moved a fair way. Give me the saw again. Saw. I need to rotate it. Let's rotate it. Those who are going for darshan can go now. Buses have arrived. Uh, I can use osteotome, but you need very fine osteotome. But stacked osteotomes are out of fashion now because they compress the bone. Um, Can we see? Yeah. So there's another question, sir. So do, would you prefer flexible osteotomes or giggly saw for uh, uh, removing the component? Can you hear, sir? Yeah. Can you hear, sir? Hello? Yeah. Are we audible? Yes. Yeah. There's another question, sir. Yeah. Any advantage of giggly saw over a flexible osteotome? And if there is a, uh, if the, uh, if the reciprocal saw is not available, can we use Wait. dictionary saw? The yeah. Saw? So, you know, you can use anything in your what I believe is it's very easy to get into the plane behind the flan on the interior cortex. And once you enter the right plane with giggly saw, the chances of going into the bone become very less, unlike the reciprocating saw. Yes. Even the reciprocating saw can slide and go into the bone. So giggly saw is actually, to me, the most preserving, bone-preserving instrument. But you see what happens. This is what keeps on happening. To keep on breaking giggly saws. And yeah. uh, so, so reciprocating saw is ideal for the posterior condyle and the distal condyle. But like I told you, here the challenge is the peg. I think his patience is key. Posterior condyle? Don't be in a rush to bang it out. Because you'll remove too much of condylar bone. Na? Posterior condyle. Karna You're impatient and try to so, get it out. So this will come out anyway. The question is how little bone you damage in the process. Otherwise, uh, exactly. removing is not an issue. It's only how well you do it. But uh, the technique for that does to tone. If you see, if you use them, you will realize that they will tend to go into they'll tend to go into the bone rather than okay. So this is another way which we are demonstrating. Yes. We need one more hammer. So if you take two osteotomes and simultaneously tap them from both sides. Yeah. That is also a good way. This is another useful technique to minimize the bone loss. So rather than uh, using one hammer, if you use two hammers to simultaneously, you know, extract it out, bang it out from both sides, your assistant and yourself, both will be simultaneously. Oh, help me God. 
So guys, this is what we have. I don't think it's bad at all. Yeah. Look at the femur. Yeah. So I think patient, as was being said yeah. right in the beginning. <laughs> so now, just lift up. I think at this point of time, give me a mop. So thanks for your patience. I think now mop. We'll try to make it a little quicker if we can. So how are we with time? How much time do we have? I think Dr. Krishna? There's, there's enough 50. time. So we have to do it very slowly then. So I think at this point of time, I don't need this. I need to make a box. I think all this will help me deliver the tibia forward. The key thing is to convert a complex situation into a simple situation. So if you avoid bone loss, then your revision also becomes easy. You have a lot of little bit, little bit of bone from here, but as you'll see in a revision component, all that will anyway go out with the box. Not much worried about that. Uh, clean the cotter tip, please. Thanks, Deepak. I said thanks. Do I have a nice curved osteotomy? Curved osteotomy. Yeah, thank you. Don't, don't do that way. We are not working. It will not help me. Yeah? I want you to help me and not waste your energy on things like that. We are not working. So I would do it with the mop. That's why Deepak is ready with the mop. So I found this technique very good, actually. Even in the primaries, you do some release the attachments of the capsule with diathermy or, or uh, knife or whatever you want to use. And then use a mop to sweep off the uh, capsule from the posterior condyle. So what that will do is now, it will help me bring my tibia forward. Okay, so let's see what we got. So give me the Homan, please. Curved Homan from, no, not this one. Bent Homan, this one. Yes, this is okay. Rent there. Yeah. So it makes it a little easier to ping it out. That's the maneuver which I did. So we got the tibia here, right? Give me the forceps. Forceps. I'm clearing the tibial surface. And be ready to clear the, yes sir, thank you. Yeah. This is just a cortex left you saw from okay. Give me a curate and then we start preparing the tibia. So the principle is we prepare the tibia because that's going to be the common platform for flexion as well as extension space. Yes. Have a stable fixation and then decide what we are going to do. Tibia came out very nicely, you can see that. So, we were discussing yesterday, you'll always find the fibular head in these cases. This is the fibular head. Yeah. So, you can just decide where you're going. I'm not much worried about this cement right now. We'll just see how it goes. A lot of damaged bone on the medial metaphysis. Yesterday, there was uh, maybe a good case for a, so there was for a sleeve or a cone. So, one of the consistent landmarks would be the fibular head. 
So okay, which, uh, now let's have, so mm -hmm. you have to be very careful. If you look at the x-ray, the component is going laterally, right? So I don't want to perforate the tibia direct drill. You have a thinner drill, 3.2, okay. So the joint line should be roughly about a centimeter above the level of the fibular head. So that's why you do the tibia first, always. You need thicker, bigger drill. Second drill. Make use of bigger it. drill. You had another drill. Yes. This. And then fibular head or medial. No, I want a bigger drill. Yeah. Bigger drill. No, 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 no. You're not got it. Give me drill again. Give me drill again. Yes, thank you. That's what I want. Is the drill ready? In most situations, it's the flexion gap which is loose in case of revision situation. There's always flexion extension mismatch. So you try to do the tibia first because if that letters both the flexion and extension gaps. Once you get the joint yeah. line, then you try to build it up. So if yeah, image, build it up with augments, whether it's in the distal femur or in the posterior femur, depending on the situation. So actually, almost on the femoral side, we could get up almost with the PSC. Yes. It is bone is so well preserved. Yeah. So issue here is about the collateral integrity. That's what we have to see. Clean up cut. Give me something. Thin. You think you're right? Do the intermediate okay. done. Then you do a clean up cut after that. Okay. Okay. Now give me the remote. So we have entered the canal. We have made sure that we are not eccentric or we are not perforated. Get the flat corner. Yeah. Give me on the gun. It will always be an irregular, uh, you know, or undulating. Next. To the tibia after you remove the tibia. So you make it flat, but don't try, try to remove too much of tibia again. Because you'll be, you'll be further lowering down the joint line. What stem are we going to use? Next, what size is it? Keep telling me. Everything came out. It was loose. Was there any distal cement plug, sir? Mm. Sorry. Was there any uh, uh, cement in the uh, medullary canal? Cement there is. We have curated out some of it. We are just we are centered in the canal. I am yeah. just going to curate it out. I did curate out once earlier. Yeah. Give me curate again. So, what has happened is, you know, all that cement column is actually, if you see, my curate is going here. That's because it is just tilted like that. Right? This is what it is. But once you go straight in the canal, I think the graduators ream out whatever thin mantle of cement was there. You really? This looks good. We got the intermediary rod in, I um, mean the reamer in. Now just keep it here. Now give me the jig. So now we have to make a stable tibial platform and see what build up we need, right? Yeah. Here. Okay. Give me an angel swing. I just want to see where my refreshing cut will go. So it's something here. Maybe a little more down. Okay, give me the pins. We have a rod here to make sure that we are at the right place. Give me in the drill or okay. 
but we don't want to go down because it will take it from plus 5 here. If you want me to put there, I can put. No, it's okay. I know, but. Give me the other pin. You are not credit pin, so they are not supposed to go with this. Okay. Bonus erotic switch. Okay. Now, this one comes out. Yeah. Okay. Handle. Hold it. Yeah. And give me the saw. Quite a friendly fitting stem we got here. So that's the right size. So we'll likely need an augment. So we'll decide that now and take a cut for augment. Make sure the jig does not move. Now we'll see this is five and this is ten. Let me see the ten. Okay. How is the bone quality, sir? Bone quality is not great. He's sixty-nine year old, has had a failed component sitting there for a while. I think we'll just let it rest. So the, the pins are uh, converging, so I think that's a good thing. Give me the pin puller. Okay, Austin. So we got this cut here. Refreshing cut. Yeah, take a nibbler. Take it. Give the data me. Forceps. You can pull it out. Yeah. This one. Give me this. Yeah. Okay. So give me a tibial base plate. Let me see the size of the tibia. And then we'll put a 10 millimeter augment medially. Some remaining bone, we better to sort it out now than to do it later. Okay, so Tibia looks a little small. Okay. 
ऑगमेंट लगाओ मीडियली Yeah, hold it there. Good. Let's clean it. See. Okay, we are ready with size two tibia. Yeah, any one. Ten seconds. Hey, that's fine. No, hey, you are putting that directly. Are you giving the stem? Then give the stem. Okay, okay. Give the stem. To build size stem. To build. Okay. And let's take out the stem also then. Is there a lot of lysis under the on the medial side, sir? Sorry. Is there a lot of lysis on the medial side? Yeah, I included it in the ten millimeter um, augment. So this is. Can you show here? No. This is how it is now. We've got the platform here, the ten millimeter augment here. You know, please for that. And this is how it is. Yeah. And there is some bone remaining here. Just give me a saw. Okay, Nibla. I don't want to go viciously with the saw on the lateral side here. So patience is the key again, as always. Okay. Okay, give me that tibia again. Yeah. That looks the right size. Can we? That looks pretty good, actually. Looks pretty good. We have to fix it in the proper rotation. So. Now, put one pin key and put it behind also if you like. Okay. Uh -huh. They have decided the tibial size. They decided the tibial rotation. Yes. One more pin. Whether it's a primary or a revision, the basic principles remain the same. You know, you need to get a stable platform and then set your rotations correct. Never internally rotate the components. So make use of your uh, available landmarks: the tibial tubercle, the center of the mm -hmm. angle. So get your rotations correct. Whether it's primary, com complex revision, whatever it is, the principles will remain the same. Setting properly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I like those systems which have an ability to give us stem with the brooch. So now prepare the tibia trial with ten millimeter medial augment. Nibbler, nibbler. We saw again. Leave, 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 leave,
This is all bone. Okay. Eh? Nibble. This is table bone. Sir, are you preparing for the augment now? I have actually taken a cut already through yeah. the uh, table cutting jig. So what I did was I did a refreshing cut on the lateral side. Then I took a 10 millimeter cut on this side, which is reasonably good bone. Sorry. Sorry, what are you saying? One mm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. In this kind of a case, would you have ideally preferred for any other kind of fixation device like sleeve or anything? Yeah, actually, give the tip here. It's not coming away. So it's your preference, uh, personal preference, you know. Take it forward. It is your personal preference. But uh, generally, I have started feeling that uh, these leaves are really very, very So I need to take a cut. Yes, I know. We'll take it out, mark it. I just need to align. Okay, take it out. Extractor. You have a this one? <laughs> give us the bad ostrum you had, which you gave us for taking out ostrum, and give me the reciprocating saw. Give me the reciprocating saw. Reciprocating saw. Reciprocating saw. Sir, with regards to the stem, sir. Sorry? With regard to the tibial stem. Yeah. Uh, would you prefer to use a longer stem or a short stem? I prefer a short cemented stem. Yeah. Is the norm, unless there was a reason to use a long one. Yeah. Give me the saw again, normal saw. And give me this first. Give me the normal saw. Yeah. Artery. Give me something, forceps or something. Okay. okay, give me the trial TB again. Let's put it in and impactor. So, and more. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. Again, take it out. Give me a keel preparation again. Yeah. So this is a very common thing. We have got chaotic bone. 
the keel is under prepared see maybe uh, try that one. yeah sometimes you have to saw it to saw through the keel yeah. if i know Stopping it, too. Yeah, you blur. A little bit of bone remaining posteriorly. So any of these could be stopping it. Okay, so give me the trial again. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have a towel clip or something. Cocker. So a little bit of bone remaining here. Let's sort this out. So there's a question from the audience. Yeah. During this uh, step, when you are actually debriding on the posterior side, yeah, to uh, protect the neurovascular structures. So the knee is flexed. I respect the capsule, and I am a little more brave on the medial side than going towards the lateral side. You will not see me doing all this uh, so much on the lateral side. Yeah. And you see, I remain close to the bone. See how I'm just working on the bone. Right? Yes. So, you know, we remove tumors from distal femur and then put APCs. All that is possible because keep the knee flexed, respect the capsule, remain there, and you are good. Now, see, so often when you flex the knee, the neurovascular structures will get pushed backwards. Okay. So try to do this step in extension. That's when uh, the risk of damaging neurovascular structures will be more. So whenever you are trying to, you know, work on the posterior aspect, do it in flexion so that all the neurovascular structures will get pushed. One more five, one more five mm? Yeah. Yes. 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 So the thing we have decided to take. Yeah. Yes. We should, we should be. Then with the femur tibia preparation now, we have just decided to put 5 mm augment on yeah. the lateral side and make it 15 on the other side. Okay. This is the shortest time we have, right? Uh, we have a smaller than this. 75, hey? So we'll cement the 75. 5 on the lateral. Yeah. Nibbler? Because we are going to cement the stem all the way. So there's another question. Yeah. What's the maximum limit for uh, the uh, the thickness of the augment. So it's an interesting question to ask a person who has used allograft all his life. <laughs> so obviously, you know, when you keep on adding augment, the fixation of the augment mental becomes an issue. But I'll not go beyond 15 millimeter on one side. If I need something bigger than that then I can always put a block here. But then my preference on my life has been for uh, allograft. But for two reasons, um, this is a better choice here. One, of course, is that uh, we don't have the bone bank here. But the second is that in 69 year old, I would not sort of worry too much about the putting the augment. You know, It's only for younger patients where you want to build the bone stock for a future revision that it is important. Yes. Preserving bone stock is the key. You can't 
keep on you know put augment here augments. Okay, have to make use of any bio putting here ha ho gaya लगाने के I use a stem for that. Sadhi, Sadhi, na mat sad. I think we'll have to hurry up now. Now we are taking too much of time. See, be, be, uh, you should have had a good pre-operative planning for that kind of situation. If your bone loss is extending so much distally, then you have to go for alternative methods of fixation. See, whatever you are working up is above the typical level. So if it is going beyond that, that means you are dealing with Auri type three defects. Auri classification is used for correct classifying this bone defect. So if you are going into that kind of a situation, you should be correct. Correct. Mega prosthesis. Yeah. So that's the important uh, when you are dealing with these preoperatively assess for the amount of bone loss. and uh, auri classification is a very good classification which helps with preoperative planning and intraoperatively most of the time the bone loss is much more than what you actually prepare for so you have to be prepared for the worst so revision scenario you can't just just go like that without any adequate preoperative planning so you should yeah. uh, end up in a sorry situation intraoperatively yeah Offsense. We got this sitting here, and the bill preparation is complete. We'll leave it here, right? Now give me something to open the canal. Pointed drill. You had uh, first three point two. Is there a uh, offset stem option, sir, in this system? If we have an offset stem option. I don't need it for tibia. Yeah. It's actually, it is straightforward. It was centered, but we have an option here. Three point two, and then that uh, pointed drill. After that, uh, as long as you carry your question, just give me the pointed drill. Bone loss is above the level of tibial tubercle. It you will not require more than fifteen or twenty. Usually, that is the scenario. Okay, and then give me the rods. Let's do. Let's move quickly now. Get the rods ready. How to assess the? Just like home. Scale size. Pocket. That that sir has done. Like how you do your first. No, give me the mask. Coverage. Please. No, let's do it. Coverage quickly. of the tibia. No, but you will. we will be able to know you have put an augment and we see it is matching with not catching medial flare of the tbi isn't it the sizing is same like your primary only so this is 100 and more 35. important look at the lateral side is there any under 30 tapi okay. is there any excessive overhang or ha chota bhi dal sakte hai 75 bhi dal sakte hai bone to acche This is hundred. You have seventy five, na? Sixty five. Then let's put hundred. Next. Next. Ah, huh. next. B. B and C. I know. C lenge. Look out. Ye. No, we finished the diameter. What trimmer have we put in? Is complete this. Last trimmer was what size? Twelve. Twelve. You have further trimmers. Thirteen. Fourteen. 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 Sir, what was the size of the uh, tibial component, sir? Uh, two. Two. Yeah, this is right. This is good. 
दिस इज वॉट इज इज थर्टीन ठीक है थर्टीन थर्टीन नाउ दो गिव दट क्या है डोंट वन फिफ्टी यू हैव डोंट हैव फोर्टीन नो थर्टीन पॉइंट फाइव वॉज दिस वन ऑलरेडी यूज ओके so uh, tibia was size 2 and the femur is size so you see distal femur is just perfect actually there no need to cut anything they not even refreshing want to do refreshing 2 mm yeah. yes so now prepare for the anterior posterior cut 4 in 1 so we have uh, got pretty good distal bone here so i think the biggest message i can give you from this surgery is that if you are very careful in removing the component then your choices are unlimited you can do anything but if you take away a lot of bone now you didn't have to take any distal cut here okay and uh, so that's a very important message sir so if you are a little bit patient while removing the component your further surgery becomes easier so now it's almost like a primary situation there yeah it's actually like i said earlier maybe you know an lcc ke kind of uh, verify constraint insert or a ps insert even a ps insert can do we'll see how it goes angels will i think let's hurry up now we have been perfect so this is you can see we have got perfect size here and uh, this is c um, there's a question from the audience sir how, how do you assess component, component, component rotation at this plus lagane padenge so just a minute take it out take out everything Take out everything. So you see, uh, my extension space is less, and my flexion space is high, as always happens in these cases. So I will have to use augments posteriorly because I have to upsize the femur. Now give me back again. We'll use augments, this uh, posterior augments on both sides. Give me again. So I just was trying to see whether I can put a size B. Because, but if I put a size B, my flexion space will become very loose, and then, right? So I have to check the rotation at this point of time. So once you get the tibial rotation, so I can if you show here, my tibia alignment is perfect. Leave it. So this is also matching with my rotation. So if your tibia is perfect and your cutting block is parallel to tibia, another good way to know that your rotation is perfect. Okay, good. And uh, of course, the put the angel spring again. Okay, so so this is just perfect. It's giving me the right anterior offset. Just flex it and just show me saw. So I need to use both sides posterior augments, ten millimeter. So if you just prepare quickly, saw. So, Keep a trial ready. Okay. Huh? Five 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 Because it's so perfect, there's no need to use. And if I try to show you an offset stem by putting it in zero offset, I'll just end up taking out bone for the posterior. Okay, posterior five in. Okay. Box cut. Box cut. Osteotome. Okay. Nibbler. Okay. Picture for the box. Uh, what is the reamer that is in here? Okay. Larger side. Okay. So let's see how well it is sitting. Can you show from the side? Show me the pin. This is perfect. Maybe the size was between B and C, but I think for flexion space, we have to hammer. Okay. Okay, okay. Give me the reamer. See, it has hardly needed anything in terms of 
taking out bones or anything. Five millimeter posterior augments on two sides. Perfect. Implant ready for low. It's not going through this, man. Pushing. Galat laga hai kya? Aya. What length stem are you using, sir, on the femoral side? Now, pin, pin, pin. Uh, chamfer. Saw. Saw. Small blade. What's the length of the stem, sir, on the femoral side? So, both sides, uh, this side is 100. Uh, 100 on the femoral side, 75 on the tibial side. Okay. And the diameter? Careful mop and an inch. How water give me a nibbler. Me a nibbler. We are ready. In puller, give me the femur. Femur trial. So this is how it is. Looks beautiful. Yeah. We got the right size femur. It's size C, fitting perfectly. And uh, then we'll use the, this is the smallest. I need the smallest insert. You know, this. Uh, can you see this from the side? Can you even see it? Uh, we have only the frontal view, but not the side view. We'll try to give you the side view. Can you show from here? Side. Insert. Okay. So I'll do something else. Do you have a CR insert? So, just take it. Whatever you have. Any other thing? Okay, let's deliver the tibia forward. You have 12? 11? 11? So, what I'm trying to show you here is that you know you can put this constraint and leave it. And see the Integrity of the uh, collateral. So I've got a nine millimeter insert here. It's becoming no, it's 11. 11? Nine. Yeah. So it's a little hyper extension. And now you see. So I don't really need to put an LCCK kind of insert here. I've used an uh, various valgus constraint implant because of the bone defect. Yeah. But you see, the collaterals are very good here. So I can, this is a normal PS insert. Yes. Right? Is that a 9 mm or 11 mm policy? It's 9, but it's a little hyper extension. Yeah. I won't have this uh, insert in the. It's starting 11. So that is another reason why I can just put a uh, PS insert. I don't want to uh, cause a flexion uh, deformity here. Right? I think we can be. The collaterals are good. Yes. So there is absolutely stable thing here. And if you see, we have not cut any bone anywhere. Right? Yes. This is good. So I think, uh, so another reason is that you don't really have to put uh, the uh, the virus virus constraint implant. If the ligament integrity is good, you don't need um, to put virus virus constraint implant. You want to try 11 in this case? Because the, the flexion and extension spaces both are tight. So if I want to put 11, or uh, this thing, I'll have to reduce uh, my uh, Augment, which I can do actually. I can work on that and uh, take out the five millimeter uh, 
augment from tibia on the side. So I think the tibia lobe from the lateral side was not too much, it was not sitting. That's another option we can do. But see, if you ask me what if the ligaments are not good, I would say that I would distalize the tibia and then put a varifarial complaint. Uh, so what that will do is the yeah. two millimeter, the uh, extension, additional extension space will be taken care of by the inside thickness or maybe by 13 millimeter thickness. And the flexion space will be taken care of by the virus valgus constraint insult. Yes. So I am very happy with the PS insult here. That's what I'll put. But if I didn't have intact collateral, I would have uh, moved the tibia down. And then I would have put a, a 11 or a 13 constraint. Right? Yes, yes. So this is good. So we are ready to cement. So let's assemble the implant. Yes, sir. That's a great message. Yeah? As you can see there, because yes, the right, are, P, right, P, C, K. Uh, are still intact, yes, so, sir could get away with a normal PS inset rather than going for a high. Oh, what is this? He has not used. No, I don't want PCK poly. I want the regular because PS any, poly. Can uh, you go on this now? Uh, you know, chance that you know if the collaterals are not great, then um, perhaps he would have gone for a VVC like kind of an insert. Okay, high post. Ah, that will do. Yes, yes. Want to remove the femur. Go for a thicker poly because even in flexion, it looks a little bit. Uh, we'll inflate it just before cementing. Thing, then uh, no. you have to address on the tibial side. So you change the poly. Okay. Ostetome. Oh, yeah, this is the one we were looking for all this time. If it is hyperextending, then what you do is? Uh, femur. Okay. So use distal femoral augments and then bring bring the femur down. If, if, it, drill. if it is purely yeah. hyperextension, show me, show me C, PS, go with C or tibia 1, 2. Then C, 1, 2. This, not, this is 11. I need 9, beta. Uh, I need 9. C, 1, 2, PS, 9 millimeter. Okay. This is 9 which we removed. That we remove the nine. That is used in case. Okay. Okay. There's no, there's no need because. Mix the cement. Watch. Injection. You should not be in doubt. In, Intraoperatively, if you are, you know, doubting that, that means you have to go for a higher constraint. Length hundred on this side, seventy five on this side, right? Large, in principle, higher the constraint. Higher the chances of Love. early uh, aseptic loss. Lysis. So minimize the constraint whenever possible. Minimize the bone loss. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Love. Please open the implant quickly and two posterior augments and four tibial augments. Of course, least affected side. Yeah, yeah. Gloves. Yes. Medial fifteen tibia, right five tibia, distal femur both sides five millimeter. Yes. Posterior. Posterior. Gloves. Okay. Ready in the ready in the two minutes. So is the half a second. Wash near. Sir, I think uh, that was a uh, excellent demonstration of a complex revision case, sir. Thank you very much. If that is a good buy, right? So all the principles were uh, fantastically covered. Uh, uh, the patience was the key. Uh, you could convert a complex situation into a, a simple uh, revision by minimizing the bone loss and taking enough time to address on the tibial side, not being in a rush. So getting the tibial plat stable tibial platform and uh, uh, achieving the correct joint line, that was a key step. And uh, again, not compromising on the soft tissues and uh, addressing the bone loss adequately with augments on the tibial side. and. Uh, Again, uh, getting the situation, uh, getting a 
smaller size poly rather than increasing the poly too much we could get a minimal size poly and with minimal constraint because higher the constraint again you are increasing the joint uh, reaction forces and chances of early failure so we could get away with, with a less constraint implant and with a stable fixation thank you very much sir we'll carry thank you on. very much for so beautifully summarizing all the messages thank you very much you just did it perfectly yeah it was a pleasure sir thank you what sir so we'll go ahead with the next uh, uh, next uh, live surgery by is it krishnakir uh, yeah marker pen this kuma marker pen gaal summarize good morning all the next case is the 28 years male patient diagnosed as diplastic uh, dysplastic hip bilateral and planned for right total hip replacement and brief history of the patient is patient had a history of fall 15 years back and patient complaints of pain in both hips and difficulty in walking for past 10 years and yeah. examination of right hip the attitude the patient in supine position where heads center supine spine neutral on both hips and knee joint is neutral position and foot is gravity adjusted plantar flexion oh. and the rom of the patient is the flexor degrees what is the camera abduction oh, nice. 20 degrees adduction 20 degrees internal rotation 30 degrees external no, no. rotation marchadu adu correct unde true lengthening of 1 cm of when compared to the opposite side and these are the x ex rays of the patient showing the dysplastic hip bilateral marker pen ima thundaraga and blood investigations hp 13.3 and crp is 2.5 and esr is 12 మార్కర్ పైన ఉందమ్మా బోస్ సెట్ ఓపెన్ చేశారా బోస్ సెట్ ఓపెన్ చేశారా బోస్ సెట్ దీపక్ ఎక్కడ ఉన్నాడు బోస్ సెట్ ఓపెన్ చేసిరా లేదా బోస్ సెట్ ఉందా బోస్ సెట్ బోస్ సెట్ మార్కర్ కావాలి ఒకటి మార్క్ చంద్రశేఖర్ కెన్ యూ హియర్ మీ ఎస్ ఎస్ లౌడ్ అండ్ క్లియర్ రైట్ సో ఐ థింక్ యూ గోన్ త్రూ ద ఎక్స్ రే దిస్ ఇస్ స్పాండెల్ ఎపిఫైసియల్ డిస్ప్లేస్ యా uh so the spine is not stiff in this patient so the standing and sitting x rays have been done and the uh, there is not much uh, problem with the stiffness of the spine but the femur looks very very narrow so uh, these are cases where we have to keep a modular implant on standby yes so, so we have a modular implant on standby and uh, cup also we must have the smaller size cups available so we have kept bantam cups starting from 40 which are available and sometimes they will require 22 mm head so you must be aware of that yes. so we will uh, see how it goes are you planning for a posterior approach we are planning for a posterior approach patient is in the left lateral position right side up and you can see this is the uh, greater trochanter this is the head end of the patient this is the foot end this is anterior and this is posterior yes okay in the same word the marker for next so we will take a standard incision in this case for demonstration purposes but you can do it through a smaller incision as well so the incision is centered over the posterior third of the greater trochanter and half of it is up and half of it is down so that we have exposure of both acetabulum as well as femur కోగ్లేషన్ సెవెంటీ చేయండి దట్ ఇస్ స్టిల్ ఎ స్మాల్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ బై ఎనీ స్టాండర్డ్స్ ఓకే ఐ హోప్ ఇట్ ఈస్ విజిబుల్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఐ విల్ ఇంక్రీస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ విజిబుల్ ఎస్ ఓకే సో ది ఇన్సిషన్ ఇన్ ద ఫేషియా ఇస్ డన్ ఇన్ఫీరియర్లీ 
because it is easier to incise it there and then go up. And you can see that we are incising till we are able to expose the uh, trochanteric bursa and the vastus lateral is there. Yes. You can see that. And now you just split the muscle in the line of its fibers, gluteus maximus. So you just split it in the line of its fibers. And once you split, now you can position a, a self retaining retractor, either a Chandli. Yesterday we saw Rajkumar show without any uh, self retainers. He was just using uh, the mastoid type of retractors. Right. So this, since this is a, uh, the problem here is the uh, size of the sockets. That is the problem here. Otherwise, everything should be okay. And you expose the gluteus maximus tendon. In this, I am not releasing yet because the hip doesn't look very tight. Right. The next step is to identify the posterior border of the greater trochanter. And that is where the incision will start at an angle of around 45 degrees. And you can see the gluteus medius come into view. And the hip is extended and internally rotated to make sure that the sciatic nerve goes back. Yes. The gluteus medius now you can see here is that uh, red muscle which we can see there and you go underneath the gluteus medius and the gluteus medius never exceeds the tip of the trochanter. So that is a reasonable landmark. So you position your first spike underneath the gluteus medius and you can see here that there is a gluteus minimus which you must not damage because if you damage this, it will cause heterotopic ossification. So uh, you have to be careful. This is the piriformis. The piriformis inserts more anteriorly than we think and we must keep on exposing till we come to the tip. Otherwise, we'll have to do a lot of soft tissue release from the lateral side when we are doing the surgery. And this is a sentinel vessel, which is the anastomosis between ascending branch of medial circumflex and inferior gluteal. So it's a guide that we are in the correct direction. And these are all consistent landmarks and the provided we stay close to the posterior border of the abductor and the greater, greater trochanter, it's very unlikely that you will cause injury to the sciatic nerve unless you're over lengthening the leg by more than two or three centimeters. Yeah. So now I'm positioning the second spike underneath the gluteus minimus to expose the anterior capsule. And you can see we have exposed the anterior capsule. Just one second. There, you can see the anterior capsule. I think it's a little bit of a stretch for you guys to see that. But now I'm incising along the superior border of the piriformis, taking the whole short external rotators along with the, the capsule. And then I will go down on the uh, greater trochanter close to the posterior border of the greater trochanter. My medium spike on the medium cautery on the internal rotator. And we're releasing it close to the uh, greater trochanter. And once you have done that plane definition, we must not violate the edge of that flap. So the idea is to stay inside the flap as we're doing the procedure. We will encounter the ascending branch and the capsular vessels on the way, which you must gently try and uh, coagulate and go on your way. Can you take, give me a vicryl stitch, please? Number two. Mm. Mm. So at this stage, we will put in the coaxial stitch as described by both, sir. The leg is in the uh, whatever neutral position for that patient. We mark the collinear axis of the limb. That is the longitudinal axis of the limb. And take a stitch above the level of the hip joint on the pelvis. So we take in that line, we take one bite. 
We take two bytes and come back on itself. It is not 100% accurate, but it will give us some measure as to what is the preoperative leg length of that particular patient. I think this patient had a lengthening uh, pre-op. Is that correct? Uh, we don't, we can't be sure whether it is lengthening or shortening, yeah. but is, he is longer as compared to the opposite side. So we use this instrument to make a mark on the greater trochanter. <coughs> and this is the original length of the leg. Now you just don't disturb it. Leave it inside. Now here we should not be in a hurry to dislocate the hip again. As I've been repeatedly telling again and again, is longer on the quarter tip. Cocker split. So now you, I told you we should not violate the edge of the flap. So you grasp the uh, posterior capsule flap here and yes. at a suction. suction. Right. So we have few capsular breeders which I'm trying to get rid of the way. So you grasp the posterior capsular flap and at 7 o'clock position you give an inside out release incision. So once you give an inside out release, you can see this muscle that is the operator externus. Yes. So that is a guide that will, you know, determine how much you must go. Channel pin. And now you can expose the ischium and put in a channel pin inside the flap to retract all your posterior structures out of the way. Yes. So as long as you are working inside the edge of this flap, not violating it, we will not cause any damage to the sciatic nerve. Yeah. So now you are ready to dislocate. So two advantages. One uh, as a retractor and also to identify the plane to stay within the uh, limits. So the uh, now we have dislocated. So I want adequate internal rotation of the leg. So yesterday we were talking that uh, if, if can somebody show this one P in P leg position. Isko, mere piche laga do, to, udar laga. Show this leg position. Picture in picture dikana hai. Picture in picture dikana hai. Don't shift this camera. This is fine. It's coming. Huh? No, we are not able to see. Please. Yeah, just give us a second. We are sorting that out. England is watching. Onion. Is one name. Entertainment. Ready? Okay. That's okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Nibbler. Okay. Uh, they are not able to figure it out, so I'll just carry on. Uh, we, we the, get the picture idea is to internally rotate the leg to 90 degrees because that is where you do the femoral preparation. Yeah, we're able to see now actually. You're able to see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, now you mark the center of the head, which is somewhere there, and center of the or one bony mark on the trochanter tip and the tip of the greater trochanter, and then you make your measurements. Yes. Scale. So the length of this leg is around 50 and the horizontal offset is only 35 or 36. Now, if we use a standard implant in these sort of situations with a standard neck length, we will almost cut till the level of the lesser trochanter. Yes. And sometimes the offset is so big that we will not be able to reduce it. Now, we have a uh, short neck length option in Merrill where we have a 132 and a 128 uh, neck lengths as well. So that is a type of stem we are aiming to do to start with. But even if that is too tight, then we will go for a modular implant. So that is the plan for this patient. Sure. So. 
The leg is at 90 degrees and I will make my... Bone cut about a centimeter above the lacetro canter. No, so sometimes you will have to cut across this, otherwise, the GT will get avulsed, especially in osteoporotic bones. So, do that. And now you are able to double clip car. Did you take a step cut or? Uh... Yeah, we, we took a step cut and we are able to, you know, complete the bone cut there. And this is a bit soft, the bones. So I'm being just a bit careful because I don't want to leave her on the box crew, huh? Drill it bit there. What are you going to do? You can uh, do that beforehand. Sometimes it makes it easier. So usually it is stuck anteriorly to the soft tissues. And you can use this to That's a, a very useful maneuver to make your life easy. Yeah, yeah. so we yeah. all have struggled with the removal of the head. Yeah. So I think uh, it can be done before also because it's on ream. So you can do it before. Double clip, please. Double clip came in no problem. Yeah, so now it comes out. So at this stage, we have to measure the diameter of the head. Show me. Because the measurement will give us an idea as to what is the size of the socket. So Dr. Because Chandrasekhar was talking yesterday. So this now is the head is so deformed. Eh? How accurate would your sizing be? Yeah, it will not be accurate. That is why we have a levia of 3 to 5 millimeters. So uh, this is around 47. So which is not too bad for a... Uh, a dysplastic patient, but sometimes you have to be careful. Acetabulum may not be as big in these deformed situations. And the dimension is sized based on the AP diameter. Yes. Now you see uh, Vinay is holding the leg in 55 degrees of flexion and 45 degrees of internal rotation. And he uses a bone hooks to pull on the uh, femur. And I am palpating the anterior superior iliac spine. Yeah. And I will position my first anterior retractor in the direction of the anterior superior iliac spine into the anterior column. Yes. Yesterday I was telling the anterior retractor is a guide for screw positioning as well for us because the line connecting the anterior superior iliac spine to ischium is the one which divides acetabulum into four quadrants. Yes. So because of the acetabular antiversion and the lateral position of the patient, it appears as if this is the 12 o'clock position. But actual 12 o'clock of acetabulum is somewhere here. And this sector is the one where we will get screws. You're not able to see that. You're uh, not able to see. Yeah, yeah. Now, now? Please, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, as I told you, this is the home and in the direction of the anterior suprarelax spine. Yes. And this is the sector which will determine the direction of the screws. Yes. So it will serve two purposes for us. One, it will give us the uh, the direction of the anterior column as well as the direction of screw. Yes. Yeah, so now he will flex and externally rotate to take the entire femur out of the way. You can see that? Yeah. Now what happens when he is taking the femur anteriorly is that the inferior capsule on the anterior side becomes tight. Yes. So if you remember, we had given a release incision at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Now we have to give another release incision at 4 o'clock to take the capsule out of the way and re reduce the tightness. So these are the two release incisions which we give. Once you do that, you are able to position this uh, inferior retractor and yeah. that gives us a complete view of the astablum. Yes. 
some forceps. You can shift this one here. This one from here like this. Yeah, that's a better. Uh, I'll just change it. Give me a second. Move a little bit. Yeah, yeah, give us a second. We'll get a better view of the astablum. Trying to. Yeah. And somebody do that and focus it here. Oh, that's okay. That's fine. So I think you can see the astablum nicely. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just doing a little bit of capsule work, removing the labrum and then trying to define the way the astablum looks. So is that clear? Everybody can see? Yeah, we can see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I will delineate the transverse vestibular ligament for you. So yeah. that's the operator nerve and that is the transverse vestibular ligament, which is nicely seen. You can see that's the transverse vestibular ligament. Yes. And uh, you can see this horseshoe shaped structure in the middle. That is a teardrop. Radiologically, you see it as a teardrop. We yeah. have to make sure that you ream that thing and equalize the remaining cartilage to the teardrop. So that is when your hip center is set correctly at the level of the teardrop. There's a question from the audience. Yeah. Uh, in this kind of a dysplastic situation, how do you uh, determine the version, establer version? Yeah. So uh, you will have to, so we will show you how we, we will uh, do a calibrated uh, measurement yeah. here. So we use a device, show me the phone. Phone is ready. Give me the reamer first, first reamer. So we have this uh, smart software, which is called as angle meter and somebody can switch off the light so that they can see better. Or I can show it to that camera. Okay. Right. So you can see that I'm using a device which will give me the angle and uh, inclination and version and combined version. So we'll just show you as we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. So this is the first reamer. Just to go in the direction. Can you give me a 44 reamer? So for uncemented sockets, you don't need to go really sequentially doing all the reaming. So I will go with the size of the head parallel to the inner margin of tal to start with. Okay. Yeah. And I will not go any further deeper. You can see that I'm already having good bleeding cancellous bone. Yes. So usually you'll have some twitches there because of the operator nerve. Yeah. So that's okay. But you will also sometimes have the operator vessel, which is bleeding there. Here we can see the tile very nicely. It doesn't look too antiverted to me. Okay. So Meryl have done really well. They have given around five new hip sets for this. I hope the same will continue in the normal practice as well. <laughs> so we are coming closer. The 48 is now catching. Yeah. So I will I will go now slowly. 49 reamer. So we will probably have a 49. So now, as I told you, I will go on a reverse reaming now. Yeah. Because I'm coming closer to the size. So this has not disengaged yet. So I can go one size up 50. For any acetabular preparation, the view has to be like this. Yes. If you don't have view like this, then you make sure that you get a view like this before you start your preparation. Correct. Well, otherwise, there is a very high probability that you will keep the cup in a malpositioned situation. 
and that is a disaster because then you will have issues with instability then early failure and edge loading if you are lucky the patient will have a late failure because of polyethylene wear but usually it will be an early failure 50 munda so this is the 50 So this 50 looks reasonable to me. So I will do a trial at this stage because we have measured the head size to be 45. So even though the reamer didn't disengage, yeah. 47. Okay. How consistently have you noticed this this thing happening in your practice? It happens all the time. Yeah. But in this case, I am little being just just a little bit cautious because the bone is not very uh, hard. So I will go one size up, 51, 51 reamer. So you're still dreaming on reverse. Yeah. So I'm still trying to figure out what is the size. This looks like a 52 cup. Give me a 50 trial. As we discussed yesterday also. Yeah. So we can go between and 50 and 52 based on the situation. Because even with the dysplasia, I think it measured 47. So perhaps it was a little bigger than 47. Yeah. So you can see here, we just about have a little bit of AP capture. So it's not rotating. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hi, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So we have an AP capture here, but supra inferiorly, it's not very stable. So yes. I will upsize it by one and yep. see if I can get away with a 52. We measured head size as 47. So 52 is the upper limit of what I will go with this cup. Otherwise, I will put a few screws and get away. Yeah. But if you don't get this rotational stability, the cup will fail. Yes. 51 reamer. Are you going for a press fit or a line to line? So we will go for a line to line in this cup because the cup is larger than the uh, trial. It's by about 1.3 millimeter larger. So it yeah, uh, the real cup will have much better hold than the trials. So it's important to know about your implant first, whether it's a press fit or a, you know line to line. Press fit is where you under ream by a millimeter and then go for the next size. Yeah, this is much better. So the 52 yeah. is the size for this patient. So uh, now it is biting into the column, so it will cause more damage as we go on. So yeah. I will go for a 52 real cup, please. 52 real cup. Sir. Till this time, if there are any doubts, you can ask me. Any any doubts from the audience? They're all mesmerized by your surgery. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. You've always been very kind. Right from class 9. <laughs> hmm? So this is a uh, how tal is used is titanium it? cup, which is sector cup, fully porous coated. Yeah. And uh, we have used There's quite a, a bit of the audience. Yeah. Uh, how tal is used as a guidance in this case? So, so I'm using the positioning parallel to the tal in this case because I feel that the antiversion is not that much. Yeah. So this is now got a good AP capture, but it has not bottomed out. You can see hmm. cup is stable, but it's still not bottomed out. So superior inferiorly, it's not stable yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now you can see the audible change in noise. Okay. You can see the change in note. We are, now we, are we have good AP capture. Sure you, can... you have now superior inferiorly still not that stable. So we put a couple of screws. 
But yeah. since we templated it to be 52, it will be 52. It cannot be more. Yes. Now I will fine tune the positioning of the cup. So, uh, how do I show this? Uh, can somebody show this? So now I am measuring the cup, cup inclination. This is around 35 degrees. Okay. So uh, intraoperatively, I will shoot for 35. Then it will be around 40 in the uh, surgery. And if I flip this, then I will get a rough idea about antiversion. This is around 13 degrees of antiversion of astablum. Yes. So I am able to measure. The antiversion is not that accurate, but the inclination is very accurate. Yeah. So this cup is really solid, but I'll just put a couple of screws just to demonstrate the direction of screws as well. Yeah. So as I told you, this spike, which is into the anterior column is my guide and my screw will always be in the same direction. And I don't even need to check. It will be 35, 40 screw all the time. So you should not put this sector here. Then you will not get any screws. So as I told you that optical illusion, 30 screw. Yes. There is an optical illusion because of the way the astablum is. So how much time do I have? Another 10 minutes is there? Yes, yes. Okay. So once you are... Uh, Direction, everything is finalized through the way we position the cup and the retractor. Then it is pretty straightforward. So now you can use this posterior superior screw or a anterior superior screw. So the first one was dead superior and this is anterior superior 25, please. So the anterior superior screw will be 25. The dead superior dome screw can be up to 45. The posterior superior screw will be 30 to 35. So this is a standard thing. So if you are able to mark your anterior superior iliac spine to ischial axis and position your retractor there, it is going to help a long way. I see a lot of people struggling by positioning the retractor in the anterior wall. It's a very bad idea. Anterior wall, this direction is where the external iliac veins and all will be there, number one. And number two, the anterior wall will not support the retractor. Yes. So we have seen that the retractor has not slipped even once during the surgery. Yeah. But a lot of the time, people are struggling to anteriorly translate the femur. So key steps, release the G-Max if you are not able to internally rotate it, release the anterior capsule, adductor release, psoas release. So one, two, three, four, if you have a difficult situation. So it is not required in all patients. Wherever there is a problem or challenge in internally rotating the femur, astabular exposure will be difficult. Liner, please. So two screws. Are enough liner, poly liner, neutral. So since we are happy with the version, yes, I will go with a neutral liner. There is excessive antiversion in this femur rather than on the astablum. So astablum is not 20 degrees. I have kept it at 13 degrees as we have measured, and we are using a neutral 36, highly cross-linked poly, and the standard of care for all patients now is to use a Biolox Delta head on a highly cross-linked poly. So you must not be using non-cross-linked polyethylene, must not be using cobalt chrome heads anymore in primary THR. Yeah. Right. So this looks good. Now we, Vina is holding the leg at perpendicular to the Thing. So, I don't know whether you are able to see one more spike. We're able to see, but I think it will be better if they can uh, change the camera orientation. Uh, yeah. Right. Can you get the camera here? Yeah. Yes. So, one thing people are always worried about is the varus positioning of the stem. And uh, although it's not a great uh, problem with a uncemented design, there are two issues with that. You tend to undersize the stem. Number one, it also doesn't look good on the post-op x-ray, uh, but it can happen, but usually it will not cause any alteration in the long-term outcome. So you, so this again is not, a patient is not walking, he has a narrow femoral canal. Yes. 
so we have to be careful here so this is a box so i'm just leaving the bone there i'll take a canal finder to just size the canal here so this is a 6 so we will go and see what's the distal size if it's too small then we have to use a modular stem but if you are able to put an 8 or 10 so this is 8 this looks okay so we may get away with a standard implant in these cases yeah looks like but the key here is to keep the short neck length options available yes so we have the proximally coated stem can you show me the what is that size 10 give me 10 give me the four so this is what it is 10 is probably the size so i think i'm okay with a standard stem so this is a rasp for the proximally coated stem the first rasp rasp tends to go with difficulty but after that it becomes easier but since this is a small man so you should not go big blows of the hand so if you notice i am holding the hammer at the junction of the hammer i am not holding the hammer here and going like that and you are introducing the stem with hand and slowly you will put it in but if you are having to you know keep the stem like this and bang from here that's a very bad idea so don't do that it's not going in then you open the canal okay yes i think this patient had an excessive antiversion preoperatively yes so the i have reduced the acetabular version yeah. and you can see the femur is still a little bit antiverted so yes. we cannot change version with the uh, non modular cementless implants yes so you have to have three options modular implant or cemented stem or something cone wagner type yes so this is what it is so i, I don't think i can put a larger stem than this Mm -hmm. I'll check if I'm able to reduce with this particular thing. What size? This is a size four, one twenty eight, and it. So you can see. Show me that. So these are the options in normal view. So these are all the neck length options you must keep. So I see people just have one neck length option, yeah. and then you're stuck. See? Yeah. So since we have a. 128 132 and uh, the 135 with varying neck lengths and varying offsets yes. so we can fine tune what is appropriate for the patient so you should not go to surgery unless you have templated it to be this one you cannot go with this stem alone yeah get it so especially in the 128 minus head please Kelly Bernie yeah. that was a very useful message because uh, no one implant fits every case so, so this is uh, uh, you know we are able to restore the limb length five was the measurement five was the measurement i'm so sorry this is five was the measurement maybe a few millimeters we are lengthening and the offset was 36 we are having a 40 so i will use a minus 4 trial and that is because we are, i am not able to engage this beyond this one so i don't want to hammer it and break the femur yes so minus 4 will make sure that the leg length and offset are restored take it out take that spike out yeah and i can easily reduce the hip you can see that yeah great right now i can flex adduct internally rotate it's not dislocating this is a sleeping position stable extension external rotation it is stable and the leg is fully extending and you can now verify with the limb length stitch whether the leg length has been lengthened so you can see that it's not lengthened at all this was the pre op leg length mark and that is a post op leg length mark right so now we are pretty sure and the other surrogate marker is how your soft tissues fall back so you yes. can see that the piriform is everything this falls back nicely to be repaired so this is pretty good 
so we will go ahead and uh, complete our surgery you can shift to the next surgery if it is ready or watch we will do, we'll do that watch. thank you very much yeah. it was an excellent demonstration again thank you thank you thank you right cm do zoom kar sir we'll do cm at this stage trial is them trial trial him thank you very much uh, kk yeah yeah thank you jenu session of all the principles of how well to do a primary totally preplacement it was yeah. slightly out of the box situation it was not like a, a primary arthritis or a avian situation so there was a little bit of dysplasia but uh, he we, if you follow the principles then you can get away with a simple solution for the problem so preoperative planning assessment is very crucial and understanding your anatomy and know your approach because as you could see the uh, the approach was very clearly demonstrated the posterior approach if somebody is an anterior anterolateral guy you can still do with the hardinge approach but you should be familiar with Close. the approach which you are very well conversed with so that you can do justice to the patient okay thank right. you krishna giran uh, i think there is a little bit of delay with the other case so i think we will show the implantation as well of course if it, thank you if it is okay with you yeah absolutely because i'll i'll be heading to the hospital now dr anil uman has joined here so yeah yeah excellent we'll excellent continuing with the session good morning dr anil welcome good morning krishna how are you i saw the excellent demonstration that's great i am good i am good thank you very much so we will um so while you're completing the instrument uh, sorry the implantation yeah. the three neck lengths you demonstrated are the three implant times readily available uh so i think meril guys are the ones who can uh, answer that question better yeah, but no for problem. me they are available definitely okay good good yeah. now because the same parallel can be drawn with the just for the information of everyone the dipu corel system has a short neck standard offset and a high offset so that is uh, that sort of information is uh, not uh, allowed in this meeting i know <laughs> it is out of the box but you are entitled to give that message so just joking so it, each system has got a short neck length and a standard neck length variation so you have that with corel stem you have a ks30 you have a standard you have an extended offset and since there are multiple anatomies we will need to understand that uh, thing so we normally do a cm shoot to see if everything is okay and that is what we are waiting for and uh, since the case is not ready yet the other case we can also see you can also see that uh, we are looking at the cm we'll just fine tune sometimes even if you are experienced the stem may be in varus or it may be undersized then i will fine tune the stem positioning and uh, everything krishna uh, i can just ask yeah. you what is your main check for the offset intraoperatively on your trial reduction what you checked was the limb length how do you check yeah. what are your surrogate markers for the offset so i i have also measured the horizontal offset from the center of the femoral head to the uh, tip of the greater trochanter that's, that's on the femoral side yes to start with yes. and i have positioned the cup parallel to the inner margin of the tal so okay. that the acetabular offset is not changed yes the second thing which you can see is if the offset is increased too much then you can palpate the tension in the abductor and the abductor tension is too much sometimes uh, to give an indirect evidence that the tension is or uh, the offset has been increased yes and third, third thing or, you can see remember the measurements on the femoral head are indicating the femoral side suppose by inadvertently you have medialized the cup which means you have taken a cup and that's very important that you have to take a combination of markers he's put it parallel to the tal anatomical landmarks suppose inadvertently with a little extra force like dr krishna is nicely demonstrating the force required with a little extra force so for some reason you medialized the cup then you will not be able to rely on the femoral measurements okay. alone so you have to use a com so it's always a combination of the two freeze it in the normal issue for you i'm sorry but i don't normally implant without checking everything is in order so uh, right. so there are multiple checkpoints you have to do right through yeah, so. for a fracture neck now if you all one of the common situation i'm sure you all be referring to is a fracture neck of femur where you do a total replacement correct so in a fracture neck of femur it is so important to restore the soft tissue tension if you go back and template it 
In fact, a lot of the times the older people have a varus neck, which means a higher offset. So you have to replicate and you have to check because there's no way you can check in a fracture neck of femur from the yeah. to the lesser yeah. trochanter or the greater trochanter. Yeah. That is why your templating comes. Yeah. 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 Template on the normal side, check what your offset is, and then. Shortest time I to check around three feet. Shortest again. Sabse shortest time I have four. Is in the neck link to. Replicate your offset, you will cause <laughs> always have a standard and a high offset available because in a fracture neck of femur, more often than not, and especially in an older <laughs> <neck, laughs> it's very good because it restores the abductor. <laughs> Krishna, have you noticed that? Sorry, I was, you know, having a Side conversation with my boss, Dr. Malhotra. He just stepped into the OT. Oh, okay, so okay. I missed what you were saying. Hello, Dr. Rajesh. No, no. Uh, no, no, Krishna, no, no. I was just saying in a total arthroplasty for fracture neck of femur, which is yeah. what everyone normally do, I said it's always important to template because very often you would find that it requires a high offset. That's actually a very important point, but I find that it is more and more difficult to do templating nowadays because of the digital x rays. Correct. So it is easier for me to keep all size options, including yes. the extremes available rather than try, try and template and get the same size. How uh, do you template even with the digital x-rays? Do you template on your computer or do you template with the films? Uh, I, I do Without it on my, on my computer, software. but mm -hmm. I find it is very inaccurate, whatever we are uh, trying to do. But we generally look at hips like this, like you here, we notice it is very narrow canal. Correct. And we and with excessive femoral antiversion, you can see we had the lateral view, we had the CT scan, everything yes. ready, and we measured that the femoral antiversion was around 20, 20, and the acetabular version was reasonably okay. But if the femur and acetabulum combined was more than 40 degrees, we would have used a modular stem because you cannot Very compensate true. that by uh, changing the acetabular version. Very so what true. I have done is I have reduced the acetabular version to 12 degrees, and I have retained the native femoral version of 20. So the combined version is 32 degrees, which is still a little bit more for a male, but it is acceptable. Okay. Now, because the templating system we use, just a simple thing, you take a ball x-ray with a three centimeter ball strap, you can zoom in and zoom out to the template yeah. scale. So that, yeah, Pitker ball, you can use a three-dimensional yes. ball. Correct. The problem with that is if you have a, a fat thigh and a, a thin thigh, and then the strapping is closer or away from the joint, then it has a lot of Variation with that. Not with the ball. With the coin, yes. With the ball. Even, even with the ball, if you have a, th uh, it is better than a coin. But even with the ball, there is variability. We have uh, been quite. Uh, we have used that consistently, so we don't have issues with that. You are screening. You do routinely for all hips. Yeah, yeah I do this for all my hips because I don't want it to look. You know. Terrible post op, it has happened with me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think they want to have a look at the CM picture also. Yeah, 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 we will show you. There is nothing to hide. Unless the stem has gone out of the canal, I will show you. Very, very unlikely, Krishna. Not with that. Even if it goes out of the canal, I will show you. <laughs> Always important to understand. I mean, it's always important. Uh, uh, Udar state kar do. So you can see, that, as I told you, the cup is positioned at the level of the towel. You have one screw which is going into the dome, which is 30, and the other screw which is 25, and that is the correct size for that patient. Now, now he will come down. Kinnakra, parle, kinnakra, manche jo business. We don't use the software. So you can see, it's a very snug fit for. Can you see that? Uh, can somebody focus on that? Somebody focus on the IA image, please. You can see that? 
not yet we are waiting four open this go four ah yes but it is reducing easily luckily so <laughs> so that looks a very good position and uh, even the you were saying you were commenting on the femoral fit right that's right so i told you that it's a very narrow femur correct it was not too bad proximally yes it was a typical dor a femur so it's a very bad idea to do a, uh, a fully ha coated type of stem in this case so in this case you need a proximally coated stem sure. and uh, this is a smallest available stem with a 128 uh, neck shaft angle which we are using in this particular patient so this looks okay uh, can you come down a little bit can you show them the screw screw position or oh, screw the nokade so this looks pretty okay so i'm happy with this and you can see the uh, cup positioning at the level of the transverse acetabular ligament the tear drop which we showed on the uh, intraoperative you look at the inclination it's roughly around 35 to 40 which we measured to our device and the it looks a little bit antiverted which is lesser than what we normally keep because it's a dysplastic situation and the combined version of the native hip was around 40 40 degrees we have brought it down to 30 degrees by changing the acetabular version femur we cannot change because we are not using a modular implant you can see a 30 screw going into the dome and 25 screw going into the anterior superior part of the acetabulum i think the screws are very well placed the cup position also looks good like you commented on the anti version also yeah. and the femoral fit and the position seems to be excellent so uh, uh, we will just uh, you know uh, if the other case is not ready show you the implantation as well sure krishna just a quick question what was your templated size for the acetabulum acetabulum we templated to 52 and we have used 52 bone hook so you can see the dislocation also yes. is uh, pretty good and uh, we need to be careful with these the uh, uncemented stems which are very small elevator this four is a starting size am i right four is a starting size yeah so, so sometimes what, it tends to sit prouder correct so what would you have done do you check for the toggle now or do you, uh, because it's such a snug fit suppose it was so not, uh, so i the... i fail to mention what we have to look at is axial stability so as you impact the stem it should not go inside yes. so that is what we check so i am impacting it doesn't go i am looking at it, rotational stability i am moving the thing the entire leg is rotating and there is really? no interface mobility that means when i am rotating point. there is no movement between the implant and the bone yes so these That's three important. factors have to be taken into account when we size the femur so uh, this is the proximally coated stem which which is my go to stem in my practice most of the time we can see this so it is pretty much like a accolade to or taper lock or an ml taper type of stem but this is a uh, this is available in at 128 and 132 neck shaft angles you specifically asked for this stem rather than the ha coated stem yes for this case i was not prepared to do a ha coated so i got this from hyderabad sure so you have to make sure that your thing so it still needs to go a few millimeters inside otherwise you'll end up with a uh, lengthening okay so i will wait for the femur to take care of the hoop stresses expand a little bit and then i will go a little bit more in so that looks okay scale will still be a millimeter or two proud if you are you know taking into account give me a trial head this ha coated stems might be exclusive to you krishna because i have to talk to the metal people so that is a discussion or conversation you need to have with them yes that's what i'll definitely talk to them yeah so now it is reduced very good and the uh, rajkumar was talking about shek i don't relate too much on shek because it varies in extension flexion patient to patient but this looks pretty stable throughout the range of motion and i will be happy to go with this 
the last thing you want to do in these cases is use a plus 10 plus 4 liner on the establum and then struggle for reduction because now it will not reduce so you must have all options available do a trial ceramic head use elevated liners i don't use lip liners at all at all but no. sometimes there is a there is no choice because some companies only give lip liners right so yeah that's what Nemeril i thought has only lip liners that's what i was asking so i use lip liners if i'm using a 28 millimeter head sometimes uh, one but minute. my preference is not to use lip liners sure. so this is a ceramic head you must have a non-angular insertion onto the trunnion and it must be a clean dry interface no blood in the interface and that is nicely reduced and we will very well demonstrated krishna you have a question one minute yeah uh, Krishna, the question was, what are the indications? What are your indications for using the proximal coated stem? You mentioned already that this is a Dore type of femur. Yeah, that so Dore type and in women also because of the, uh, I don't have access to the KS30 stem from Kurai. And okay. uh, I don't think Meryl have a short neck length option in the HA coated stem. So if I feel that the uh, hip is a short offset or short neck length type of stem, then I will uh, use the appropriate uh, uh, proximally coated device. If I'm doing direct anterior approach, most of the time I use a proximally coated implant because it's easier to insert than the shouldered ones. So uh, the question here is basically, uh, I think there's one more question saying, if it's a HA coated, anyway, it's a fully coated stem. With the proximal coating, what is the advantage or perceived advantage? So it is well established that whether you use a proximally coated or a fully HA coated stem, the principles are little bit different for the two, but the long term success is very good for both. Proximally coated stems are typically ingrowth stems where there is porous coating, there is bone ingrowth into the uh, into the stem which will happen. But the HA coated stems and the grid blasted stems are on growth stems where they gen generally need to be coated across the length. And there is on growth on the surface of the stem. Yes. So, uh, the in growth stems are slightly difficult to remove. When you want to remove, you may have to do a short trochanteric osteotomy or something like that. Yes. And uh, the on growth stems are also difficult to remove if they are distally fixed. Yes. So right. both have their set, uh, sets of you know advantages, disadvantages, and then uh, the uh, longevity, of course, has been similar in both groups. And the yes. Arthro group have shown almost thirty year success rate with Korai. Exactly. So uh, the decision for me is more based on the neck shaft angle and the neck length of that particular patient. So both will work well. If you have a short neck length and a shorter offset situation, then I will use the uh, proximally coated stem. But if it is a standard male patient with a large proximal femur and a good neck shaft angle, then we will use a HA uh, coated stem. But the porous coated will be much more difficult at revision, isn't it? Once it's integrated so well. Yeah, the idea is to use a 190 stem at revision. So if you have a short trochanteric osteotomy which doesn't compromise my ability to do a 190 revision, then that's okay. Then that's okay, correct. Ready or not? So I think we are done here. So uh, you can go with the next case, uh, Anil. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Yeah, Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you. And a uh, big round of applause for Dr. Krishna for that wonderful demonstration. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, delegates and uh, our faculty. The case details of our next case is uh, 58 years female, post-operative ETO plus bipolar implant exit and antibiotic spacer. Now the plan is antibiotic spacer removal and the right THR. The hemiarthroplasty cemented was done eight, eight months back and it had an infective loosening of implants and it was a elevated ESR and CRP. So we did ETO and implant removal plus antibiotic spacer that was done in May 2023 in our hospital. So these are the immediate post-op x-rays after bipolar. 
ETO was done, implant removal done, and then we did antibiotic spacer. These are the present X-rays. Organism. No growth. Okay, today. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, our surgeon is uh, Dr. Vijay Bose from Chennai. The assistant surgeons are our colleagues, uh, Dr. Avinash and Dr. Hassan. And Dr. Anil Oman sir will be moderating the session. Thank you, sir. Correct. So basically, you have to give six weeks of antibiotics for in infection, established infection. Repeat your CRPSR, see if it's negative, and then also idly in, use a ultrasound guided aspiration. Yes, yes, yes. There are enough literature that exists uh, for supporting. If it is not fulminant tuberculosis, like when you're going in for a hip, I mean, when the arthritis, when the granulation tissue and the destruction is not significant, you can do. Yes. Yeah, I think ask it on the mic. The so question. my question was for TB hip or uh, if you're suspecting TB uh, to do a joint. So what is the ideal time period after starting AKT to do a joint replacement? So I like there are in ideally speaking, if you're going in, somebody presents to you with an infective arthritis, painful hip with head destruction. And when you're going in to establish your diagnosis, ideally, if it is a very subtle infection, you'd rather take out a biopsy, establish your infection, start them on AKT, and wait till the active infection settles down. Now, having said that, there is a lot of literature saying you can go and do your total replacement and continue on ATT at the same sitting. But the general advice would be if it is fulminant infection, significant synovitis, bone destruction, weakening, it would be better to debride, wait, continue the course of ATT, and then probably come in at a later stage. If it is a very subtle sort of, at least six months to one year, when, yeah, because now from one year, the regimens have come down to nine months. So it's better to wait. Bone stock will also improve. The surrounding inflammation also will be ideal for you to go in and implant again, because you're already always worried about atypical mycobacteria, secondary infection, and things like that. Dr. Bose. Yes, they said no growth. They said no, no growth. Oh, but is there any? Hello, Anil. Yes, uh, Dr. Bose, good morning. Very good morning, Anil. Uh, we're getting an echo here. OK. Yes. So um, can you see me on the screen? Yes, yes, we can see you. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Right, OK. Let's see the now, uh, now, you need to show that on the screen for me. This, uh, what we are showing to the audience, you know, I need to see. The x-rays can be seen. The X-rays can be seen, uh, no, but this monitor is not showing that uh, what the audience is seeing. Oh, I see. So we cannot see what we are showing. Okay. Uh, that would be a, a bit of a problem. But anyway, okay. So um, uh, we see, you saw the history of the case and all that. So they went to the second stage, uh, PGI. Um, so people want to uh, know about the, the stem that is using the monomon. So, Anil, you can uh, tell me if you're not seeing. I'm trying to show show this, yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. We can see, Dr. Bose. Please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, okay. So, the um, the idea is, uh, uh, I mean, how how is it different from Wagner, for example? We call it monomod because it uh, has the, um, uh, it has the uh, combination of features of advantage of both the monoblock stem like the Wagner and the modular stem of any of your modular revision stems that you have. Okay. Now, uh, we are trying to uh, have a combination of both, uh, harvest advantages of both. Now, um, uh, the, um, if you take a monoblock stem, 
it has got advantages in the sense you know it doesn't break because it doesn't have a junction uh, if you take modular stems uh, the advantages are that uh, it doesn't have the risk of the monoblock stems namely subsidence and dislocation so uh, if you look at the history it's very interesting so uh, uh, wagner developed the wagner stem in 1985 and it it worked very well apart from two problems it subsided and then the uh, rate of dislocation was very high so in all published series the rate of dislocation is somewhere between 20% sorry rate of uh, subsidence is 20% and the rate of dislocation is somewhere 5 to 10% so both were high so when surgeons ha had this problem they wanted to solve it so they solved it by simply by putting a a modular junction so what they said was um, uh, now before going to that we have to ask ourselves why the wagner has got this high uh, complication rate that is because you have two objectives during surgery you want to get a good scratch fit distally that's one objective otherwise it will subside and you want to also have good soft tissue balance proximally now typically what will happen the wagner stem is there are two uh, ways of uh, I mean, surgeons will give preference to one factor or the other factor now suppose the uh, surgeon uh, decides to give only preference to the distal scratch fit then what they do is they will allow the stem to seat where it wants to go uh, irrespective of the soft tissue balance and wherever it goes they take it fully and they found that they have lost the soft tissue balance what they wanted the soft tissue balance is not there the other way uh, people might give uh, preference to put a mark and make sure the the stem stays there so that the soft tissue balance achieved but there you have not got your rigid distal fixation and therefore in the patient weight bars it subsides so these are the problems that you have with the monoblock so what surgeons decided to do, solve the problem was very simple they gave a junction so they said with the distal part of the molar stem you achieve fixation first don't worry about the soft tissue balance and after you have achieved your molar parts proximally which you use and add up you know 50 60 70 whatever you want to add up here and then you achieve a soft tissue balance independently so that solves the problem of this subsidence and uh, uh, dislocation however it introduces a new problem of breakage so if you don't have proximal support in the bone that will break so both molar block has advantages you should know how to use it and molar has advantages you should know how to use it so we thought we should combine the advantages of both the molar the molar block and the molar so we devised this about the call it the, as the molar mod so how we are going to solve these two problems are Uh, we're going to do two surgical steps. In the one surgical step, we're going to have two surgical steps. But there's no going, no going, no junction. So it's basically a mono, a mono block stem that we're going to use. Okay. So the first step is to achieve soft tissue balance. So if you see the reamers here, so the reamers have got two sets of marks. Uh, somebody remove my glass, please. Glass mask. Just remove it. Remove it. Yeah. Be careful about the mic. Careful about the mic. Adjust the mic, please. No, no. I just make properly. Okay, right. So Anil, can you see? Uh, you are able to follow yes, me, Anil? Yeah. So the uh, if you take the Wagner reamers, for example, it have marks depending on the uh, the the four sizes of stems that we have. Now here also we have the same marks. These are the black marks. Okay. Now if you take a stem like this, this stem, uh, what stem size? By one ninety. Can you give me a longer stem, please? Uh, like a give me like a two sixty five. So if you take uh, the the mass correspond exactly like the Wagner, and in, uh, when you start the surgery, the tip of the trochanter is usually our starting point. Okay, so we uh, like the Wagner, we try and match the the stem which corresponds center of the head. So these block uh, these black marks are the head marks. Center of the head, we match to the uh, the tip of the GT, and we go to this two sixty five. Give me two sixty-five, please. So we we match it just like the Wagner. That's the starting point. Okay. So uh, give me the two sixty-five stem, please. Yeah. So we match this to the tip of the trochanter. So uh, we'll 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 use the two sixty-five as a demonstration. So as I start off, I will mark uh, the tip of the trochanter. I will match this to this. Okay. So that's the tip of the trochanter. Now this is the two sixty-five stem, and if you can see the stem, the center of the head. Center of the head in all systems, the center of the head corresponds to the black mark. Okay, now the monomod in addition to this black mark has got these colored marks. These colored marks represent the shoulder of the process. You can see that very nicely here, the shoulder of the process. So that's the shoulder of the process. So depending on the size of the stem that we're using, the diameter, 
17 18 19 it may be the shown mark will vary and therefore it is not depending on the size the colored marks that that shown in the in the uh, uh, this thing will show you the uh, will show you what marks it's for uh, the camera may not pick it up but i'll just show it briefly yeah. i can tilt it tilt it little bit yeah camera yeah uh, yeah. Out yeah. Bit, yeah and show us the trace correct okay so red red corresponds to sizes from uh, 13 to 17 17 to 20 is yellow and green like that okay so depending on that the marks are there okay now these are the shoulder marks so first step is what we call as pp step or the primary provisional step so we put the trial inside we ream just like the wagner and then we put a, a trial inside and then we reduce the stem and see how the soft tissue balances you you find that you are two lakhs then you go to the next size stem and leave it more proud or if you are tight you, you ream a certain more and sink it in and then you make the soft tissue we don't worry about the distal fixation at this point in time we are only about soft tissue balance and we now find out a point where we got very happy with the soft tissue balance so we now know that that's going to be the soft tissue balance once that is made we are going to make a mark on the bone which you got as a bone reference mark now that is not a head anymore head is gone you move on to the shoulder the shoulder is a very precise mark that you can match we'll show you during the live demo uh, from now on it becomes the shoulder reference mark so i already got my soft tissue balance now i'm going to achieve my distal fixation so i keep upsizing the rema till i find a reamer which i am not able to hand ream so it's very important for all your molar mars you must power ream so i power ream my uh, rema the, the definitive size rema the shoulder mark the shoulder mark i will be able to match to a millimeter i'll really be able to match to a millimeter then you find that uh, when you put the actual process the actual process shoulder will go stay exactly where your bone reference mark is up to a millimeter can match now i i also got different fit because i have upsized till i came to a point where i knew that i have power reaming power reaming means you are shaping the endosteum you are shaping the endosteum to fit your process so i know i want to get a very good scratch fit i know my soft tissue balance is right because i made the bone reference mark based on that so that's how it achieves both the steps all those the molar block stem the final thing is insertion of the where is the t handle bone t handle so the final thing the problem used to have with the wagner was the version version is very crude so we devised this uh, t handle that we are able to uh, so it got this mark on that you must match this mark correctly so we put this uh, thing and depending on what version you want now suppose you go into the right side stem and the, the socket is in place the socket has got say a lesser antiversion that you want it's got a 10 degrees of antiversion you can increase the antiversion of the stem so it comes with mark 0 10 20 30 so for example in this patient i want 10 degrees of anti antiversion i'll put on 30 mark like that okay i'll put this on 30 mark now how this scores over your uh, eye balling is that our eye cannot judge angles very poor at judging angles but i can judge perpendicular and horizontal So we're going to match this to the tibia, this rod to the tibia. So if I close my one eye like a gun and hold this and match this to the tibia, my my stem is the type of antiversion. Our eyes are capable of accuracy one degree, but our eyes are very limited. I may suppose we didn't have this. You will say it's twenty. I'll say it's forty. So inaccurate. So we are so much uh, error prone. But once we start using it, you know, matching parallel lines, we are accurate by degree. So I know that. This is thirty degrees correct uh, up to a degree. I know I've done that correctly. So that's how it goes. Then for uh, for extraction, if we have a process uh, that is already there, it the the com comes with the extraction kit. You can just like you know you have yes from you can do that. It also doubles up as your trial extractor. So this is a, again goes on to the uh, the trial, and you can you can in, in, uh, extract the trials like that. So that is the trial handle which. Which hands like that? Okay, so roughly you got an idea what we are what we are doing, and then the yeah, that is that thing is the or uh, more block. Uh, so it says this is the show me the things please. So this is a more and more heavy impactor. So the other problem was okay, we have matched everything, we have matched the bone reference mark etc. But how much force to give? That is the problem. So we devise this uh, more and more impactor. So where is the impactor rod? So this rod has can move only a specific distance. It cannot move, or uh, other words, 
any surgeon who uses it can apply only the same force. So these are all the problems we used to have with the warm air, especially an inexperienced surgeon doesn't know how much force to give. Is he seated fully, not seated fully? We don't know. So we we uh, experimented with his wings and lens. So finally, infection will be no matter who the surgeon is, only that much force can be given. Force cannot change. So we any surgeon force is the same and go exactly and stay where you want to stay. And therefore, all the problems we have with the Warner, we seem to have solved it. So we'll have to wait and see. Okay. So with that, we'll we'll go to the live demo now. It's a comprehensive uh, insight into the specifications of the mono mod. Right, great. Okay, you can come to the uh, case, please. So what uh both just a quick question. What is the Paper of the monomod as compared to the Wagner, and how many splines does it have as compared? Is it the same comparable situation? Uh, yeah, splines are comparable, uh, but the uh, the taper angle. Ah. So the, uh, the Wagner is an example of a, a low low angle. It's only two degrees. Yes. The redap is a high three degrees, and we have gone in between. We have gone two point five. Sure. So both has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, thanks, Kalle. Okay. So the it's a tapered stem. You should realize that it's a tapered stem. Yeah, it's a cone and cone concept, and that's how it works. Okay, great, right? So, Dr. Kale has kindly exposed the case. Can you see that? I need to see the monitor as well. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so give us a hook, please. Should I do any more releases? It's Hold on. So, keep keep that, please. Now the uh, uh, thing is, when you when you're talking about release, uh, only when you hold the tissues under uh, tension. You can release. So no point releasing it when the hip is still relocated. You must you must dislocate it only when you must release only when it is uh, somebody is giving tension. So you know what is tight and what is not tight. So no point releasing tissues are not tight. So as you slowly rotating and slowly if you release it, those are the, the tight structures. Okay. Both in your revisions, uh, what would be your uh, sequence of release, especially if the hip is high riding? Uh, the, 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 that's what I'm saying. You know, the uh, the release has to be uh, tailored to the patient, and whatever is tight, you have to release. And we always the, the femur, the release is proximal. There's no point releasing here. Yes. You release proximally, and once that point still tight, you go distally. And uh, suppose the hip, hip was like you know still in the joint, then releasing all this is a waste of time because you don't have the tight. But now as you're trying to rotate it, I know what is tight and what is not tight. So I just applying my cautery, and whatever is tight gets uh, released automatically. So I'm releasing more proximally than distally. If needed, I'll, I'll release distally a little later. Because we have to get lengthen, lengthening also in this patient. Sorry? Cross shortening three centimeters, okay. Okay. So I'm happy with this for my cerebral exposure. Give us a hook, please. Long hook. Yeah. No, from my set, please. No, no, don't, don't do suction, please. Okay, just, just pull with this, pull this. Subhu, you want to go that side? Subhu, you come this side, please. One of you come this side. Or give us a big, big hook we don't have. What about a big hook? One more hook? Uh, no, no. From my, my set, must be one more hook. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. So this type of, no, here, 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 click that. Is good. Okay, that's good. that's good. Okay. Right. Section, please. So we don't know whether the ETO is united or not, but we'll look at that later. I'm quite happy with the exposure. And give me a, a caucus or alleys, please. Yeah, give me a, a cautery. So in revision cases, uh, you, you cannot, um, you know, eliminate tissues. You need to cut tissues. So I'm going to 
that's the difference between uh, revision and uh, primary primary when you leave tissues here you have to cut tissues here there was an element of protrusion also and a, quite a significant element of protrusion and um, suppose it was a primary case i'd probably think of bone grafting yes but uh, here we don't have the femoral head and more importantly uh, allograft this is an infection case so although we can use allograft it's best avoided uh, my words are chosen very carefully it's best avoided in uh, post septic sequelae uh, like this so my aim my first aim would be not to use any allograft and uh, for a post infective case unless my hand is post i will not use allograft as a general principle okay so let's do some release so now you're releasing the anterior capsule boss anterior capsule and anterior structures close to the bone okay so you have a small homens yeah that that should be no no this is this is fine may small gauze piece please so pretty small socket Um, so whenever it is a very once once again a very useful tip I am telling you now. So revision, you know, the bone is all very uh, friable. So one way to make sure the system returns correctly is to use a gauze piece, and you have to hold only by the finger. So you can only apply very little force. You cannot. So that's a very good uh, sense check that you have that the system is not retracting too much. Okay. So I'm happy with that. I think that's a very important step because the walls can break through if you apply too much force. Can break very easily. Give me a homens, please. Uh, please give my set, please. Enna Barun. So. So these uh, homers are not only to retract, but also to find where the bone is. Very gentle, very gentle, please. So once you put on the, this is another useful tip. Once you put on the soft tissues or below the acetabulum, whatever is in between can be removed very safely. So you don't have to worry about it. So we use this to palpate and find out where the bone is, and whatever is in between, we 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 excise. So this coming to this protrusion, and you said. Uh, medial wall defect doesn't worry me because we are going to get on the rim fit in the cup. So uh, Kiran was demonstrating very nicely the principles of uh, uh, AP capture and three point fixation. So we will demonstrate that as well. And so I'm, uh, the medial portion of the cup doesn't really participate in uh, in stability of the cup. So I'm not worried about the medial part. So my plan is to avoid allograft here and just do a standard cup. Highly porous cup, and I'm I'm very happy with that. The forces listen. So definitely, the focus will be on the rim fit. Yes, a rim a rim fit is where the uh, uh, everything uh, the fit occurs. The the um, the medial wall is for post bone contact. Okay, now if I don't have post bone contact in this patient, I'll use a highly porous cup. But the amount of host bone contact can come down, so that's that. So I need a highly porous cup here, please. Okay, that's done. So post to inferior wall has been exposed. Let's have a, one more home and sleep. You were mentioning that it's a small cup size, uh, boss. Any information from the templating, or you had? Uh... No, just by looking at it. Oh. But of course, if we didn't, know, if we knew what the bipolar size was earlier on, we would we would know that as well. You don't you don't leave that please that's good but we don't have that information but that's fine i mean uh, what is it correct you can see what the tissue that's in between my Moments and the socket, I, I can exercise quite freely. Forces, please, or caucus or something. 
Okay, we are, we are next ready for a pin, please. Get a pin ready. No, no, when I need it, I'll ask for it. Okay, so happy with that. Now let us do some uh, posterior release as well. As I said, you cannot retract the. Uh... Okay, another tip in revision surgery. Give me Alice, please. So, like your uh, primary surgery, you cannot, you know, retract and put a pin. It doesn't work like that. So, what you do is you must catch these tissues margin with the Alice forcer, retract it slightly, and you must excise the tissues that's in uh, beyond that. Can you see that? Yes. So I'm going to excise. So, the posterior margin. Posterior margin. So, I'm holding the rim of the soft tissues here with the Alice forcer. Yes. I cannot retract it. So I have to excise you the tissues. Avoid putting that, a retractor there. I am uh, excising the tissues because these are all fibrous tissues. I cannot retract like primary case. So I'm going to excise it. And once you keep excising, you'll find it. You are able to expose. It's always useful to keep the hip extended because the nerve goes away, and you'll stay close to the bony margin. This for all of you when you're going for a Revision procedure. Hold, hold this piece. Give me forces. Gently, gently hold that. Now, uh, yeah, the, uh, because you're using a cautery, if you come near the nerve, you will see a flicker. Knee flex and hip extension. And uh, people think that if you see a flicker, you damage the nerve. You don't damage the nerve at all. Because, uh, you know, the nerve conduction studies or your uh, EMG that they do, it's only by, by flickering the nerve. Nothing will happen. So rigid like a rock. So we have to. In a way, that's good uh, because you said it's sclerotic, right? Uh, well, the soft tissues are, are hard. Not <laughs> no, oh. thin, thin, please. So I'm trying to find the ischium now. Okay. So you see the soft tissues like bone. Soft tissues really like bone here. Yeah, it's very <laughs> difficult to demark it. I'll just cut the soft tissues. So if you don't, uh, uh, sometimes the soft tissue is more uh, thin, please, harder than the bone. Pin, please. Now, if you uh, As, don't uh, take the soft tissues, it, it always you'll find that, uh, and, the, and then you forcibly retract, you'll break the bone. Bones are sometimes softer than the soft tissues. Yes. So now I, I, I think I'm on the ischium. Take this off. Okay. Now we we'll gently put a thing on the ischium. So these pins are not only retractors, but tells you where good bone stock is. When you're struggling for bone stock, it tell you how much you can ream, etc. So you get a good bite of the pin. That means uh, there's good bone there. You can use for your socket. Okay. So I, I put that. Notice that I have not uh, 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 tried to retract. I have tried to excise everything. And I got a good uh, view now of the socket. Okay. We're almost ready to go now. What is all this? What is all this? So the the, mod, the, uh, the mouth is very narrow, very, very narrow, but inside is a uh, larger. So that sort of situation, you'll have to define the margin well to get a, a good fit at the periphery, correct? Yeah. So we, do we have a multi-hole cup in Merrill? No? Uh, in that case, I'll use a gription, please. Get me gription, please. You're planning on a multi-hole cup just to get some screws, uh, both. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's no medial wall. Yes. I, I need uh, to get an excellent fixation with my screws. No question about that. Mm -hmm. sure. And for that, you need a multi-hole cup. Give me a please. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this has to be this side, Subo, please, for me. That's good. Uh, One second. Course, the question is, uh, when would you, what would be your indication to use a cage in a protrusio? Yeah. So as a general rule, I want the cages in protrusion. 
Now, you're not able to get a you know, columnar loss as well. In addition, you're not able to get a, a press fit cup. That's the indication for using a cage. Okay. So now I've got my exposed variable ready for reaming. Start with a very small reamer, please. Yes. So if you have a good periphery, if you have a 360 periphery that you have. So uh, the table is neutral. If you put peripheral fit, then you don't have to use a cage. Is the table neutral, please? The primary. Table neutral. Okay, good. Now we have a pen, pen with you. Okay. Now, we don't have any concept. Now, we don't have any landmarks here. We don't have any uh, tan and all that. Now, also, things about the tan is that uh, we find that, uh, you know, tan is okay. It's like your posterior corner line in your TKR. Okay. For most cases, but not for all cases. Okay. So, uh, all that you got to keep in mind. So, we're going to draw what is known as the functional pelvic plane. So, uh, can you see that? Yeah, the camera can see that. That's fine, gently. Okay. So, that's our. Uh, uh, the pelvis and the spine. So just hold this, uh, this, this, this scale for me. That's fine. And I'm feeling for everything. And then that's that's good. Okay. Right. Give me the scale, uh, pen, please. Now this functional pelvic plane has been and uh, we know how to the Swiss uh, keep navigation with us, and that uh, that uses the functional pelvic plane uh, rather than the uh, APP. So all your robotics and your navigation use the APP. Three home and uh, this is the other reference, the functional pelvic lane. I personally feel the functional pelvic lane is a far more, uh, uh, what shall we say, useful landmark than the APP or the anterior pelvic plane. That is between the SIS, okay? Right. So can you see this mark here? That's your, uh, so that tells you neutral version. So I, I, I advise all of you to start using this. And... Um, uh, you know, if you really think about it, surgery is about going the right way. So, if suppose we start reaming this side, that means you're doing something terribly wrong. Go back and find out what is wrong. Okay? Are you reaming like this too far away? And you're doing something wrong. Find out what you're doing wrong. Okay? So, we'll tell you how to really put numbers on this. Me, pad, please. Boss, I think a question from the audience about in relation to the tile, where have you placed the pin and the retractors? Can you there's no, no, there's, there's no tile at all here. During revision case, there's no tile. Huh? No, in relation to the bony margins, I think they just wanted clarification of the way. It's, it's posterior inferior. Posterior inferior is scale pin. Pin is on the ischium. Okay, come give me the reamer, please. The six good. So it's difficult to delineate the tile in a revision scenario. You have to place it posterior inferiorly, anteriorly, all along the margins. So I'll uh, okay, next next reamer please. So you have directed your reamer in relation to the functional plane, right? That is correct. And um, I, I will tell you how we use it uh, in the practically how we as we just wait for a second, please. So the medial wall is very soft. So we'll be very careful that not to uh, go beyond that. And if there's a fibrous membrane there, I won't be too worried to take it off and all that. I'll accept that. So it's absolutely soft everywhere, medially. Both somewhere down the line, please explain the functional pelvic plane again because some of the audience have some questions regarding that. So the functional pelvis is important thing is to position the patient correctly. That is spine, that is the pelvis. Okay. So because the the um, the hip is all now flexed, we have taken care of the FFD and all that. Okay. So this is her, this is their. Uh, what shall we say? This is where how the patient is going to use the pelvis. Okay, so we are going to put cups in relation to this line. So so vital in uh, uh, in revision as well as when you have uh, spinal pelvic derangement. Nibbles, please. Okay, very soft medially. So give me the next reamer, please. 38, okay. So what is the size of the reamer you're currently using? 30, 30, 38, 38. 38. Okay. Uh, we're looking like a 44, 46 cup. Next, please. Female patient, we expect the size, socket size to be very small. 40, okay. And gently expanding the mouth. Okay, next, please. 
So uh, uh, the hip surgery or for mother hemming surgery is not about aiming for one rigid target. It's about going in the right direction, uh, biasing one way or the other way. One thing you don't want to do is to go in the wrong direction. You want to go towards the right direction. And as long as you're doing that, that's, a, that's what it matters. And it, you keep refining, refining it. So as they say in life, you know, it's not a destination, it's a journey. So surgery is a journey, not a destination. So we notice oh. with the successive remas, he's just widening the, or getting uh, okay. Give good bite on the periphery. That's what you're trying to do. You're so not, because of the protrusion, you do not apply medium. So there's no, there's no tan here, but what we have is the operator of foramen. So the tan covers the operator of foramen. So what I'm now trying to find out is the operator of foramen. So I'm coming with my, uh, uh, is the artery forceps. I'm coming down with that. And then I'm trying to put this into my, uh, uh, operator for Amman. Yeah, that's my operator for Amman. Okay. So that's where the, uh, the, the uh, operator for Amman is. So I'm just using it as a rough landmark here. Okay. Right. Uh, now give me the next remark. So we're going to, uh, you can see how the socket has migrated up. So we're probably a little high, but I won't worry too much about it. If it's going to go a little high, I'm perfectly okay to accept that. Nubles, nubles for a second, please. Nubles. Okay, what is the next remark, please? 43, okay. 43. Typically, I would use an artery forceps to incline, uh, but today, because we don't have the skin here, because the revision case, I'm going to use a mark like that on the bone to indicate my... I think so, I think so. My inclination. This mark will tell you my inclination. A mark here on the bottom will tell you my version. Okay, got that? So that's what I. I, I so I, what I, is the size of the Rima right now? 43. 43. Okay. 43. Okay, now go to 44, please. And then we are ready with the trial, please. 44. Uh, so aiming for a 46, boss? No, uh, no, no, no. no. And, uh, uh, I'm just leaving, going to Rima 44. 44 trial, please, for me. I will demonstrate concepts here. So I, mark, I roughly marked my inclination. Right. Now, um, I may not be able to show the, um, the uh, functional pelvic plane because uh, things. So what happens with the functional pelvic plane is, uh, give me that um, a small artery for this, please. And the pen, please. Now, assuming the skin was intact, yeah, now the skin is not intact because of the revision case. And uh, based on the, uh, uh, the tan mark, I have put my artery, you've seen me put an artery mark, no? So I put an artery mark here, okay? This is based on version guide. Okay, I'm putting my version guide here. And also, like Kiran showed, you know, we'll be using a digital inclinometer, and our uh, this thing will be there. Our uh, in, uh, cup inclination is fixed. Usually, we aim for 33 to 35 degrees. Cup inclination, that's what we fix here. So, this mark cannot change because only at that particular inclination, this mark will be there. Anil, okay? Yes, yes, sir, both. Sir. Okay. So, this is our functional pelvic plane. So the functional pelvic plane, they just wanted some clarification as to how you draw the line. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. So this is the functional pelvic plane. And this mark cannot change because this is the mark I made based on the tile or whatever landmark I used. This is an inclination of the cup handle inclination of cup handle inclination of, uh, you know, the, give me the deputy one, please. So now I'm going to draw perpendicular from here to here. My functional pelvic line to here to here, okay? Again, another pen, please. So I'm going to measure this. So this measure is uh, around 30, 35 degrees. So the average is about 40 to 45 degrees of version. Okay, now if you are, uh, if you are, you know, like 35 is probably okay. But if you're 10, for example, 
Then you have to see plot in your hands. You have to find out what are you doing wrong. The pill has fallen down or something has happened. You need to find that out. Or if you are seven, for example, something is wrong. So you get that. So that's how we use the functional pelvic plane. So I'll tell you how this works. 44 uh, cups. Uh, 44 you read. So give me uh, 44 again, reamer, please. So never uh, force a cup inside. Always make sure if there's something upsetting, you do some bit of eccentric. What is this, 44? Do some eccentric reaming. And then cup again, please. So, boss, that's a size 44? Yeah, this is 44 cup, yeah. Okay, so as Kirill was saying, this is where the really the concepts come into play. Uh, AP capture and this thing. So have you got AP capture or not? No AP capture. Can you see that? Mike? I think that's, if you notice, everyone can see it's a peripheral fit. You're not concentrating on the medial side at all. because uh, yeah, it's You can see that. You can see I'm able to rotate the cup. The cup yes. is rotating. That yes. means I'm not engaged even one diameter of the, of the socket. Correct. So Correct. If, I put, if I put screws and make this cup hold, it will fall off after some time. Yes. So I know that I not so I not got AP capture. Okay. So I need to. Yes. It tells me I have to upsize the cup. Okay. Right. So now give me the uh, reamer, please. Forty-five also will have and forty-six. Decision to make. You shouldn't go with this size because he's able to rotate it with the handle. AP okay. capture is not there. You have to get capture at least in one plane, at least right. either AP or ninety degrees to that. So that depends on the rest of your bone stock. Now you carefully ream. Remember your medial wall is gone. You carefully ream. And what the plan is would be carefully reamed to the next size. So you can get an AP capture in addition to your, and that will be the primary fit. Your screws are only supplementing. So you're going to 46 now? That's a 46 reamer? Yes, please. 46 cup, please, for me. So that will be line to line reaming, which means 46 for a 46. So the line to line reaming and you must take it with a pinch of salt. Depending on the bone stock, how is the sclerotic bone and all that. So we are not looking for line to line reaming and all that. So I'm trying to get a good fit of my trial. That's my whatever whatever reaming gets a foot a good uh, fit of my trial. That's what I will use. It doesn't mean that you know. So for a given example, uh, you know in a primary situation for a 50 cup I'm using, I may ream 49 sometimes. I may ream 50 sometimes. I may ream 51 times sometimes. That depends on the sclerosis of the bone and the cover. And the sharpness of your reamers. So three things determine that. So I'm not very worked up on you know, line to line. I'm reaming one millimeter less reaming. All that is very subjective. What you want is a good fit of your trial. Okay, give me the same reamer again. Reamer. So I'm not able to get this cup inside. 46 cup is it? Okay. So use a 46 reamer and trial the 46 cup. That's correct. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. 46. The rumor is Petruccio, so I, I trying to lead a few millimeters off the middle wall. Now, have I got AP capture or not? You can see that I got AP capture. Okay. I'm trying to rotate, I'm not able to rotate. So I've so engaged the minimum. 46, 46 cup, right? 46. I've engaged the minimum diameter. Okay. Now, uh, is it still toggling? Oh, yeah, it's toggling. Yeah. But the, I achieved my first concept of AP capture, but still toggling. Okay. So that means what should I do? Uh, the options here are, uh, uh, if, the, if the toggle is very minimal, I can eliminate the screws. But if the toggle, toggle is this toggle is quite uh, large. So I have to upsize my cup. So I'm trying to get a three-point fixation. Minimum is three points. AP capture is the first step. Next, I'm going to get a three-point fixation. So it tells me that I have to upsize my cup. In this process, if I have to remove my anthropoxia bone, I'll be removing bone now because I have uh, engaged already one diameter. So the diameter bone will be reamed. But that is the principle of the jumbo cup. Jumbo cup means you're removing bone. Make no mistake about it. That's why I call it jumbo cup. Not the size of the cup. You're removing bone. So according to the larger superior inferior diameter, you are removing anthropoxia bone. That's what you mean by jumbo cup. Okay. So I'm going to remove anthropoxia bone. And, and get a level cup so that which I can get a three point fixation. 
Remember, please. What is done? Forty-seven and forty-eight, please. So my next cup size is forty-eight. Forty-seven. So in these cases, go one by one so that you don't suddenly blow up the the mouth. Okay, forty-eight, please. So minor toggle can be eliminated by screws. That's the purpose of screws. Minor toggle elimination is the purpose of your screws. So no need to use screws in primary because you don't want to do all that. You want to in in division screws are absolutely the important. So I'm going to forty eight. Okay, I got my phone here. Okay, come. The uh, forty-eight. So in the forty-eight trial, Malik, please. Okay, forty-eight. Now I got AP capture in my previous step, so I know that nice AP capture. Have you got toggle resistance? Oh yeah, can you see that? No, I'm not holding anything. Absolutely, I got my three-point fixation. So, so any in forty-eight cup, forty-eight cup, any uh, uh, inanimate object. So for us to stand on two legs or animals to stand on two legs and spend energy, inanimate object cannot stand on two points. Minimum three point like your camera stand. Okay, three points. So that's your. You can have thirty points also, great. But minimum three points. I got my three points because why? Because I'm not able to rotate. I'm not able to toggle. So I got my cup fixation. So these are the principles involved. I've expanded my anthropocentric diameter to accommodate my larger superior inferior diameter. Got it? Okay. Now give us your inclination, please. So digital inclinometer. So you see what is going to be the inclination? So so accurate. So we are very close. It says thirty-two. Okay. So thirty-two is very close. We like that. I will aim for a thirty-three today. Thirty-two is there. Now uh, we told you the the antiversion, which was the antiversion coordinate from the from the functional pelvic plane, is very ideal as well. So we are very happy with that. You can open this cup for me. Forty-eight. Uh, I love gripsion multi-hole. Please, you have a hooded liner here. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's great. Okay. So that's it. So. Um, um, You can talk about robotics. You can talk about everything, but it doesn't add any value to me because I've got I've got a number of all that I'm doing now. I've got a number of everything. Okay, come. Uh, this thing, please. Uh, uh, Marat, Marat, please. Okay, I uh, very soft medially, so I will not uh, remove the soft tissue. I just leave that membrane, and uh, just me a cautery, please. Or, or one thing, give me a small reamer, please, like a thirty, thirty-eight reamer, please. So I'm going to just take a thirty-eight reamer and just uh, move some soft tissues if possible, leaving the medial soft, uh, not to disturb the medial fibrous membrane. Wash. We have beryllium wash, please. So we believe beryllium hydrogen peroxide is the best solution now. So we have a combination; it's great, but we don't have it. I'm fine with that. Beryllium hydrogen peroxide. So I'm using a very low number and just freshening up the. Making sure I'm not going fully medially. Okay, great. Nice wash, please. And nibble for a second. Nibble for a second. So once you have inclinometer and you are putting the cup at thirty-three degrees, all problems are solved. In a revision case without tan, without any landmarks, you can make some serious errors. Serious errors you can make. Some curate of some kind, please. Curate of some kind.
Krishna just Okay. That's done. Wash please. Okay, that also is good. So I prepared the bone except for a medial soft membrane. Nice wash, yeah. Beard in wash, great. That's uh, for infective cases always. We forgot to put it in the femur. So a good idea is uh, whenever you do an infected case like this, once you expose the femur, put some hydrogen peroxide and bear into the femur. Let it be there till you do the socket. The great uh, chemical sterilization you got there. Okay, great chemical sterilization. Okay, ready for the cup, please. Careful. So uh, I got a multi hole. Now remember, there's no medium wall. So this uh, highly porous cup, Gibson cup, will uh, the the host bone contact can come up to fifty percent. If I have only fifty percent host bone contact, I'm very happy with that. Okay, the Gibson cup. So you need to have a highly porous cup. You need to have a multi hole cup. When you're doing a jumbo cup, a jumbo cup is always a highly porous cup, multi hole cup. So we'll we'll mark this. Uh, I want to know where the screws are. Twelve o'clock of the cup. So that I can aim the screws where there's good bone. Okay, so all my land, uh, the marks that I have made is helping me. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just uh, because it's a highly porous cup, give me the same reamer again, please. The 48 reamer, please. 48, 40, uh, 48 reamer, same large reamer. So don't force, there's no role for force in orthopedics. So the next step is eccentric reaming. If that doesn't go, I won't hesitate to put a hot man inside. I just won't hesitate. 48. So the last reamer that we used. The next step is we're not going in eccentric reaming. So same, I'm keeping it inside. Doing a bit of eccentric reaming. Micromillimeter. Mm, okay, cup please. Okay, that's the version, that's the inclination. That's going nicely. Okay, so no point finding out what your cup inclination is. So I will do it during the procedure. Uh, phone please. Okay, it's my inclometer, and uh, I'm 32 again. Okay, so I'm going to just open the cup one degree. Okay, that'll give me 33. And inclination is exactly where the coordinate I have. Good. Okay, come. Give me the this thing, please. Uh, mallet, please. So just open it ever so slightly. That's, that's gone. So if you follow these steps, uh, this is a revision case. And honestly, if you ask me, I don't need screws. I, I would come out without putting screws, but I'll put screws today. But I'm just saying the importance of principles. It is like I can shake the pillars. I can shake the anesthetist also. So, the, so that's the principle that matter. So putting screws in primary, you really shouldn't be putting it. I mean, you can get away in revisions like that. Okay. That's great. That's a good fit, uh, Bruce. It's a question of how much you're reaming exactly that matters. So now let us see where we are. Final landing. That is 33, guys. Uh, camera sees. So I'll just try and show that's 33. 33 is what you're shooting for. I got exactly 33. So it's bullseye. 
okay so we're very happy with that you can take this off outstanding fit inclination is a 45 degree, 45 uh, millimeter anti version coordinate that's what i shot for today i got that okay but uh, you, you can see that i left it about 5 mm of the, the thing because i don't want to go all the way inside because uh, the middle wall we said we built out and i kept it exactly where it is okay yeah, good now give me the screws please now it works like a drill this 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 reel is the worst uh, if it is no drill option this is the same Is it ring? This looks like a reamer now. Is it a ring option? No, I need a drill. I give me a reamer. Okay. Hmm. Give me a scale, please. Okay. Give me a screw of. Uh... This uh, thirty-five, thirty, please, thirty screw. Uh, sorry, sir. Give me the same drill, please. The drill, don't, don't open the same. I want the same. Don't don't open the screw. One second. Just give me one second. No, Chennai's well is down. Yeah, it's almost done. What does that work for? Okay, thirty-five is fine. Thirty-five screw. If you ask me what is going to uh, happen to the medial, I have not put any bone graft. Uh, I can bet my uh, last rupee that within one year it's fully formed with bone. Okay, the medial one formed bone. You can grow bone like in a fish tank. The only thing is about stability. As long as you get rigid stability of your cup, the medial side will take care of itself. You don't have to do anything. So uh, absolutely, uh, uh, bone will form by itself. I've done this on hundreds and hundreds of cases. What is the size of the screw, boss? Thirty-five. A very good hold of the screw. You have the other screw there, please. Really, a rigid screw. So this sometimes we call as a winning screw. Winning screw. I mean, today we don't need a winning screw, but suppose there is still toggle in the cup, minor toggle. I told you about minor toggle, and you get one screw in that axis, axis of toggle. And really rigid like this, then the toggle will be eliminated. But if you don't get a rigid screw like this, all your screws are dodgy. Then you got to really think, got to think of employing some other option. So if I have toggle, remaining toggle, residual toggle, then I'm looking for a winning screw. So this is like solid. 
right so the uh, that's all done ready for the poly now the question about the poly is uh, so how many screws have we put boss only i put only one more okay give me one more screw please is i need to put two because you need to have a rotation the valve but a couple so solid as i thought i'd be happy even with two screws but i put one more screw give me one more screw so if you are a beginner uh, any revision jump up minimum of two screws I think one screw is a winning screw. Take this off, please. I don't want this anymore. Okay, thirty screw, please. So the um, the thing I was telling you, the uh, the depth you, uh, uh, I like. Uh, Krishna was saying he doesn't use uh, hoods. In revision, hoods are a great idea. Because the revision uh, dislocation rate is higher, however, the depth comes with a four millimeter uh, offset that a lot of people don't realize. So not only gives you a hood, but it's giving a four millimeter higher offset. Now that may not be a good idea in some patient like this patient who is very small. That really think hard whether I really need to have that. One way you can do is you can uh, do a trial liner and come back later on. But I'll probably just put a standard one inside. I think. So this uh, plus four will be too much offset for this lady. So just open the standard liner, please. So the other screw doesn't get. It's got a very good bite, but if it doesn't get a very good bite, it's still okay. It'll, it acts like an anti-rotation spline. So one screw if it gets you the, the the stability, the other screw can act like a plane. Still will work very well. The other, the other. Two screws, boss. But because the protrusive scenario, would you like? Uh, would you put one inferiorly, or would you? No, no, I'm very happy with this. Okay. In fact, if you ask me uh, how will it be without screws, I'll be very happy without screws also in this case. They're solid bite. Okay, poly, please, poly, poly. The positioning of the patient. So um, um, I think here they are using the. Uh, we change. Usually they use the simplified screw base, but if we see the post is on the ASIS. Very important, and the patient is rigid like a rock. So so important. The so standard thirty-two liner poly. Because I can't accommodate it. I would like to have a hood, but I can't accommodate it offset. It's sitting there, McDonald, please. What What did you say about the offset, boss? It cannot accommodate the offset. This small uh, female patient, small Asperger size, cannot accommodate the plus four offset on the socket. It cannot accommodate. That's why I didn't use the hood. Otherwise, I'd love to use hoods in in revisions. Okay. What is this? Oh, pin. Okay, good. So that's the socket. Now we go to the more and more stem. So the question is: Is the, is the ETA united or not? If it, if it's united, I can put a shorter shorter stem. Otherwise, I have to, I have to bypass the ETA. Uh, Cautery, please. Okay, let's have a look at the ETO, please. So four wires, you can see. So give me a bead in gauze, please. The sock goes in bead in. So in revision surgery, always uh, gauze bead in. Uh, yeah, bead in soak. Soak it in bead in, please. Always use soaks. Soaks are a good idea. So this is a bit in soak inside. Good. Come. Oops. Audrey, please. Audrey, first for me. Curve, curve, Audrey. 
Touch this. Oops. Hmm. Hmm. Touch this. Again. Okay, let us see. Take that off. Okay, that's fine. Just leave it there. Okay, you will see it. Hmm. Okay, this packet come. Boss, there seems to be uh, some interest in your uh, inclinometer. So at some time, please. Uh, yeah, we will. We will. We'll do that. Uh, we'll be using it for the uh, uh, this thing as well. Uh, we'll show you the stem as well. Yeah. Okay. Now, is it united or not? United. Eh? Looks to be solid, actually. So the people here have done a very good job with the ETO. And uh, another important point I want to say is, if the ETO is united, there's no more infection. The inside sign of infection is gone. Okay, very important sign. It is united, no more infection. There is no need to send for frozen section or anything like that. It's united. It is uh, no more infection. No, not frozen. So, boss, I think there's some more que questions regarding the cup. You've got a good peripheral fit. There's no medial contact. Yes. So you've got uh, supplemented with two screws. Yeah. Correct. Maybe, uh, I think you're this. worried about the medial contact. That's what I'm saying. That if you think your cup, you are getting a fixation by medial contact, you are mistaken. No cup, primary or revision gets medial contact as, your, as a fixation. The medial contact is for host bone contact. That's why it will it, ostentate it there. But fixation is not there. Fixation is two things. Fixation is what is not put you. is what will occur after six weeks. Two different concepts. Okay? But so today you have achieved fixation. The medial one does not participate in fixation, whether the primary cup or revision cup. So even in a primary scenario, there are situations, in fact, there are studies that show that you get only peripheral fit, you leave a gap medially, it fills up over a period of time. So you don't rely on him. And medial is not relying on your fixation. That's, only that's exactly, that's exactly the point, yeah. So the fixation is what you get today. So the medial one does not contribute anything today. But six weeks RC integration, medial one contributes. Okay, uh, this curate, please. Charlie, curate, please. No, yes, you can leave it without screws, but that depends on how your templating is. If you've got a minimal protrusio, you want to get only a peripheral fit, you've got a good fit, You some, that's what he was demonstrating. There was no need to screws also here, but he supplemented with two screws. Nibbles, please. Okay, the ETO looks like it is united. Well done. So if it's united, you would go for a what? what uh, how will it change your decision process, uh, Bose? If it's united, uh, well, uh, I uh, if uh, it was not united, I would. I was originally for a two sixty five. Now I may be okay with the two twenty five. Okay. Okay. Now two twenty five is the maximum you can go without an ETO. So for just for argument reason, uh, the ETO is united. Just for argument, I'm saying united. But for whatever reason, you need to bypass a hole. And I need things to 265. I will redo the ETO. Let me make it very clear. 
I will not draw the end of the fixation. I will redo the table and then I will get a 265 in. But 225 is the max you are allowed to go. Any stem that you use, not, not doing bottom one, board, nibbles, please. That you can you are allowed to uh, do end of femoral. Otherwise, you have to do through an osteotomy, compulsory. I mean, somebody might show me that that works fine. That's okay. But uh, today we are not looking at stray cases. You have to look at what gives you assured results. Hmm? Shouldn't be a lottery anymore. Okay, we are ready for that. So the first point is what you call the datum point in any region that you do. No matter which time you are using, the tip of the trochanter is your starting point for all patients. So that's my starting point. Okay. So reamer, please. Start a reamer, is it? There's also a pedestal there on the X-ray. So it's important that you use a, a blunt reamer like this so that you don't make any false passages. I saw, I'll just see if we're lucky, we'll just get past it. Give me a minute. The, both the views, the uh, pedestal is the central. If the pedestal is eccentric, then you must not do this. You must do it in the C arm and use a curved instrument. But because center in both the views, I'm happy to just use force and get across. I think I've done that. I've broken the pedestal. I've gone past that. Next reamer, please. Very important point. That's a you very important step to break the pedestal to go beyond. Yeah, both the views is in the center. Okay, come. So please. at this point, would you uh, ask for an II or would you do any other additional step to ensure that you're in the canal or anything, okay. especially in a revision scenario? So, uh, this, uh, you know, this long X-rays are so crucial. You saw the long X-rays. So, if I have the long X-rays, I will never do any revision with the long X-rays. Now, the long X-rays are there. I don't need any CM at this point. Sure. Absolutely, I don't need CM. I probably will not need the CM in the case. But let us see how it goes. Forceps, please. Forceps. Because uh, the, uh, I know the osteotomy is between uh, wire 3 and 4. I, mean, I know where the uh, osteotomy is. I have to remove the and so I can calculate all that from without a CM. If you are having... Uh, Bose, a quick question. Yes. Suppose you had a spacer that was in the canal and you were mm -hmm. not able to extract the cement completely from the femoral canal. Yeah. The question is whether you would leave the cement there or would you go behind, redo the ETO? 100% or... I will remove it. In fact, case... I have to take the cement out, no matter what. So don't leave behind cement. You have to... If in, in, in infected cases. In non-infected cases, the aseptic, you can leave all the cement that you want. Nothing will happen. In cemented, that small bit of cement will spoil your result. Because the foreign body, your antibiotic will not reach there. There's a biofilm sitting there. The rest of it doesn't have biofilm. So your antibiotics will act. What is this? Yeah. Then we did now, no, no. Cement and cement... Uh... You have to remove the space. Cement and cement will amount to removing the spacer and then putting your sizing. Your so today we are going to see a very important advantage of the monomod. Uh, uh, monomod starts from size 12. The spacer that you uh, what, what size you have? 12? Your primary situation where you are just removing yes. the cement, the cemented implant. 12 stem in, in a non and then preparing it as a cement. You have to remove the entire cement. You know, 12 cement. What is the size you are reaching? 12 size. 12 size. 225. No, no, I am asking about uh, size 12. No, but 12, do you have 190 and 225? I am asking. All are available. Okay. So, Anil, a very important advantage of the, like today, the stem in the canal seems to be very narrow. Yes. And uh, unlike the one we start at 14. The monomod starts at 12. Huge advantage for female Indian patients. Okay. So this is your size 12, Rima Bose? No, no, the size I'm only in 10. I'm only in 10. You have the 10, it's already tight. Okay. Already tight, yeah. Next, next Rima, please. Me 11, please. Uh, so, uh, uh, instead of wasting time, usually what I do is I will put my trial inside and then when the hip is reduced, that's when I will use a CM usually. 
Bose, I think, uh, sorry to say that uh, I just, uh, we are a little short on time. I think I was being told that you can continue the steps. Just explain to us when the other, uh, please uh, let us know when you are ready for exact sure. sizing. Yeah, tell me when to stop. Yeah, sure. So what is this? 11, no? 12. 12. So 12, as we said, you know, the, uh, we're using a 225 here. So, so you use a 12 reamer now? It is a 12 reamer, yes. Yes, okay. So that is the shoulder, that is the head mark and that is the shoulder mark. So I I am now going to use and the, the important uh, thing is you're going with the hand, you're not going power reaming, correct? That's right, yeah. So I can still take can still take one more for sure. So give me one more uh, reamer, please. So that is the 225 mark. So I'm going to match for the head. Let me see. Trial, please. So this is a 12 still. You've gone till 225. So this is a 13. 13, okay. 13, I'm going to match. Uh, so do you have a 13 size or it's next is 14? Implant um, price. No, no, we are 13. Come, give me the trial, please. 225, please. Sir, you can keep on doing for another 15 minutes, sir. Great. Yeah, I'll finish by then. Thanks. No, yeah. no problem. Because the other case, we'll ask them to expose. It's a primary TKR. So, we will wait for another 15 minutes. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, 13, 13 225 is the uh, uh, thing. So, the... So, this so the, is size 13, boss? Is the third size 13, yes. So, we don't have all this on the Wagner. So, we have size. So, uh, this is for my my two steps I told you. So this is my first step of uh, primary provisional step, which is only for a soft tissue balance. Okay. So minus head, please. You didn't use the version guide now. You are just. Oh, I, I I didn't use the version guide now. I will use it uh, in my for my definitive process. Yeah. So I mean, you can use it, you can use it here also. No harm done. So at what level of the stem does the cone start, sir? In this. That, that's what start? Uh, what level from the top surface is the conical preparation starting? The uh, taper? It's from the HA coat. There's no taper in the HA coat. After that, the taper starts. So, uh, uh, certain situations I have noticed that proximal femur is a little bit narrow. Do you think we need to have a separate preparation for that proximal part as well? Uh, uh, I take your point. I'll show you why it's not necessary. Just to give me a sec. Yeah. Give me, okay, give me the... Um, yeah, put it inside, please. Okay, so it's three centimeters short. So we are we are roughly at the at the level that we should be. It's a thing. So whenever you let them do it, end up with FFD. So you got FFD. I'll probably go a little bit uh, more inside. So this I'm doing my soft tissue balance. Okay. So now I got my soft tissue balance. I know exactly where to leave my stem. Okay. Now dislocation, please. Do stem. Okay, no, sorry. Okay, now is the important step, guys. So uh, this is the this is the Wagner. Uh, you know, we are we are we cannot refine the Wagner, but here we are going to refine. So from now on, no more head mark. So move to the shoulder mark. So that's my shoulder mark here. Okay, but now I want to go two more further. So three four millimeters, I'm going to I want to go further. So I, now I know this is my bone reference mark. So my final implant will stay here, and therefore I've got my soft tissue balance. I will tell you now how to get this to fixation. Okay, extractor, please give me a proper extractor. So you can see that we got a specialized extractor. So all these problems we used to have with the Wagner. So it's got a uh, this thing and then remove. Oh, you must. Okay, now it's engaged fully. Okay, good. Okay, right. 
Right. So now we know the bone. This is the important thing, the bone reference mark. So we got the bone reference mark in place now. Okay. Now, now how do a surgeon who is not very experienced know how to ream, how much to ream, all that? It's all made simple on a monomod. So give me the same number again. So now the, now the real thing starts. Now you can see that this is a 225 black mark. These three are your uh, short marks. Now because of the system, it's going to be the top one. So this refers to my, uh, corresponds to my shoulder. And I've got my bone reference mark here. So I'm going to see whether by hand, I'm able to take the shoulder mark beyond this bone reference mark. Okay, very simple. So I'm going to do that and see whether is it the size or not. And you can see that I've gone past it. Okay. So even a very surgeon who's not experienced can do this. And that's the whole idea of the bone about. Okay, so that means it's not the stem. I haven't got my distal fixation. So next one, please. I'll keep doing this till I come to stem where I'm not able to advance my hand. And it's a very important principle that everybody can start with positions. So here again, the shoulder mark is, is this one, the three marks. Okay, so I have to match that to that. This is the black. This this one. So this is the this is the uh, the shoulder mark. So I'm going to see whether by hand I'm even able to take the shoulder past that. No, I'm stuck there. Okay. So I'm not able to take that past that. What do you mean? Fifteen, eh? Now I'm able to do that. That's gone. So with my hand, I, I was able to get the shoulder mark past my bone reference mark. Yeah, that means it's not the size. I still haven't got fixation. Okay, good. Next one, please. So very reproducible stuff. Don't leave anything for lottery. <laughs> Next one, please. Fifteen. Now I got stuck. Okay. So that's my mark here. I need to match it to this one. Uh, Krishna, I'm just coming to your point in one second. Okay. So that's it. Yeah, I think, I think that's a very important point. Yeah. The shoulder reference mark and bone mark have to be matched. matched. Match. So now you can we see don't that have that. So by hand, I'm not able to do it. And that's how I know what the size is. I don't need a CM. By hand, no matter how much force I'm using, I'm not able to go further. I'm trying my best. Stuck there. Okay. So what should I do now? I should power ream. And what is the purpose of power reaming? You are changing the endosteum to the shape of your stem. And that's how you get a cone in cone fixation. That's how all these stems work. So, the angle of the cone in this, sir, is it different from the wagon? Yeah, 2.5. Okay. So, again, this is my mark. This is the shoulder mark here. That's the bone reference mark. All I do is to match both. So, not by hand, so I'm going to do my power. The line. So I can see I've matched it accurately to a millimeter I matched. Okay. Now you can't go to the real stem directly. Now Krishna, this is your point. Like in the socket side, uh, we now think that the the actual trial, which is the 15, no, we put a definite trial. So you come to the SS step was the the first one was only the primary position step. Now we're going to the secondary crash fit trial. So the secondary step. We think the shoulder will match here, but it may not match. That's because of the quality of the bone and blow. Clotic bone, it won't go all the way. So we have to find that out. So give me the, quickly give me a trial, please. I don't need to try it anymore. I just have to know if it matches. So just like the uh, socket reading, you may have to read a little bit more to get your uh, shoulder there based on the quality of the bone downstairs. That's what we do now. And that's why, Krishna, you don't need to find instruments. You need to fine tune this. So, this is going to be my process. Quickly give me that. This is going to be my process. And uh, and I have to make sure that this shoulder now matches the. Bone reference mark. Marit, please. 
So this is a size 13? 15. So 13 was my provisional trial. My uh, secondary trial is 15. You can see that I'm not able to match it. Can you see that? It's a good centimeter proud. So what do I do now? I have to name a little more. That's all there is to it. Just like how you do the socket. Give me uh, this thing, please. Give me a mallet itself, please. Give me a mallet. Let's see. You're not allowed to dance, but you're in the hurry. I'm doing this. Mm. Give me the reamer again, please. So I'm going to take my shoulder beyond the bone to this mark. Same reamer, please, on the power. So you see that? So just like the socket reaming. So I'm going to take my 15 reamer again. I'm going to just take it a, a few millimeters beyond the bone to this mark. Okay. Mallet, please. This is the, the second trial used for fine tuning. Bang on. Now I got where I wanted it. So now it's sinking to the same level, correct? Sinking to the same level. So I've done it. That's it. So now uh, give me a real process, please. So this is a size 15, 225. 15, 225. Yeah, so I'll, uh, question if if it is not uh, uh, going with the thing and can you downsize it to 14 or no, no, can, you can never you can never downsize you should never downsize yeah you so that's downsize. the important message so with these sort of stems if you prepare 15 never downsize it to 14 because then sure shot like from 20 percent become 100 percent subsidence 100 percent subsidence 100 percent subsidence yes. so as he showed you the sclerotic bone is preventing it from going so the remote no, yeah. match. So he has just gone a little bit below so yeah, that it matches. Especially when an ETO is done, there's, no, been, done. there's, there's so much sclerosis in the canal. It's not like a primary canal. Mm. So they would be warrant additional reaming, but it will not take away cortical bone. So well, you can see that all steps are uh, you know not it's subjective. Just, all yeah. steps are objective steps. So it's reproducible in anyone's hands. Uh, Bose, the question is, when would you look for the version? At what stage would you look? No, uh, today I am very happy about my socket version. So, by default, it will be a 2020 20 degree version today. So, give me a pen, please. So, uh, we will show you the... Um, so, I am drawing this uh, uh, mid-tibial line. Mid-tibial yeah. line. Come out and show us the tibia also. So, then... Uh, because of the top camera, it is difficult to show. But a short of time, we will just carry on, please. Thank you. So, give me the stem, please. Yeah, I think the picture in picture is showing us the tibial orientation. So, I think... Oh, that's good, yeah. So, that's the tibial nice. orientation. So, <laughs> I, I, the, the picture in picture can stay on. And you can see like a, like a gun, you know, a gun or, uh, you know, there's a mark like that. Like that, if you use your stem, put the trial, please, 20. So, now I'm going to use a 20 mark. So, this is important that this mark matches your stem direction. There is 20. 20. 20 is here. So I'm not guessing the angle. I'm only going to put parallel lines here. So you can see that. So this is not the tip of the Krishna. Paper starts from here. This is for your augment, proximal femoral augment. We'll talk about another day. So I, I'm closing my one eye and can the camera still capture it? I'm matching it to the tibia. Got that? I'm not looking at this angle because the angle is so faulty. So now we have the impact. Huh? So, how much force to give? Okay. So, all I'm doing now is uh, matching that to that. So, it automatically gives me a 20 degree angle. Bang on. Okay. Take your hand off. So your metal, your version guide is parallel to the tibia right now, correct? That's correct, yeah. And my shoulder has matched the bone reverse mark. So you put it in 20 degrees of anti-version, correct? Anti-version. And my bone reverse, I got my soft digit balance. I got my distal fit. Because so, you know, the uh, audience I, is wondering how the anti-version is there. So the bar, I think the picture in picture shows us, shows us that. The, the, this one matches the tibia. So yes. I got 20. 
Okay, now this got exactly where I wanted to go. No, now even if I tap more, it's not going to go in. It's automatic. It stops there. So you got your update match now. Okay, right. Now give me the head, please, and we're done here. So the other important design feature is the force controller uh, hammer. So anybody will hammer, it will go apply the same amount of force on the stem. So that's an important step. And then this is the version where he has marked the mid tibial point and then match the 20 degree version of the stem. A mid tibial line. So this line to this line you are matching and you get exactly exactly up, up to degree. So I know it either with 19 and 21. I can assure you 100% between 90 because our eyes are so good at it. Okay, give me the head please and you are done here. Yeah. It is. The anterolateral approach, yeah. The, the, uh, so there is a question from the audience, sir, whether the anterolateral approach also you can use the same version guide. It is going to be difficult because the uh, is going to be uh, horizontal, so it's going to be a little difficult. But you have to start with it, but the same concept applies. Give me the head, please. But it may be difficult, as you say, because the leg is down. Leg. So you can see how uh, it has reproducible steps and you're not leaving anything to chance. Minus. Thank you very much, sir. We'll leave you at that. Uh, that was a fantastic demonstration. Of Thank a you. Huge round of applause. We'll see you here in a short while. Thank you. Sure. Very much. Thank, you thank you very much. I'd like to thank the board team for the opportunity. Thanks, Krishna. And thanks to everybody in the OR. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, sir. Excellent demonstration. So, he showed us the principles of how to ream the cup, AP capture, super inferior toggle. Put some bowl or something here. Slowly. And then uh, using a highly porous multi hole socket in revision scenarios. Then, how to get soft tissue tension assessment first with provisional stem fixation, followed by definitive stem preparation after marking the bone reference mark and matching it to the shoulder. Curved that's how you can yeah. calibrate and do your revision surgery so that there is accurate reprodu reproducibility across cases, yeah. across situations. Mm -hmm. so, I think we are ready with the next oh, case. Okay. Yeah, yeah, shift, 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 please. Yeah, we're done. Years old uh, male patient with uh, grade four osteoarthritis of knee. Uh, on examination, the ROM was almost five to one ten degrees and uh, five to one ten degrees. So, various was thirty degrees of uh, various was there. Uh -huh. We are planning for a right uh, total knee replacement. Yeah, this is the X-ray showing the right knee Receps. with the medial uh, tibial defect. Because the lateral view showing the osteophytes mm -hmm. and uh, the degree of osteoarthritis. Scale and view. It's the picture showing the extension and the flexion. This investigation shows it was uh, CRP was 2.25, PSR was 40. Thank you. Yeah, it's gate video. Sorry, uh, ROM video. Yeah, this all the stuff. Mm -hmm. wait, 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 wait. Don't be in a rush. KK? Yeah, from zero to one ten degrees. Uh, just, yeah. The virus uh, Chanshikar, we are here. Yeah. We're just going to the case details. I think you should uh, expose if you haven't, and then you know we'll be yeah, we'll be alive in a while. Yeah, sure. Uh I'm already uh, I've already exposed it. Right, right. We can see you now. Uh yeah. Deepak will moderate the session. Okay, okay. Thank you. Hello, Deepak. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So you are between completing TKR and the lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> so basically, this is a very severe virus deformity. Yes, sir. Uh, I've taken a standard medial parapetalar approach. Uh, I'll show you in a minute okay. the number of osteophytes we have actually removed. Bones have got to kidney. If, if the camera can be focused onto the onto this kidney tray. 
Oh, lot yeah. of astrophytes. Yeah. Loose so bodies. these were all the loose bodies inside the uh, in the suprapetalar pouch, and these are the astrophytes which were actually tenting on to the MCL. So that that is seen very clearly on the preoperative X-ray. So this is one of the reasons for the tightness of the MCL and the severe varus deformity. So it's uh, it it was they were embedded within the MCL. So I took a standard medial parapetalar approach, and then. I have removed all these osteophytes. The key is while excising these osteophytes, your cautery should remain very close to the bone because you should not compromise the MCL integrity. So stay close to the bone and direct your cautery in such a way that it doesn't compromise the MCL. Okay? Yes, sir. So I'm just going to evert the petala. There are a lot of osteophytes on the petala as well. Uh, is that clearly seen now? Because? About to see. Okay. Is something blocking there? Focusing is the problem. Okay. One second. Can you change the focus, please? So you are already done with the medial release? Not completely, but okay. most of the release has been done because the tightness on the medial side was primarily because of those osteophytes. Yeah. And these were evident on the preoperative x ray also. So I've seen many of the surgeons mm -hmm. trying to do first patella or completing the patella and then going to... Uh, I always do that because yeah. it, this helps me with exposure while doing the tibia as well. Sometimes if the osteophytes are very big, they can come sometimes come in the way of your jigs and then they can block your view as well. So especially when there is severe uh, patellofemoral wear and excessive osteophytes on the patellar side, I always prefer to remove the patellar osteophytes. So it's not only it completes one job, but also it helps with exposure subsequently. Can you hold this? Yes, sir, rightly said. So removing the uh, osteophytes around the patella helps in exposure. So to correct placement of the retractor and the lateral side also. Yes, yes. So I'm just going to judiciously excise some of the Hoffa fat pad. This again to is to help with the exposure and for placing the lateral retractor while subsequently doing the tibial cut and the femoral cuts. Right, sir. So again, there are some osteophytes in the, within the tendon as well. I don't know if you're able to appreciate or not, but there is a little bit of bony, uh, 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 bony loose body within the pad, uh, fat pad itself. Okay. So I'm removing that along with some of the Hoffa fat pad here. And the other thing I always prefer to do is uh, make a U-cut. On the synovium. So I excise part of the inflamed synovium here because this helps to uh, you expose the anterior cortex. And when you're making the anterior femoral cut, so you can actually see the cortex clearly. Can you give a curved ostrotum? Yeah. I gently tease the fatty layer on the anterior cortex so that I will be, be able to see the anterior part of the femur. Okay. So I normally don't evert the petella. Let's keep it like that. Now I'm going to get the knee into flexion. Light focus between. Yeah. You can see the amount of defect on the medial side. Yes, sir. yes we can, can see, see that. Can you see the can appreciate see the, the defect? defect? We can see the femur completely. Yeah, yeah. So, so are you going to subluxate the tibia completely or you want to take a cut first? No, I'll, I'll, I'll first remove the ACL and looks like normally I'm a CR guy, but in this case, I might have to go for a PS because the PCL doesn't look very good here. So yes. I'm going to first remove the ACL and the PCL and remove the femoral osteophytes and also the notch osteophytes first. Okay. And then I'll complete the femoral cut. Okay. And then I'll go for the tibial cut. Sir, what will be your indication where you want to go for femur first? I'm, I'm always a femur first guy. Okay. That's one thing. 
Okay. So the other thing is when uh, I usually use a modified gap balancing technique okay. where I would do the distal femur and then the proximal tibia, get my extension completely. So once I've satis once I'm satisfied with the extension gap, then I will complete with the rem remnant of the femoral preparations. Ostotum. So the key uh, key step in this particular case is the amount of osteophytes which are actually contributing to the varus deformity. So so excising the osteophytes will help with significantly uh, you know loosening up the medial space. So it was quite significant varus and it was partially correctable. It was not a flexible deformity and. He didn't have much of sagittal plane problem. So he didn't have much of fixed flexion deformity. Despite the amount of osteophytes which are present, he didn't have FFD as such. Yeah, so as you can see here. Yeah. Yeah, that the X-ray was totally different from the clinical picture. Yeah. So as you can see, there are huge osteophytes on the uh, uh, medial femoral condyle. Yeah, So uh, removing these osteophytes will help to, as you can see, the amount of bone which is coming out. So we'll keep all the both uh, osteophytes removed together and show it in a tray, kidney tray. Because removing these osteophytes is crucial especially when you are sizing the femur. So these osteophytes, when you are going for the, uh, you know, the one in four jig, so these osteophytes can actually come in the way. Right. And sir. The, so they can actually cause any, uh, you know, discrepancy in sizing of the femur. Okay. So I generally, generally mark the uh, white side, Leo white side line as well. So I'll just remove a little bit of fat pad on the lateral side here. Okay. As you can appreciate preoperatively, there is a little bit of lateral bowing as well. Femoral bowing, if you see the long length x ray. Normally, the entry point would be about a centimeter uh, uh, pro, uh, above the insertion of the PCL. But in this particular co case, I would go a little bit more laterally with the entry point because of the femoral bowing. No, 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 no. The bone is very sclerotic, so it's just taking a little while for the Yeah. 
it went in freely now so normally i put 6 degrees valgus for all my cases and i'm taking a standard 9 mm cut sir yes do you regularly measure the valgus cut angle in your standing scanogram no not not routinely so for all cases your it's 6 degree fixed valgus yes yes yes, yes. even for because, the valgus because the normal normal angle is between 5 and 7 degrees so i take an average Okay. but again i change this depending on the height of the patient yeah so in in short patients the valgus angle is little bit more so in those cases i go for 7 degrees but in very tall individuals i go for 5 degrees so it depends so, on the varus or valgus neck if you have a varus neck the valgus angle will be more if you have a valgus neck taller patients your valgus cut angle will be less yeah yeah Yes. Yeah. Email small person usually they have a varus. So come here. You have to align the anatomical axis. You know, you are putting the rod. So I have put the put the jig there and checking with the C blade as to how much the how much the distal femoral cut is. Okay. And generally, it goes through the notch, the intercondylar notch here. So if you are able to go through the notch, so generally it is an adequate cut. so if there is a fixed flexion deformity then obviously you'll have to go a little bit uh, proximal so you have to get more distal femoral cut and i will yeah retract there but otherwise in this case i'm i'm hoping that i'll be i'll be able to get away with a standard 9 mm cut okay in pillar uh, can you give me the c blade so generally after this i check with the c blade if my cut is flush and uniform all throughout or not so it looks fairly satisfactory so I'll, i i don't remove the pins at this stage i leave the pins always because just in case i have to revisit my distal femoral cut and if i am unable to get full extension unch unch don't remove that keep that remove that spike there don't relax it okay wait hang on a second how can you give me the forceps just so i'm just removing the lateral meniscus can see the popliteus very clearly there 
can you appreciate it yes sir okay there is a big osteophyte right on the posterior lateral corner which i'll try to remove now itself yeah you can see that yeah so keep on collecting it you can actually yeah i'll collect as many as possible they're all my souvenirs i'm still not able to uh, sublux the knee completely that's because of the big osteophytes on the posterior medial corner of the knee ikkada undi this there's a big chunk of bone which is stenting on the mcl here in the posterior medial corner so i'll will be i that's one of the reasons why sorry my meniscus you have to be careful when you are doing this uh, you know dissection here because it is very very uh, uh, you know clo in close connection with the mcl right sir ikkada undi a spike ma chinna spike chinna thiyo you can see the mcl very clearly there can you see that that shiny structure there arteries arteries so with a small artery clip i am removing that osteophyte here can you see that yes sir yeah nibbler chain i'll just crush that bone okay let's keep it like that i'll reposition my lateral spike here okay it on me side back yeah. yes as you could see here with that maneuver with that small maneuver of removing those osteophytes i'm able to sublux the tibia completely okay yes sir now the tibia looks like a tibia <laughs> yeah but still you can see the amount of defect here so i'll probably go one second probably go for a stem here okay so you i'll have to do a reduction osteotomy also in this case because of the amount of defect here can you appreciate the amount of defect yes sir yeah can i have a scale yes more of a intermedial defect yeah yeah so if you if i take the uh, the c blade one i'll put a c blade abutting the lateral tibial condyle yeah and this is the lower flare of the defect so this one way to see how much the defect is it's almost about 4 cm defect so and ultimately with 3 cm after taking the 10 mm cut right yeah some of yeah some the tibial cut okay so okay. ஒன் I'll, I'll put the pins and then I'll show you. Okay. okay sir. I'm taking seven mm from the lateral side. I want. I don't want to take too much of tibia. Okay. Because always when there is severe defect, you should reference from the lateral side, and never from the medial side, and take minimal tibial cut. I mean, you can always revisit your cuts. Right. So I'm just going to pin it in. I'm. referencing it with the center of the ankle here and with the tibial tubercle middle third of the tibial tubercle proximally okay sir can you show the side view so that it is parallel to the scene bone 
TVL jig. Yeah, the jig. Just show it from here. So I'll just take it down. After this, after taking the provisional TBL cut, what I would do is I'll size the tibia and remove all the excess bone on the posterior medial part because that is the one which will impede the full extension. Is that clear now? I mean, you need a side on view, is it? Deepak? But the camera menu is stuck in only one place. Uh -huh. Either, either, oh, camera either, Lalo? Like around? And they have two cameras, but. If there is a side view, they can show the amount of defect here, the medial defect. Yeah. Can you show me, give me one more headed pin or something for this? Delta IV. Pin puller chin? Ah, pin puller chin. Oh, delayed. Yeah, yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Can yes, sir. Either, Racha, can you come here? Okay. Is that clear now? Yes, sir. Beautiful. So, yeah. So you can see the amount of defect in this region. This is all this is all the defe de defective bone on the medial side. So what I'm going to do is I'll take, I've referenced 7mm from the lateral side. I'll go ahead with the tibial cut and then I'll put my tibial, uh, you know, uh, my trial on, uh, in place and size the amount of tibia and then remove all the excess bone. Right, sir. Okay. So. Switch the view. Give me a retractor. Give me a retractor. And take ah, then don't don't but slip that. Okay. Very yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's different. If it if, if you find like that, then you have to do it. Okay. Yeah. Mm, that's okay. At this, at this, remove that spike, nibbler. Close to bone. Yeah. If if you can appreciate here, this yes. is after the T bill cut. On the medial side, there's hardly any bone here. Can you see that? Right, sir. So I've taken about seven mm from the lateral side here. Right? Yeah. Can I have the spike? Tibial. Size tibia. Give me the tibial spike here first. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bone there. Give me a saw once again. Sir, the cameraman needs to go a little higher up so that he can show from the top side. Yeah. Please Please demonstrate the sizing of the TBL component. Yes, yes, we'll show that. There's a little bone here near the PCL attachment. So I'm going to remove that. Forceps. Yeah. Now get me the tibia. Ah, this is from yeah, less flexible in changing it here. Yeah, yes. So 
ఎక్స్ట్రాస్ <laughs> whether it is less than 1 5 mm it is 5 to 1 1 cm more than 1 cm less than 5 mm you can build up with cement alloy if it is bigger one depending upon the depth and these all things either you use screw allen or screw with the bone graft that you will get yeah so it's a combination of all things so this is a size 5 yes sir size size 5 5 5 yes yeah so male patient నెక్స్ట్ ఉందా సైజ్ సిక్స్ ఉందా సిక్స్ ఇవ్వు మ్యాచ్ ఇట్ లుక్స్ క్వైట్ స్మాల్ ఆన్ హిస్ ఆన్ హిస్ డైమెన్షన్స్ సో ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ ఫర్ అ సైజ్ సో సిక్స్ సీమ్స్ టు బి ఫిట్టింగ్ వెల్ ఓకే సో ఐఎమ్ యాక్చువల్లీ బికాజ్ మీడియల్ సైడ్ ఇస్ నాట్ వెరీ ఇన్ఫర్మ్ యు నో ఇన్ఫర్మేటివ్ ఇన్ దిస్ కేస్ ఐ యామ్ బేసింగ్ మై సైజ్ ఆన్ ది లాటల్ సైడ్ సో వాట్ ఆర్ యు ఎక్స్పెక్టింగ్ ది ఫిగర్ ఆఫ్ సైజ్ బికాజ్ యు ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు యూస్ ది ఎస్ ఇన్ దట్ ఇయర్ ఇట్ లుక్స్ it looks big so it will be a d or a e okay e or even f actually so that it is correctly matched right yes okay so in a ps in cr you can use uh, the uh, more of flexible sizes of femoral component and tibial component but in ps e usually there are two up and two down usually my majority of the manufacturers so it's sometimes better to see the size of the femur and decide the size of the tibia so if you are able to appreciate i'm uh, marking the medial side medial limit of my defect so that much of bone is going to be out yeah so one it will it will reduce the tightness on the medial side right. as well as it will reduce the amount of defect yeah. we have to deal with now i think we can so, so the crucial step is to protect the mcl so always yeah yeah so sorry ma mm, this is yeah yeah సో సార్ వాట్ ఆర్ ఆర్ వాట్ ఆల్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఇన్ యువర్ బ్యాకప్ యాప్ hello i think it's cut up hmm. yeah, yeah we'll remove that we'll remove that way is all the sclerotic bone less than cockroach is yeah only screw you don't need but if you are using a bone graft then definitely i would prefer a screw yes sir only screw you can punching konch tiyali yeah there still little bone left here nibbler ivanni yeah ఇట్ ఇస్ 
I think I'll just saw this. So I will take a little bit more bone here. Kunchu just kind of lying with the same. Okay. Yeah, Nibla. Yeah, in Pula. Technician, please. Quarter not working. So, if you can see, we have minimized the defect now. Yes, sir. Can you see that? Give me the scale now. So the C blade. So before the uh, preparation, it was a four, four, four centimeters. Yeah. Now we have brought it down to two centimeters now. In fact, it's a little less than two centimeters. So this is something which we can manage with. Right. Okay, it's just at the periphery. So I'll probably go for a, a stem as well in this case, but I will do that when I'm doing the tibial preparation. So let's see how much extension we've got now. Still not enough. Yeah. So this is called as shifting and resecting. So you shift the uh, tibia laterally, mm -hmm. downsize it by one and resect the remaining medial bone so that it will offload the medial okay. collateral ligament. You cannot downsize it by one and one. So suppose you had a three tibia, you can accept up to two. And it is all desirable to use a short stubby stem which is cemented when you are downsizing the tibia. Because if you had a mistake with the tibial resection and it is in varus and you have downsized it and not used the stem, then there is a very high chance that the stem will fail. Yeah. So you have to use a stem extension whenever you are downsizing, preferably. If you think it is okay, it's fine, but don't downsize it by more than one. Actually, uh, the amount of extension is still not uh, full actually. So I'm going for a 2 mm extra cut in this case. But you would have posterior medial osteophytes? Yeah, or... that's true, but... Uh... Actually, you can uh, cut the AP cuts and then clear the posterior recess and then commit. Otherwise, it becomes too lax. That's what is my experience. Okay. Yeah, we'll cut. Yeah. Retractor and person F F long E person F person. What is the size of the femur now? Coming to size F. F F with five. Yeah. And I think three looks all right here. Three degree rotation. So that. What was the size of the tibia? Six. 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 Okay, then it's fine. Yeah. So uh, one clue to the audience is like, if you want to uh, determine when you want to use a stem, if one third of the condyle is missing, like if you have a medial condyle and one third is missing, and you do a trial without any stem, mm. if and you see it. that the tibia is falling into that defect, that is when you know that okay, this requires something more. So never, never, never leave that type of a situation unstemmed uh, and then you will regret it later on because you just have a bone and then if you have to bone graft for some reason middle to bone more than 10 millimeters always use a stem when in doubt put a stem so err on the side of putting a stem yeah, if you have obese patients also it's recommended to put a uh, short, 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 yes, short sub stem yeah so as you can see here it has come to size f and it it looks good actually so in terms of the anterior resection. Chanshekar, so, there is a question from the audience. Yeah. How did you decide on three degrees rotation in this case? 
well basically i was looking at the uh, position of the epicondyles and also looking at the lower part of my uh, you know the cutting jig with reference to the tibial cut yeah so you are trying to make the femur parallel to the tibial cut yes but if you have posterior osteophytes and you remove then sometimes it may become uh, uh, you know too loose on the medial side yeah but shikar rahimant wakankar here hi uh, just one i mean every surgeon has his own technique uh, what i usually see is that at this stage i manually distract the knee and see what the flexion space looks like to, you know to my eye and if i find that medial side is still very tight and you're not balanced in extension at the time i just cut the posterior condyles and take the block off okay because you are still not committing on rotation uh, you have the option of increasing the rotation if the medial side still remains tight in flexion and that gives you an access to the posterior osteophytes so i just cut the posterior condyles and take the block off and you know that is a good via media to you got that what sir was saying he was saying that you can take a provisional posterior cut take the osteophytes off because you have already sized you know what size you are wanting to put and yeah. it will give you the extension gap balancing and then you can fine tune the external rotation right yeah submit it again show but ऑस्टोटोम टू प्रोटेक्ट चिन्ह प्लेट इच्छा हाँ शाम पर किधर बढ़ते अभी वो लाउट होटल या ऑस्टोटोम डे मार्जिन पॉइंट ना करना ओके ये so ostrum better yeah through remote इनपुला ओके कर्व डस्ट टू Yeah, yeah. So if you could lift the femur up, please. Leave that. Yeah. So Can see how the your your flexion gap looks pretty good. Are yeah, it is. Flexion gap. <laughs> yeah, the baby is to, uh, about to come out now. Yeah. yeah this is the medial most margin of the medial meniscus so it's important to keep your cautery oriented in a supra inferior direction not not transversely so there's one more baby coming out now lift lift please so you can see some more osteophytes coming out right yeah that's what dr krishna was telling yeah 
lift lift yeah looks good i don't think there are give me a curved osteotome so i'll remove any remnant osteophytes there so that will uh, even erase some of the posterior capsule so that your extension tightness will be cleared up yes yes cure it even walker i think so i think so i have more of a posterior medial release i can see here please lift yeah. lift nahi aati kada yeah yeah space looks good i'm not able to feel any more osteophytes there might be a little one here on the Osteolateral corner, chinnna thundi. Yeah, maybe in the uh, lateral side there is some osteophytes still remaining. Okay. Okay. So, Let's we'll do a trial and see how it is. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, that that. So he's going to do a trial with this ear insert. Look the balancing. flexion and extension then you go for the preparation of the box cut and then finally implant so okay yeah yeah so the femur actually is sitting pretty good yeah okay so now if the camera can be focused here yeah we can see the defect yeah you can this is the amount of defect we'll have to deal with i think we can manage with some screws and cement here and uh, we're going to put a stem Thanks. anyway we'll see well i'll see how the extension gap is now take two just so the extension ones yeah the tracking good looks good actually see yeah. as you can see this full extension yes sir and just show it uh, uh, focus here please yeah the please. defect can be well seen m cell is still intact tracking yeah. is pretty good excellent it looks symmetrical yes sir gaps and the other thing to look for is the where the femur is articulating on the poly it should be articulating centrally if it is articulating posteriorly that means your flexion gap is too tight yes so sir it, and if it is obviously too tight it will come off as well when you do the flexion but it's not pulling off even with see yes, as sir. you can see it is full flexion so it's still articulating for a final it. preparation sir can yeah. you Give some light about the ultra congruent deep dish type of insert. In such cases, would you go for that? Yeah, if I had gone for a CR, then I would have. But in this case, the P uh, the PCL was not looking that great. It was looking degenerate, yeah. and also with this amount of defect, yeah. uh, sometimes you know, with using less uh, uh, less constraint, it can be a little bit tricky to balance the knee. Yeah, maybe it's sometimes detrimental. I think that was a very nice demonstration, Chandra. We will uh, leave you to complete the surgeries, cement it, and join us here. Okay, thank we'll you. Thank you very much. A big round of applause from the audience. <laughs> Tough case, well demonstrated. So we thank will you. see the X-rays of cases which have been done so far. Yeah. And uh, where are the surgeons? <laughs> okay. Right. so we'll take a 10 minute break we'll see the x-rays and then you know you can have lunch quickly and come back the other case is getting ready and the five watch it after that so we'll see the x-rays if you remove the thing remove the thing he is putting a stem he will put a stem yeah spree of x-ray yeah mm -hmm. so this was the first case so one of the audience should comment comment on the x-ray i think that what do you feel about the x-ray
So this was the case with the PPRP on one side, flexion virus on the other side. Dr. B. D. Chatterjee did this case post up. Yeah, so no comments. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, it could have been later lateralized. Little lateralized of that. So don't apply for fellowship with Deepak Gautam, you know. So he's very strict. Yeah, so this was the neglected neck femur, 20 years old, neglected, become painful now, and uh, done by Uday. Yeah, looks great. It's excellent. It was a difficult case, you know. It was a very hybrid. Difficult. So it was a tough case and it was very well managed. You can see the nice uh, cup positioning, how he has cemented well, two centimeter distal to the tip of the stem, full white out valgus positioning of the stem. And the uh, kava angle is around 180 degrees. So the cup and the stem are parallel to each other and the head are parallel to each other. So the good, good. Yeah, so this was JV Srinivas case, second stage revision. With uh, this was PCK, a, yeah, a constraint one, yeah, it's a constraint implant, yeah, 17 poly was it, yeah, yeah, 17. TBI is fully cemented, and uh, comments on that looks good. I think the tough case, yes, yeah, yeah, the yeah it is a little bit lateral, yeah. lateralized. Sometimes it is difficult to recognize in a revision scenario. But the good thing is the stem is in center. So this probably was a case for an offset stem offset. where he could have medialized the tibial position and put in an offset stem. So maybe Dr. Hemant will show us how to use offsets today. Uh, nobody has focused on that. So he will probably show us. Next case. Yeah, so this was the protrusio case. Uh, Dr. Rajkumar was a surgeon. And this is the post-op X-ray. Looks excellent. Uh, oh, he didn't use the screw. Yeah. So, a uh, message to the audience is: if you have a protrusion like that, please put screws. Okay. Like we discussed yesterday, the fixation is in the rim, periphery. So, if the graft resolves for some reason, the cup will just go in. So, although it looks very solid on table, also put screws. Looks good. Case 5, again, virus knee. Dr. Ramana Murthy has done this case. Looks very good. It's a PS knee. If you're more critical, then a little bit of notching on the femur, but otherwise, looks very good. So, this was Professor Malhotra's case. Uh, static spacer uh, following removal of PFN. And this is the trochanteric reconstruction with a dual mobility cup and the monomod stem. So, it looks very good. The knee requires surgery. So, maybe done later. Yeah. Next. That's it. Yeah. So, these are the six cases yesterday. So, today's case we will put up tomorrow. So, I think uh, you can quickly have. Yes, yes. Three. 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 Revision take care. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're discussing. You can downsize the tibia and use an offset stem. Common perineal probably is a little bit away. I, I suspect the nerve was intact after surgery. So uh, there's no issue, sir. Sometimes when you are actually trying to clear the bone on the posterolateral corner, you actually see that fibular, you know, to a superior tibia fibular joint. So many times you would see that. See, lateral collateral ligament is going to be attached to the tip of the fibula. So unless you really cut it across, you will not damage it. Peroneal nerve is long away. I don't think that's an issue. So that, that will not be an issue. What is the what is the level of constraint? Because if you look at the lateral side, it's a little opening up. Is it because of the stretch of the lateral side or so this is a 17 poly? So that is true. It's a little bit opening laterally. That is true. So I would personally have used a 10 or 15 millimeter full tibia augment, medialized it, downsized it and used an offset stem. 
and put in a thinner polyethylene. So that would have been my personal preference. Yes. So that is what we were talking about. Suppose your fibular head is here. The level of the joint should be about a centimeter above the fibular head. And that you can, uh, as sir said, you can see the fibular head, superior tibiofibular joint, and then make sure that you're using a 10 millimeter full thickness augment to take the tibial base plate up. So as I was telling you, 17 is cutting the corners as close as we can. If it is not 20 or 25, then I would be worried because now I, I would go into the territory of a rotating hinge rather than a uh, TC3 type of implant. Would you agree with that, sir? Yeah, that's true. I mean, if you, the higher size you go, there's going to be more stress uh, at the interface between the poly and the base plate. And, you know, here at least you have some fixation with the central screw. Obviously, the locking mechanism is not adequate. That's why they have the central screw. But that screw is actually a tiny screw. So it may not uh, actually give you that long-term protection. Even for even if you see, look at other systems, you know, anytime you go to 17 plus, for example, in uh, even Zimmer, Yes. 17 time onwards, you need screw, screw. You need fixation screw. because screw. that the higher the thickness, there is more torsional loads and more of tilting loads on the poly and uh, base plate in interface. The locking mechanism alone cannot take care of that. That's why they have the screw. So just, just, just for everyone's learning and just for the understanding. So if you see, like you said, when you're making that proximal tibial cut, if you see the head of the fibula already, which you're going to see. So is that a warning indicator for you to actually try and build up the base plate? Which that means, means you already are very low. Very low. I so mean, is, it, is there no harm done in trialing with augments, which means hemi augments on either side, raising the tibial platform, going with a smaller insert, looking whether your joint line is elevated or locked back to normal? Is that, I mean, if you go one step back. No, ultimately the tibia going down, that means you know, the joint line will not be determined by the level of the tibial cut. It will be determined no. by the poly thickness by and the, the distal femur. Correct, correct. So joint but line per se will not be platform. decided by that. But raising the tibial platform. See here it's fully cemented stem. Correct. So what you do to the tibial, you know, ultimately you'll be raising the tibial base plate with a full augment, medial, you know, full uh, segment augment only to reduce the poly thickness. There's no other, there's no other reason for raising that. Uh, it's could translate to better. I mean, in the sense, soft tissue. Theoretically, balancing. I mean, ultimately augment is still a part of the right. implant. It's being fixed to the implant. So. And it is fully cemented stem. So yes, that's yes, obviously, yes, well, I personally yes. don't like, you know, putting cement down the canal because anytime you have to revise this, it's a nightmare to take that cement down. So you have to split the whole TP and take it out. Yeah. So it's a complete idea. nightmare to take that cement down. So I don't like the fully in cemented need, stem. But that's a, in need only metaphysical at cement. At the top. It's smaller short stubby stem you can cement. Okay. Let's have some wash. Cementing two days back I have done. Entire TP I had to split to take it out. Not come. So the... Uh, think what we're doing. So we can go live and whoever wants Porsche. to have lunch, they can grab lunch and come back, you know. So, so go, keep on going. Yeah. So where there was uh, notching on the femur side, so it tends to happen with everyone and how to prevent an on table. So if it is a lateral cortex notching, you have externally rotated more. If it's inter medial cortex not notching, you have internally rotated should be worried about full thickness notching. If the entire cortex is notched, then you must be worried. Otherwise, little bit of notch on one side or other is not that significant. That actually indicates that your external rotation is good. It has happened probably with every surgeon. Yeah, you can walk. So the next case is a revision uh, THR by uh, Dr. Mahesh Kulkarni. He has exposed the hip. So uh, you can get your plates inside, sit inside and watch the surgery. So we cannot stop. No, if it occurs, if it... If Cock, the... uh, sorry, cautery again. Dr. Hemant will moderate the case. Or yeah, yeah. Bring the lip into extension. That's Anil. it. Anil is... Anil. Correct. You have to moderate. Oh, sure. I think the question is a very important thing. So he said, uh, I think the, they all want to... If you notch full thickness, what what is your on-table solution? If I notch full thickness, oh, full thickness. You pray, you pray, you pray. You pray. No. So I think, see, uh, to to be very frank, I think you have to, uh, that's, that's come down one step. I mean, if you full thickness notch, I'll come to that. But I think the only thing is, please keep checking before you make that. Again, part. have the nibbler, please. Too late. But if you recognize a full thickness notch, I would stem it. 
stem it. But it is not but available in all is, units to stem and all implants that, cannot be stemmed. Correct. Yeah. The only problem is only PFC. I'm sorry, I'm using that the name. Only PFC you, will need it. You and Buccal Papa's primary has a femoral stem. No other primary will offer you a femoral stem. So that is why you have to be aware of that. You can put a plate. Not yes, moving. If it's Solid. a prophylactic plate is a very good option. Let's have a punch to take the head out. We need to catch the head. If you don't have anything else, we might have to reuse it. Notch will need to be really big for me to put a plate on the primary knee. <laughs> Uh, yeah, unless you're gone in the medullary canal. Give me the osteotum. Just hold on to the stem maybe with something. But if it comes out, it comes out. These are good ones. My worry is I might end up damaging the trunnion. Yeah. So, 12-14 taper. Yeah. Okay, let's have some wash. We can see what the trunnion looks like. The trunnion looks very good. And the stem is also good. Now what we need to do is, where is that syringe? No, no, I want the front portion. No, no. Where is the front part of the syringe? Yeah. Uh, can you cut this off as well? Yeah, relax. Okay. Uh, can do you have a bone hook? Yeah, let me get that bleeder. Hold this. Let's have that um, syringe. Mahesh? Yeah. Hi, Anil here. So, Hi, Anil. Go ahead. Uh, so, describe what you've done so far and you run through your provisional plans, please. So, what we've done is um, we've done the posterior approach. We expose the stem. Uh, we have found that there is osteolysis around the proximal part of the stem, very uh, small area. I will show that to you as well. Um, we have checked for the stability of the stem. Can you hear us? Yes, yes. You said you checked for the stability of the stem, Mayesh. Yeah. So we also checked for the stability of the stem. The stem seems to be stable. Okay. Um, so that was my first. She is only 34. So your plan is not to do anything. To I want to avoid touching the stem altogether. Sure. Yeah, no, you need to pull. Yeah, I can see the screen. Excellent. Yeah, just pull, 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 pull. Yeah, that's it. Um, can you see now? Yes, yes, we can see, Mahesh. Please. So go what ahead. we've done is we've pulled the stem away. We've released the gluteus maximus insertion, sure. so that we can we can deliver the stem uh, so forward. I've just got a small bleeder somewhere irritating me. Let me just catch that first. So um, that's what he assesses. The stem is well fixed. There's only a little osteolysis. The trunnion. I have also moved to... it away. Forceps. Uh, we also moved the head away. Okay. And uh, we have assessed for the um, trunnion quality as well. Uh -huh. It's a 12 14 taper on the stem. Okay. This is an exact tech hip, um, exact tech stem, and exact tech cup. Okay. Unfortunately, um, these ones have had a problem with lysis. Yes, they have the, the exact long artery. Articulations have run into problems. And somebody grab the... From another company. Yeah. Only from another company is okay. The idea so, is basically, ideally situation, you shouldn't use a head from another company. If you don't want... See, when you're using an egg, suppose you're using a Merrill stem. Ideally, you should use a Merrill head itself. You do not mix and match two companies. That is what... The question was whether... There'll be a problem with using another company's head. So that's what I was explaining, Mahesh. That I yeah, so that. ideally, if you want to use another company's head, one of the options is to actually consider using a sleeve, um, uh, a new sleeve which can go onto the existing taper, and then you have a fresh trunnion on the outside of that sleeve. So you don't want to have and then 
but ideally you should use the same manufacturer sleeve um, and cup as well right angle please so what have you protected the trunnion with you protected with the plastic we've cut a syringe i will show that as well sure so i take a 10 ml syringe and um, cut it um, and the front part of that syringe goes to protect the trunnion sometimes also with a small piece of swab or a gauze piece small gauze piece around it here i haven't used it uh, but you just make sure that you don't lose that piece of plastic somewhere in the patient but that does protect the trunnion quite well now i am trying to what we've done is you need to create a pocket antero superior to the acetabulum here under the abductor musculature so that you can get a complete view of acetabulum maintaining the stem in place so i think that is the most challenging the first most challenging part of this operation is to actually getting exposure of the acetabulum in presence of a stem the second challenging part for my uh, uh, problem is how much of massive osteolysis it always looks worse than what is seen on an x ray very true so on an x ray i have got massive retroacetabular osteolysis if you can see the x rays there and that is extending right into the posterior column and there is a fracture which is partly healed no I yes think. i think everyone saw the x ray uh, significant osteolysis i think one more question mahesh as you proceed with the exposure yeah. how did you check for stability of the femoral component we have um, what we did is obviously it's very crude just to relax just relax a second and a right angle now so we actually hammered the head out with significant force yes doesn't budge okay there is rotational stability as well and also as you can see the proximal coating is exposed um and i can actually see bony ingrowth on through the rest of the stem as you look down upon from the top end where dr deepak is standing yes so i think all the three tests rotational stability we checked for axial stability when we hammered the head out the stem doesn't budge it moves as a single unit so although if you look closely at the at the x ray yes um no right angle um you can see that there is a small hint of whether there is a pedestal which is forming correct. around the tip of the stem correct correct but, but the rest other, other zones look fairly well embedded. very very well integrated so it will be foolish to pre operatively you decide on the x ray how much yeah so it's very foolish to actually try and unless i am stuck with offset problems um after my cup is restored yes i i am not planning to touch the stem here i am going to compromise by using another company's um, uh, human another company's head on this 12 14 taper simply because exactec has start stop providing that in india so basically do a little tap out whether the stem moves check for rotational stability yeah, as well as check on to have the plastic with the proximally coated stem you can okay. utilize the amount of periosteum elevator so then you are fairly convinced that the stem is well fixed so do you have instruments to take out the cup so now he's protecting the trunnion and then go ahead with the exposure yeah just take this out for a second yeah so what i've done uh, i don't know whether you can appreciate it from there yes. is i've gone antero superior to the acetabulum under the abductors uh -huh. um and i've created a pocket yes. and where i'm going to actually get the femoral head into that pocket okay so that my exposure of the acetabulum will be complete let's have a hook bone hook a small one please yeah and then i'll put a home on there once my uh, let's have the mastoid that i've got and push sure, this sure. push this up a little bit that's sure. it yeah the retractor self retaining retractor that i have got this is all steps to get your acetabulum exposed yeah so the challenge here is to no here um to actually see inside the acetabulum maintaining the stem yes and i think you will slowly see that we will get a decent view of the acetabulum the second challenge is to take the cup out without damaging the bone existing stock. pathetic bone stock that we have exactly so now the head is in the pocket anteriorly i'm just going to go around circumferentially around the cup trying to expose it you will gradually start seeing it 
and the osteolysis will be like a soft mushy bone which will come fall into my hands yes if i can maintain a semblance of a ring of bone which is intact or even anterior superior and posterior inferior cortex where i can actually get some purchase correct i think we will be pretty happy so you will do all the releases necessary which is basically required to have a 360 view can i have another forceps please sister forceps. yes um, currently i have got good view on the uh, posterior complete view of the posterior column which i'm going to show you in a minute Mm -hmm. um you can see that um the posterior column i don't know can you see the posterior column here is intact yes yes and there is a fracture line which is now healing with callus we can see it very well here okay uh, because the camera doesn't have any 3d depth here yes. is the bump which shows the fracture line which is probably just trying so, to heal there was a fracture line so that's what mahesh is referring to there's a fracture that is healing well or oh, and and then i'm going to uh, clear uh, inferiorly let's have a long artery i think the important thing is to get a good exposure of the acetabulum before starting yeah so well, i tried to do a little bit before you guys joined but i think the knee replacement went very quickly in the other ot no that's what so you have to release inferiorly he has Uh, the gluteus maximus has already been released no uh, yes yes 100% point. because unless you release the gluteus maximus you cannot really deliver the femur anteriorly enough correct that is a for you to get audience. yeah to get a good vision of the acetabulum let's have some wash please <laughs> yes this is this is the question is uh, yeah so basically in the revision scenario definitely remember that you have hold to hold the leg here more. so you will have to like that yeah that's it perfect issues to get visualization of the entire cup and that is what is being done so that is why it takes so much more longer because it's scar tissue it is not normal tissue <clears throat> so let's have my medium sharp homan where are my homans i've got three of them uh these are mine okay so i didn't get it okay the gluteus we release the gluteus maximus and try to skeletonize the femur slowly that's on the medial side as, as is required to get your femur translated anteriorly and get it out of the way so now if you look if he's working on the inferior capsule he's working on the anterior so all is to facilitate now that the femur has moved out of the way you need to get the entire rim of the acetabulum exposed so dr mahesh is releasing the anterior you have a nibbler the poly is broken uh, superiorly and posteriorly okay i can see the edge of the cup now the first thing is to remove the poly okay now what are the ways of removing the poly one is you can have a dedicated uh, instrument to actually separate the poly from the um, from the cup itself another homan please yes so that is um, probably with jnj that they have that separate instrument let's have a wash i hope you can now start yeah, we can see that so yeah. how do you normally remove the poly uh, my so i use um, a 4.5 mm screw yes i drill through the plastic and let the screw hit against the metal and push out the poly here i'm just going to take an osteotome and see if i can tease it out because it's so fragmented that i think yes. it is going to probably just fall out it just followed so if the poly is not fragmented you can use a screw but make sure you drill through if it's a multi hole cup you have to make sure you drill it through to not through the hole so that could be a problem so you should drill it into the shell which should hit the shell yeah this is not going to come out so do you have a screw set so can you hold this with so two hands so 3.2 drill with 3.5 yeah, drill with so one in the left hand even a assembler right screw hand. or a 4.5 mm screw either way let's see if there is a bleeder here so so basically you are targeting to disengage the mechanism touch forceps or artery because unless you remove the liner you won't be able to use a system like the explant no, or long artery so even to remove the acetabulum there are various the, you you are familiar with the explant system right yeah the explant where you run the blade sister do we have a screw set yeah i'll give me a drill bit 
now there's so a now you also have to be lucky when you are doing this because you are hoping that you are not against one of the screw holes yes that's exactly what we were discussing so even a multi hole cup or you have to make sure you drill against the and you reach the shell correct yeah get me a 40 screw ideally a 4.5 screw because it's bigger um so once the poly is out so two or three and the last way the poly can come out is a standard orthopedic surgeon's hammer where <laughs> you actually uh, use a technique called a gentle persuasion gentle persuasion yes where you hammer it like crazy and it make sure that you don't perforate through the medial um, but the only problem with that is you will probably powder the poly isn't it yeah so look yeah so as you tighten it the poly should pop yeah. out i hope everyone can see that that's it so that comes out quite nicely wash so the next thing is we need the removable the curd osteotomes for getting around the periphery of the cup first is the screw driver to take out the screws so what is the system you are planning to utilize for removal of the shell uh, mahesh is it is the explant or do you have Screw driver, the curved one. Yeah. Where is the exact tech one? Which explant? Uh, is it the Zimmer? Exp which one is it? Copy. Bell one. Anyway. So to remove the screws before you start, we need to pull it out. Yeah. So don't. If your yeah. screw heads are gone, then you're in for trouble because you'll have to use what is called a broken screw. X. You'll have to start praying. Start using the broken screw extraction set so that you can cut threads into. Wash. So I just hope and pray that the screw heads are not gone because you start another story from then. Yes. Screw driver again. Okay. We'll explain to you. I my explant system. We for those of you who are not aware is a system where you use there are two blades. I mean, the one is a shorter blade and a longer blade. So, what you need to essentially do is basically, it comes with three head sizes: twenty-eight, a long artery, thirty-six also. So, what happens is you put in a primary. Now, we've taken out the liner. You can either put back the same liner, or you put a liner that's provided in the set. Engage the head, and use the blade. First, use the shorter blade. The small nibbler. Very really essential that you expose the rim completely. run the blade on the rim so it's by gentle malleting that you get through and try to run it exactly all around then you switch to the longer blade and run it all around so basically you have to do gentle malleting tap 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 the idea is to take out forceps when you're taking out the because there would have been a certain amount of integration so you're running the blade it's a very thin blade yeah so basically so when you run the whole thing out it will scoop out but that takes some time because you have to run the blade very gently and you have to tap it transmitted because i am inside the acetabulum so it goes at the shell bone interface the acetabulum shell and yeah. the keep it here so let's see um, what have you got do you have a curd osteotome which goes around the this one so that is a must have situation for otherwise If you use a blunt osteotome, you will damage the existing acetabulum. I'm just checking the instrumentation now. Give sure, me a small sure. curve, just, small curve osteotome. Question is, what is the indication for the revision? If you looked at study the X-ray, the head had moved eccentrically, so the poly has worn out, and that's what was seen intraoperatively. Also, the poly is broken, and yeah. there's a lot of osteolysis around the acetabulum. so this is a been a problem with the exact tech hips there has been issues with the poly and the and the shell articulation so anyway this was revised because of the eccentric wear increasing vein shortening pain and shortening so i can go around the no this is actually i'm not sure how long since i can get uh, around the cut with this osteotome do you have a longer curved osteotome the other way is to use thin osteotomes that you have to work your way around so this will take a little time as if it's well incorporated you have to no curved one a little bit more curved than that so 
So just a little bit of a challenge here. We are assembling the eggplant. Dr. Deepak is kindly doing it on the back table till I am actually going around the rim of the cup to loosen it out so that at least I, I can get a short blade in. So that's very nicely done. Yeah, you can see. The idea of doing that is to actually... Can you see the, the osteolysis? Blade. Can you see the osteolysis coming out? Um, yes, yes. Through the yes. screw holes, horrendous it is. Uh, have we got the bone grafts? Yeah. Let's have some wash. Wash. So the idea of using that osteotome is to clear the area around the shell so that your explant will sit in. The mice will show you shortly how the explant is. What size blade is that? 48. Sir. The top is 48. Sir. Yeah. Is it a short one or a long one? So what they'll be do is assess the size. So you'll be able to read the size of the cup. You'll read, read for each size, it'll be a small blade and a long blade. Mayesh, could you show us the assembly? People here have not seen yeah. the plant. Yeah, so yeah. We can show us the assembly. So can you bring it here, Dr. Deepak, so that we can show it? Do you have a trial liner for 48? Trial liner, plastic. So it's, usually there's a trial liner available, but otherwise you can put in the liner. So this, can you see this? Yeah, so that is this the is a handle onto the explant. So that is a T and that's a handle. And the blade actually mounts at the end of the explant. So there is a short blade and there is a long blade. Once you create a little bit of space around the rim of the cup, you can start with the shorter blade, go around the acetabulum and then replace that with a longer blade and go around the acetabulum. And usually if you're lucky, the cup falls into your hand without damaging much bone. So you assemble the short blade. So you tighten it onto that handle and we'll show you. I don't think you'll need that now. You start can get rid of that. Right. You have to use start you with the short. Give him the suction. And if you can hold on, on to these two things, in the end, I can actually ream in between your hands to get me the version right. So let's get the liner, trial liner. Has a blade. 52 has a blade. 54. Yeah. So I'm placing a 48 trial liner inside. Yes. But the trial liner is from Merrill. So okay. it actually sits prouder than the cup. So my short blade may not actually work. And we have attached a 28 head at the end of the explant. You so park it in. With the short go, blade for a 48 cup. Yeah. So look I'll at the position. My hand, so this is for the mallet. You can see. It's now that you mallet this. Actually, I've got a good uh, space around it. See? Correct. So, so now I replace this with a longer blade. That the blade runs and around the periphery. The longer. Yeah, now you can take, if it's running around 360, then you take the longer one. Very often to break get that, out the base, screw and give me the liner. It's not well integrated. So it use a mallet, run it. Again, use a mallet, run it. So that's how it will break that interface. Mm -hmm. It's all, no, no. It, this is, yeah, the, you'll have to slowly scrape it out. But the idea is just so that it comes out. And very often if you use it correctly, if you have explanted a 48 cup and if you use it correctly, then yeah, there is fine. Actually, get to 52. Yeah, give me that plastic now. I'm going to replace the same plastic same, yeah. that I've yeah, taken out. Same poly. Oh, he's done that. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Option you got. So now you can see the blade reaches much the deeper. Same poly. Can you see that? Yes, correct. And then I'm, I'm going to go around. So you can use the same poly that's just been taken out and. And go around the acetabulum circumferentially now. So if you notice that it requires some force to drive it around the establishment. Yeah, I think we need to go with a shorter blade again because here there is not much space. Not I point. don't want to lose any bone while doing it because it's that is my saving grace. That posterior bone which is left behind and the anterior superior bone which is left behind is where I'm going to get purchase. Rest is all soft mush. Let's have the small osteotome that you had. Curved one. The small curved one, yeah. Yeah, so we got the small blade. Thank you very much. Between the small blade and the large large blade. So now you're getting back to the small blade because the now I need to go around the periphery of the. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. now I can actually dig it. I don't That's know right. whether you can see it. I can go around quite nicely, circumferentially around the cup. So you're able to get around 360, Mahesh, 
all round nearly nearly there hammer please yeah. and because of the poly wear sometimes the poly because it is worn out it's slipping exactly chalo let's have the long one it all depends on how sharp the edge of the explant is ha ah, the edge of the explant needs to be really sharp yes anyway we are going with the long blade once more i hope you can appreciate the way the technique works i think this one has probably transformed my revision practice to a great extent before that it was a painful long procedure yeah i think the explant has really helped a lot yeah so we will go back again so going back to the long blade yeah oh god i just got one area where i can't go through in the posterior column hammer so the the thing is we cannot change the liner there are two three reasons we can change the we can leave the cup as it is the mm. is, because the poly is broken we have to change the bloody we have a replacement poly worry that the crack has opened up <laughs> if the cup is well fixed if you have uh, yes if you if the cup is really well fixed and if you have a replacement poly available and you are let's have the curd of chotum do that wash ah yes you can even inject bone graft into that area and let's see but no all nibbler has to be revised that is a best option give me the curd osteotome the small one that you had yeah okay you know that so that's it Mahesh, a quick question. Yes. From the audience, if the acetabulum is so well fixed, mm. would, you it, would you leave it and just change the liner, or would you have a? Um, in this case, the retroacetabular area of lysis is so big that uh, you need to really, in a young patient, address that as well. Now you can actually make a window and try and bone graft it from the uh, dome of the acetabulum, but I don't think it's going to. be sufficient uh, sufficient for this patient correct also the implant manufacturer has pulled out their uh, poly anyway so But there is no replacement poly no poly available for us so you have to think of all things before we sort of decide let's have the osteotome uh, let's take That's the poly out of the plan so basically there's so much of lysis there's so many ways described to make so you can inject bone cement you can inject bone substitute you can even graft it also but once there's so much of lysis and there's no matching poly better to remove the cup mm. now your efficient way is to the bloody poly is sat down again <laughs> hmm no no let's have the screw again now it's come out screw again the same screw a screw driver so the poly that we put back in has got stuck in again it's got engaged again okay. and the poly the trial for the find the implant that we took out has unfortunately okay. sat down quite well so i have to do the same maneuver twice let's see now um let's have the curd osteotome the explant is not working brilliantly and that i guess is because the blade is not very sharp god so i have to go the old fashion way now okay we tried the longer blade you will do next people is there is you it right the 48 long you want the the yeah we'll try it again yeah people will go both people yeah yeah so you can just use this head instead 
so i think the game here is to preserve as much of um, bone as possible i am worried that we may have to we end up breaking the posterior column and then the operation will become quite a nightmare you end up using a cage i don't want to use a cage for this lady so let's see we just assembling the longer blade for the explant i'm going to go without the um going without the liner yeah just try it i know the limits of this and this is not going in hammer is stuck here it's really stuck at the posterior column correct we can see that it's mallet section yeah can we use the same yeah let's have the same liner that we took out yeah without the screw sister yeah take it out there's only the posterior column that's holding out the rest of it is okay yeah i think the rest is all out it's just the top the supi the the pole of the cup and also the posterior column so at the polar region so let's see section i think we are successful nearly there mallet yeah section i think you got your way around the posterior yeah let's have a cocker cocker or a nibbler mm ah let's have some wash yeah let's have a cocker again do you have curved osteotomes which go right behind the back ah oh, you need that revision curved osteotome no 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 it's a special revision osteotome but hammer
not completely out. My God. The problem is also, we also have to reconstruct this thing. So when you're taking it out, you have to be careful that you're not going to destroy bone and be in a situation where you have nothing else to reconstruct with. So that is where I'm taking time. I think that is the key here, patience to take it out. Others will disrupt the existing bone stock also. Yeah, these ones. So this is what I was waiting for. The long curved osteotome, curved osteotome which can go at the back of the cup. These are crucial. So I think before the explant came in, these were the workhorse for taking the cup out. And they go right around the cup. I don't even need explant sometimes. Yeah, it's nearly done. Any more variations of this? right at the pole now. Sorry. My worry is <laughs> we will destroy the posterior column anyway we'll see sections well it's it's like cold welding at some places yeah, let's have a cocker or something this is a nightmare um third osteotome that big one the big one that i was using no, no, no. The explant uh, blades were not going around completely, Mahesh. Sorry? The explant blades? No, they can't. They no. are not going deep enough. And I think it's stuck at the pole now. Okay. So that is where I can't reach with the explant. I've gone all around. Okay. Like you can see, I've gone all around here. Is the pole of the cup, I think, is also stuck. Correct. And that will lead to big bone loss on the floor of the acetabulum if I just pull it out. So just bear with me for some time. Uh, the big one. Is Vijay here. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we, um, when the pole is stuck like this, we go inferiorly. The concept being that even if it destroy bone inferiorly, it doesn't participate in fixation. Yeah. So, so that one you can best compromise. Best to the pole is uh, from the... Yeah, uh, I'll do uh, that as well. The southern side, yeah. Yeah, because then at least 
I'm not going to end up damaging anything, levering out on the. Oh. Dangerous. Yeah, bloody. One yeah, can I have another one? Third one, big one. Only worry is then we might fracture something, man. No, that's the problem. Ah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. My concern is that we will end up compromising on bone. Is it coming up now? Yeah, nearly there. Oh, shit. The only worry of levering superiorly, as you said, Vijay, is losing good bone stock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you can't go there. So I'm concentrating inferiorly, posterior inferiorly mainly. But again, that is the bone that I want to use for fixation as well. Let me see. Oh. God. Mahesh, just to suggest, are the 50 or 52 blades a little longer? You want to try whether... I can try it again. Um, do we have a long... What, did we use the longest blade on the explant? Let's try it again. Where is the handle? Yeah. Uh, let's have the liner. Mm. Uh, Suction, can please. Use it without the head also. Maybe get more uh, length that way. You can take the head away. Uh, take it the way, you think? Yeah, that's how. Yeah, then you'll get more depth. Blade length. Yeah. Yeah, that works. It goes quite significantly now to the pole. Ah. Lilla. Yeah, success finally. Fantastic. Oh, God. Let's have a wash, please, and a curate. So now I have to see what has been left behind after the destruction that we have caused. Um, massive hole in the superior aspect. As you can see, can you see this? No, oh, goodness. This is crazy. So let's get the bone graft. I have a good posterior and superior columns. I'm not sure about the anterior part of the acetabulum though. Yeah, that's okay as well. Let's hold this like that. Curate, please. Do you have a bigger curate? So a little bit osteolysis in the ischium, not much in the pubis, but massive osteolysis in the dome. The problem is to get the primary fit. Here, actually, you need an augment superiorly. Uh, wash, please. And I also had thought 
that I might have damaged the posterior column, but I haven't. Okay, let's see. Mop. A top big one, a fresh one. Yeah, well, that is a bit scary there. I'll put the obturator vessels out. Hmm. No, no, you, you hold on to that. And let's see if you can. Now this needs to be up here. Okay. Another blunt homan for me. You had a blunt homan just now. I was using it. Where is it gone? Yeah. Let's see. Um, cautery. Oh, we don't have augments or anything. And a spike, please. Mm, just a little bit less aggressive, something. One thing we might have to do is actually think of a structure like an allograft to go there in the socket and reconstruct it instead of an augment like an old time. Where is the plastic gone? Mahesh, you have augments available. There are, is it? Yeah, yeah, there are augments. So you can use it. So yeah, we touch for the 3D long printer. artery. Yeah. Which augments are there? Meryl, we got a 3D printed uh, highly porous augments. Okay. But uh, are there any trials or something? Yeah, yeah everything's there. Yeah, perfect. Such a long artery, then we can use that. Because I think there is a massive so defect. Now. Can you, I don't know whether you can appreciate, but there is a massive hole in the antero superior aspect. Yeah, we can see that. We can yeah. see that. Yeah. So there is a huge. What about the rims and the peripheral uh, anterior? Well, the posterior, posterior, posterior inferior is fine. The posterior column is fine. And the anterior superior column, say, maybe from 1 o'clock to around 11 o'clock is gone. Superior. Okay, you can now uh, uh, aim for a AP capture between posterior superior and anterior inferior. Yeah, we will try that. I can medialize a little bit. Force it, please. Yeah, but the defect is too big, too big. Just to go away, uh, uh, just from fixing, I might have to use a bone graft and then if my primary fit is good, then we can maybe accept it without an augment. Yeah, I think we uh, arrange for some bone graft. There's a three we have bone graft. Yeah, yeah, you have room. So let's have a reamer. Start with say 46 or something. Very, very. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, so this is the defect superiorly. It's a very rare situation. Yeah, here. If I think it's just out, beyond the vision it's of work. the camera. So when there is significant. Uh, uh, Mahesh, what? question from yeah. one of the delegates. Mm. Uh, basically, when there's such significant osteolysis, yeah, you would you send some material for biopsy or further histopathological examination? Because somebody said that they really? found I a situation reaming. where they had a tumor coming really? much later. No reaming. There is no attachment for reaming on this. There is. That is a reamer attachment. You can't give it on drill. There is Let me see. The markers also pointing to remember when you're evaluating preoperatively. Yeah, that's the reamer. Yeah, put it on that. Doing your uh, normal markers. So it should directly fit on that. Pointing towards osteoblastic activity, obviously, you have to take. 
that also you have to check it's a long so the, it's as drilling sudden onset and things like that means so the background very rarely do you see a tumor mm. with such significant onset yeah give me 50 Mm, that is directly going into the pelvis yeah so mahesh now that the columns are relatively intact and uh, you are progeny planning your tentative plan would be bone graft and uh, yeah multi hole cup and bone graft larger cup yeah. yeah if i can get this one is looking good now okay. what is this size what is the size of the rima that we use just that's now? 50 keep that bone give me a 51 See, so that for the delegates, everyone, this is the advantage of using an explant. When you explant at a forty-eight, and if you have not caused significant damage, you'll get a good fit. This with is not bad. Yeah, that's the floor of the epidermal. I can't go any any more medial anymore. Okay. Uh, what is the bone graft that we have? Can I have a look? Yeah. Let's have a saw. So we have femoral head. So I might. Use a femoral head into the superior cavity, um, fix it, and then shape it and piecemeal. Or you're going to place it like a figure of seven. Sorry, a seven graft. Seven graft. Okay. Yeah. Would it not be better to use an augment, Mahesh? Then. Uh... Yeah, augment is yeah. The structural allografts are not very good in the long term, so I need to see the augments. Um, is somebody here? knowledgeable about the augments please let's have a, a towel clip yeah do you have a pointed one yeah excellent so i'm just going to shape the bone graft so what we want is this part on the superior aspect keep it on this thing so that i don't pierce the Uh, Krishna, Krishna, question of uh, where where the allograft is from? No, Dr. Rajesh. So, allograft. The question is where? How how do you process the allograft? Where is it from? It's uh, not strictly official, but we have a minus eighty three degree freezer. So the surgeries which are done, so they have a retention sample taken. The blood is frozen for three months. HBS, HG, HIV, HCV are tested. 
once it is negative it, you can use it for your local facility but there is now law that you cannot yes. use those xylographs the way you want but now there all are... of us have bone banks at our own places so, so if what... once it is at minus 83 degrees it is you know so it's procured sterile so you take the take it from the head head from the surgery double pack it label it and store it in the thing it's a sterile packing but once it is at minus 83 degrees everything will die and then you rapidly thaw it to room temperature and then you can use for your own purposes so what you can also do is basically store it at minus 70 do the hiv hps now bone bank rules is that you have to do syphilis you have to do all the testing then you wash it when you bring it out with peroxide and beta in this is a trial is it before you do that you if you have a blood bank you can Take it to the blood bank. They have an irradiation machine for blood products. Big, eh? So if you irradiate it for 10 minutes, that also further, but takes away the antigenicity. Also. Do we have a smaller one? No. It's not. We can try and put it, but this is too wide for it to go and sit there. Um, Do you have a smaller one, 48 or something? Section. And the cup is going to be 52. I'm going to put the augment into the defect superiorly. No, this is too big. Ah. Yeah. No, too big. Yeah, that is dangerous territory. Gosh. Yeah, give me the nibbler. Fifty, is it? Okay, let me see. I might just have to use the bone graph and see the trial cup. Can I see the 50 augment? Trial, yeah, that is 52. Uh, it's the same, is it? That is the smallest. So the smallest augment that we have is unfortunately um, too big for this lady, uh, for the cavity that we have. Okay, just relax. Yeah, hold it here. Let the leg go down. Yeah, let it go down. Uh, we can pack this inside. Uh, spike, please. Not easy. Yeah. Pottery. Yeah. So you have to go on to iliac wing. Yeah. Maybe this needs to be shortened. So give me a towel clip again. Yeah, hold it. Yeah. Just the width, the width is too much. Let's see. I don't want to drop this. Yes. 
So if I can pack some bone graft behind it, and then we have to ream. Let's have the K wires. One more. We need to protect this. We probably have to cut it or use a. Uh, do you have a needle cap? Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to pack some bone graft underneath. Yeah, Chucky. So let's have a 46 reamer. A bit tricky. Yeah. Suction. Relax. Even smaller. I think you slice off a bit, I think. Otherwise, you're going to rock it off. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to ream through the... You take a saw and cut a portion of it off, and then it'll be easier for you to ream. Yeah. So, the screws... Let me just see. These K wires are obviously going to be in my way. Next one, say, give me 48. All we put screws here. Yeah. Uh, 50. Give me a nibbler, please. Yeah, move his hand away. Yeah, that's it. Um, give me a trial, 50 trial first. I just need another Homan. No, not too sharp. Just... Yeah, can we use that? I just had it there. Yeah, yeah it's here. No, no, no. Hold on to this. Let go of the suction. Let go. I gently push it. Now it's also very shallow. You are a 52 trial, uh, Mahesh. That's so this, is, this is 50. 50. Okay. Yeah. The capture that I had was with 50. No, no, no. Don't lose this and put the suction up because then I lose the vision. You're planning on a multi hole cup, nice. Yeah, probably uh, advanced growth surface um, cup 51. When you're putting uh, such a or a piece of allograph like this, what is the yeah. optimal or ideal post bone contact area that you're looking at for the cup? Um, for an advanced ingrowth surface, you probably could get away with 60-70%. Um, but for something which is the routine cup, I think then you need to worry if the host bone contact is less than 80% or 70% is going to be a problem. 
So remember that you cannot have more than 30 to 40 percent, or you, in fact, more than you ideally should have 70 to 80 percent of host bone contacting the cup. If you have that, correct. So you can't fill the rest with allograft simply because uh, integration, the chances for incorporation are that much lower. You don't want to take a risk. That is the idea. MA52 trial. So I have under ream now, actually. For this cup, usually I will over ream by one millimeter sometimes. You're using a 52 multi hole? You're planning yeah. to? Yeah. Trying to. Yeah, that's not going to have a brilliant grip at all. Hammer again. It will start spreading. Mm. Well, let me see. Yeah. Give me the multi hole trial. One more tap. One more. Yeah, cut the end or bend it coming in our way. Have you got the trial, new trial? Is that we might have actually overseeded our time? Is it right? Are we still on time? We have to also pack some cancellous bone graft behind this thing before we put screws in. So, especially your idea of using a multi hole cup, especially when such a when you're using a large, so that you'll get multiple screws into, you'll have a, you more avenues. You can get a screw here and here, and a couple of screws I here. Mean, you're talking about a fracture that was healed. We might be able to. So you want to bridge it. You want to get two screws and superior. some bone graft here. You want at to the get one or two screws inferiorly also. Final is wearing so out. We're trying to look at getting maximum screw fixation, stabilizing the fracture also, and getting good screw hold all around. No, no. So that is a 52 trial, Mahesh? Yeah, it's not going to give me primary stability. That is my concern now. Okay. Um, so sometimes uh, give me a 53 reamer or a 52 reamer, sorry. Then we are looking at something like a cage. But at this age, cage is not a very good option. So it is going to work like a distraction now. Yeah. Give me 54 trials. So I'm going to just... Try and squeeze that bone graft that we put superiorly with that undisplaced posterior column fracture. I'm going to do this trial with 54. Otherwise, we might just have to think of a cage and bone graft and a cemented cup inside. That is the next thing we have. This thing is moving, isn't it? The posterior column. This is probably the best we have till now. So what is that size my you got now? That is 54. 54. Okay. But that will need multiple screws. It's not sitting at all. Yeah. And I don't think I can afford to go any bigger now. Get me some wash, please.
we don't have much of anterior column to hold it. Wash again. And just the thin anterior wall. Can you see there? What about that uh, fracture that was uh, there? It seems... Oh, there is a little bit of mobility there, as you can see. But it's mainly because of that... Okay. It's mainly because of that osteolysis in the roof. Okay. And there is disconnection there. That fracture okay. line itself is a little bit mobile. So but it's not massive. So that is one of the reasons we look at the multi hole. Look at fixation of plus. Uh, the cages that we have are from plus, is it? Um, so that is the only option. But if I use uh, for a 52 reamer, I have to use a 52 cage. And then I can get a 46 cemented cup inside. 46. Yeah. But that cage fixes on the ischium as well with a screw? Yes, sir. Or do you bend it? No, it's not a BS cage. No, MRS Titan is uh, too complicated and expensive. We might have to use it. Huh? I feel you should use a highly porous cup yeah. and a cage because there is a suspicion of discontinuity. Yeah. Uh, that the sort problem, of problem, Krishna, uh, would be if I use a highly porous 52 cup here yeah. or even a 54, that 52 cage will not sit inside. Oh, you want to do a cup cage? Oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. So, what what did you say then? So, what was you, your suggestion, you can, Krishna? You can uh, use the cup as a distractor for that uh, discontinuity. So, yeah. you can put a pin in the ilium and ischium and then use a spreader to spread it across and then put probably a 56 or a 58 cup. Yeah, that the anterior wall now is so thinned out. Okay, you see, so you're not comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah, right? yeah. So if I use anything bigger, we are even going to lose out the the minimum bone that we have. So if you're right. using a cage, then probably an augment with a cage is a better option because augment will give some biological fixation. And even if yeah. it's bigger, it's okay. Don't you think? Yeah, we can. The problem is the smallest augment we have is 50. Yeah, but that is a decent uh, size so socket. It's more than 54, I think, no? Yeah, the, the, the defect narrows down superiorly. Let me have a wire driver. Let me pull out the wire. You know, the defect that we have superiorly, Krishna, yeah. is between 11 or 10 to around, say, 2 o'clock position. Yeah, I got it. So, sometimes it is very difficult to fix an augment there also. You just uh, impact but it. But you can just use it uh, as a cemented, non-resorbable bone graft. And then you put a cage on top of that, it works pretty well. Because now the that, augment in I will see if I can get an augment in there, impact it in there. You can put it without fixation. Where is reverse? The augment. On top of this. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Let's try that 50 augment again. Not easy. Put a cage on top. Yeah. Tighten it up again. You locked it, is it? <laughs> oh, God. Let's have a cocker. Give me the augment. Yeah, no, got it out. This is just too wide. Now give me the cocker. They have a 10 millimeter as well. They're giving you 15. No, this, is a, this is a 10 millimeter. Okay. It's just 50 and 52 diameter. Superiorly is a bit tough. I think I can just jam it in there like this. And the cage will go on top of that. With some floor bone graft, I guess. Yeah, so this will work because now you have a semi-biological situation. Yeah. Alan Gross has published on this. So, it's called augment cage. Yeah. We can do an augment cage here and then use a cemented cup inside. So, let's do that. Get the augment, 50 augment. Because that bone graft was looking very tenuous. Um, the seven graft was actually too uh, tenuous for such a massive defect. Yes. 
do you have time or do you want to move on with the next case i will keep doing it and then show you the end so i think we'll leave you to work on that and then yeah, yeah. come back to you in 10 15 minutes time if it's no okay. problem yeah, yeah. Right. So let's get the augment can i have new gloves is <laughs> so this is the problem usually you can get away if you break that part like we managed to break it today here then a normal cup wouldn't sit that is the problem and that is where you need the cup a cup cage or whatever you want to change gloves as well guys tiring exhausting so who is going to give us the augment and a cage um, do you have trials for the cages or no trial yeah let me see the tra cage trial give me the smallest one 50 Whose cage is this? I mean, the, the cage. Just a five-minute break because today is Doctor's Day. We have very eminent surgeons, so the guys wanted a cake to be cut. So uh, inevitable, uh, you know, this thing. So happy Doctor's Day to all of you. Uh, you can play the video in the meantime mahesh will figure out uh, what will work so these are really complex cases giving one and a half hour is really not justice to that but that is for the logistics and for us to understand the steps behind it it's not that we are judging them to do the surgery in one and a half hour so please the idea was not to you know to include as many situations as possible so that you take take them home with you that's it as a doctor i solemnly pledge that i will do my best to serve humanity every doctor's journey begins with a promise i promise to care for the sick and alleviate pain and suffering no matter how difficult the task is they always do what's best in the interest of their patient i recognize that the practice of medicine is a privilege with which comes considerable responsibilities and i will not abuse my position they do everything it takes to fight for you and your loved ones life i will maintain the utmost respect for human life and nothing will be more important to me than saving one and they will stop at nothing I will practice medicine with integrity, honesty, humility and compassion. In every practice of their science, they promise to add more to the lives of every person they treat. And as Merrill, we take this promise alongside doctors and bring together the best of medical expertise and research to empower doctors to win every single time. Because when doctors win, humanity wins. Merrill, more to life. thank you uh, can i invite professor malhotra dr vijay bose dr ara reddy dr anil to come do, a, do the honors please raj kumar please come so we really have eminent faculty members big hand big round of applause to all of them taken time off from busy schedules to come and teach uh, here dr amnamurthy is here he can come and join us yes please thank you gravitin ಬರ್ತಾರ ಫೈನ್ ಬಿಟ್ಟಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಹಾಫ್ ವೇ ಔಟ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಲಾಂಗ್ ವೇ ಟು ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಯಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಟೈರ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಶುಗರ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಸರ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕಮ್
सूरज थोड़ा साइड में होना हेलो कैन यू हेयर मी एंड सी मी और सी द फील्ड आई कॉन्ट हेयर दम हेलो हेलो अनुप वी कैन सी यू जस्ट गिव अस टू मिनट्स या हेलो अनुप यू कैन गो हेड वी कैन सी यू Yeah. So, can you see the X-rays? Let's have a camera too and show the X-rays because I can't see them in the OT. But tell me if you can see the X-rays. We can see the X-ray. Yes. All right. So let's quickly analyze the full length with the patella in the center. So that's a true full length, and we are trying to demonstrate kinematic alignment with navigation. And the first and the most important thing is to calculate the medial distal femur angle and the medial proximal tibial angle and the HKA. Can you see that? Yeah, the X-ray is little bit blurred, but we can understand what you're saying. Yeah, so so all right. So medial not distal medial. femur angle here. Fortunately, the other side is also not replaced, so we can see this is not normal, but the medial distal femur angle is 90. So you add the two millimeters, two degrees to cartilage loss. So two degrees of valgus in the distal femur is what we are aiming for. The medial okay. proximal angle, medial proximal tibial angle is 85. So we'll be aiming for two or three degree virus on the tibia, and the HK that we'll be aiming for is one seventy seven or one seventy eight. That's the HK that we'll be aiming for. Now let's have the uh, surgical field, please. We can't see there on what they are. It is ninety. 
Sorry. LDF is 90, but you don't want a zero in this case. Sir, is aiming for kinematical energy. Sorry, come again. You said the LDFA is 90 degrees. Yeah. So uh, that indicates a zero degree uh, make a, the distal femoral angle. But you're no, saying add, add, two add, two, add two millimeter of cartilage loss. So that's 92. Okay, right. Fair enough. Yeah. Right. That's 92. Yeah. Now let's show the navigation screen. Can you show the navigation screen, please? Camera two, please. No, I can't see here what you're seeing. So please tell me if you're if you're seeing the navigation screen. That is, please. We can, can see, see the we can now, now, now we are beginning to see the screen. Which system yeah. are you using, Anup? We are using Braille Lab. Okay, good. We uh, requested the Braille Lab guys to shift their machine here. Yes. So they have been very kind. So if you can see the initial deformity is 0.5 degree extension and 5 degree virus. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. All right. And then we go for the range of motion. And this beautiful kinematic graph tells us that the this is the range of motion. Medially, it is opening up at 90 degrees there, uh, roughly 7.5, 6.5, if you can appreciate what I'm saying. All right. So, medially, this knee is little lax throughout the range of motion, hyperextension, and then throughout the range of motion. So, mostly, we won't need any soft tissue release. And that's the first and foremost principle of kinematic alignment. Right. So, this is the plan. Now, let's start with the first principle of kinematic alignment, which is Jig uh, Domergo. Yeah. So I think they are fixing the camera. What can you see right now? Currently, nothing. No, 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 no. You do your own. You do your own work. Let me show you the navigation. Let me show you the right way. Let me show you the right way. Let me show you the right way. Focus on the field. I'll focus there. So we have a PNP of whatever is going on in the other OT. So somebody who's interested can have a look. Yeah. The interesting case. No, 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 no. Wait, wait a minute. Pair pakdo yaar, ek jana pair to pakdo. Aap audio visual pe kisi ko focus nahi karna. Everybody has to focus on the field, okay? So please show the navigation screen now. Can you show the navigation screen? We can see. And वो camera उल्टा है उसको सीधा करो हाँ so you can see I have fixed my distal femur cut in two degree valgus now this is contrary to the first principle of mechanical alignment if you can see the I have drawn drawn the mechanical alignment and the contrary view of kinematic principle here now the mechanical alignment which is marked in red aims to cut the distal femur at 90 degree to the mechanical axis where the green part that is the kinematic alignment aims to restore the medial distal femur angle, 2 degrees in this case or 92 degrees. Okay. Can you see this paper? Yeah, we can see that. Okay. Oh, fir chala gaya yaar wo. Saamne dikhta hai nahi. We are seeing the navigation screen. We can't see the paper which you have in your hand. Oh, can you see that now? The paper we can't see. Yeah, now we can see. Yes. Okay. And here, yeah. the, the tibia also, the red is mechanical, which aims to cut the tibia at 90 degrees. And kinematic principle aims to cut the tibia in the normal medial proximal tibial angle that 2 to 3 degree virus and hence eliminate soft tissue release. Okay, that is the first principle. Now let's take the distal femur cut. Okay, come on. So please. This we don't need. Yeah. So how many millimeters of tibia uh, femur are you taking? Yeah, so I am taking currently 6 millimeters is my mark. Because invariably the saw cuts more. So my aim is to cut 8 millimeters from the lateral side and 5 or 6 millimeters from the medial side. So I invariably put at 5 or 6 millimeters and I'll do a plus 2 if I cut less. 
the important thing is to measure both the cuts very accurately. Eight and five is my goal. Yeah. So what he's saying is he will measure the cut. The thickness of the saw blade will be equivalent to what is called as kerf, which will be the unrecognized bone cut. So suppose the saw blade is 1.3 millimeter cut plus the amount of bone cut. So he's aiming for an eight millimeter cut on the lateral side and he's aiming for an eight on the medial side so that he's not changing what is the distal femoral alignment. So suppose two millimeter is the wear, 1.3 millimeter is a saw blade thickness and so five millimeter is a bone cut. Then no, 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 no. medial cuts are equal to each other. In kinematic alignment, that is the first principle. Yeah, that's so. Yeah, so Krishna, I cut less deliberately because I didn't want to cut more because this is not the saw that I'm used to every day. This is a separate saw. This is so, a thicker saw blade. Yeah, it's a 1.3 millimeter saw blade. That's right. So you have to calculate that also. So basically, you have to cut 8 plus 1 millimeter of saw curve. That's 9. That's the thickness of the implant. 5 millimeters from the medial side plus 2 millimeter of lost cartilage plus 1 millimeter of saw curve. That's 9. Aim is to cut 9 and 9. I've cut only 5 and 2. So I'm going to take plus more 2. <laughs> okay, so now uh, can you measure that together, please? Can you measure that together and show here, please? Check Kara. But Steven Owl does without any technology also. In Donoko Sat measure Kerke either camera be the Kana Apnego. थोड़ा सा डाल के सॉर्ट करेंगे सौ दे इसको जिग मैलेट दे मैलेट मैलेट ला दिखा चेक करा so I'm aiming for a two degree valgus. Okay, so you have a two degree valgus. I have a 1.5 degree valgus. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. So I'm good on the distal femur cut. Okay, take out the pins, please. Now the next step, the principle two. So if you can see my medial side, that's the lateral side. That's the lateral side. You can see. It's a 8 millimeter plus 1 millimeter of saw curve. So 9 millimeters. Medial side was 5, 3 plus 2, 5, 2 millimeter of last cartilage, 1 millimeter of saw curve. So I've cut equal on both the sides. Okay. The principle two is to cut. Can you see the paper now? Yeah, we can see the paper. Okay. So the red is the mechanical alignment, which tends to rotate 3 degree externally and cut posterior medial more. That's the mechanical alignment principle. The kinematic alignment principle is to cut equal from posterior medial and posterior lateral because you have given the normal angle, valgus angle in the distal femur. That is why you don't need to externally rotate and resect what you are going to replace. So let's go to principle two now. Give me size C, please. C or D. Show me both. Show me C. D looks okay. Okay. Now, we'll check with navigation again that we are cutting equal posterior medial and posterior lateral and rotation will be giving is zero. Now, can you show the navigation screen again, please? Yeah, we can see the screen. They can make the screen larger. Yeah. So the trick is to methylene blue, then methylene blue mark there.
so the the trick is to take this cartilage at the top and cut equal posterior medial and posterior lateral ko pakad le la okay and set for a zero rotation you can see that i am zero rotated and cutting equal posterior medial and posterior lateral probe dikha mere ko main dikhana chahta hu ki dono taraf se barabar kat raha hai now can you show the navigation screen please so you can see that i'm cutting 10 here and i'm cutting 10 here can you see that yeah yeah we can see that yeah so that's equal and okay. that's equivalent to the posterior implant thickness that's right so so for the audience sake the chal, uh, chal, chal. navigation probably is wedded to one particular company He is using uh, the navigation to do merrill surgery. So he is cross-checking what is the amount of posterior condyle being cut with this particular jig. If you notice on the left-hand side of the screen, hmm. but that 15 and 14 is erroneous because it's showing the size of legion CR implant. So that's not the size of the implant he is using. Yeah. So I am actually checking the rotation here. Okay. पतली वाली सौ दे देखना ध्यान से ठीक है तो द क्लासिकल इंसॉल बूट इज नॉट फॉर्मड हेयर एंड वी आर नॉट लुकिंग टू फॉर्म इट तो सलाइन डाल थोड़ा सलाइन डाल पैर पकड़ना नीचे से ओके सो वी आर नॉट लुकिंग टू फॉर्म द इंसॉल बूट दूसरा होमन दे राइट नाउ हम्म डाल दे बीच वाली हम्म, राइट। ये अभी भी मूव हो रहा है यार थोड़ा नहीं 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 इसको और डालो इन दोनों को टाइट करो ऐसे नहीं और राइट सो हम्म टाइट करो दोनों को और स्पिन को और डालो हम्म तो आई विल बी यूजिंग अ सी आर इम्प्लांट because restore uh, saving the pcl is one of the important principles of kinematic we'll discuss it when we come to it let me just resect the condyles first pehle mere ko choti wali saw de piche uske liye So we use the smaller saw for the posterior condyles to protect the posterior cruciate ligament. Aram se, aram se. अब वापिस बड़ी देनी पड़ेगी हाँ ये ये दे दे इससे बीच वाला कट ले लेते हैं बीच वाला सॉरी दिस नॉट द सो दैट आई यूज एवरी डे सो डॉक्टर वेनु इज स्टैंडिंग नेक्स्ट टू मी स्माइलिंग ऑल राइट सो वी आर नॉट लुकिंग टू डू एनी सॉफ्ट टिश्यू रिलीज इन किनामेटिक अलाइनमेंट up to a de deformity of 15 20 degrees we can do without any soft tissue release and the important thing is to prepare the femur first the reason of preparing the femur is that the femur takes the prime importance in kinematic alignment you have to really restore the distal femur joint line 
and you have to restore the posterior cuts with the implants. So that's that's the femur. Femur takes the prime importance in uh, kinematic alignment. Out upper se thoda aur kar lenge. Hmm. Okay. Out, please. And we have to measure both the posterior medial and posterior lateral. So bring the measuring gauge here, and we like to measure it and show it that we have cut equal. Quite contrarian principle, but. Uh, a revolutionary thinking by Stephen Howell and the publications that he has done are extraordinary to my mind. Okay, let's. Uh... Okay, let's measure them here in front of the camera, please. Nine. So, nine millimeters is posterior medial. Okay. And so is nine posterior lateral as well. Yeah, eight and a half. So we are good. Half millimeter is allowed. Yeah, Anup. So the femur is completely done. Femur is done, and we'll do the and the PCL is safe as far as we can see now. Then you lift up the femur and see the flexion space. There is a flexion space that will give you a rough idea of how much tibia you have to take because this is a lax knee. So I'll be taking a conservative tibial cut initially, six millimeters plus the lost cartilage will be seven or eight millimeters. Okay. And because you do the femur first, the tibia subluxes out beautifully. So you don't need to do any. Uh, any struggle to take out the tibia. Now, this lady, if you have noticed, show the X-ray, please, once again. Can you show the X-ray camera too? Can you show the X-ray to the house once again, please? Because can you see the X-ray? Yeah. All right. So, if you analyze the left side carefully, Krishna, the, the tibia, there is depression on the lateral side. The medial side is higher than the lateral side significantly. So, probably she has a she has had a depressed fracture, which you can see here on the tibia. Now show the operative screen camera one again, please. So you can see here, there is a depression on the lateral side. Can you see that? Give me osteotome. Now we don't touch the medial side at all. And there is no conventional soft tissue release. It's just to take the tibia out. That's it. That's all you need to do. So all the medial soft tissue sleeve, the deep MCL, the attachment of deep MCL to the semimembranosus, everything is intact. We haven't touched the medial side at all. Egman Rukja, the blur there. So, uh, Anup, you have shifted to kinematic alignment. Uh, do you find there is a lot of difference in the post operative outcome for the patient? Yes, absolutely. Patients are smiling. Uh, though though this, this cannot be. Uh, proven uh, because this is level 5 if whatever I say. But uh, yes, patients are much more happier and go home earlier. That Those are two observations that I have uh, I've made. We are evaluating their forgotten knee score Krishna at uh, 6 month follow up and comparing it to our earlier cases of mechanical alignment that data is not yet out so I can't comment on it right now. Huh. We looked at our patients and uh, there is a statistically significant difference in the first yeah. six weeks. Yeah. But after three months, there is no difference in the... There is there is no difference? Okay. After three months. For the first six weeks, they are very happy. Yeah. Tibia bagar le, bhai. So, I'll be dialing in a two degree virus here. And is it essential to replicate the native slope for this to work? Yes, absolutely. So we'll be hitting at about six to seven degree slope in this patient, which is 
the approximate slope uh, of this particular patient if you had noticed on the x-ray. And I will be happy to make a conservative tibial resection and two a plus two if required. Show them the navigation screen, please. Camera two, please. Show them the navigation screen. So you can see it's a five and a half degree slope and two and a half degree virus. The cut is conservative, four plus maybe one millimeter of saw curve. So I'm taking a five or six millimeter cut and I'll revise the cut. I'm happy to do it, but not cut more, put a 11 poly. I want to do a nine poly in every case. Okay. Do you feel that uh, use of technology is essential to do this sort of technique or you can do caliper based as well? Yeah, that's that's beautiful. You can do calibrated, unrestricted kinematic with conventional instruments as well. Uh, yeah, we'll discuss that. So, we make this small triangle of bone to protect the PCL because otherwise what happens with the cut, few fibers of PCL come off, which I don't like. We'll take a smaller blade. At home, we have three blades. At home, we have three blades. These, these ones, the larger one for the distal femur, this for the posterior condylar cut, these are for the smaller patient. But these are striker blades and we don't have that system here. So, just to demonstrate. So we have saved that triangle of bone and not touching the, any fiber of PCL as you can see here, it's beautiful. Yeah. As you notice, my I brought my whole team because it's easy to converse and operate. So Dr. Piyush, my consultant, uh, Ajay and Suraj are here with me from from my city. So she had a fracture here, as you can see this, this area, she has had a fracture there. Okay, good. Let's check. So Krishna, you smartly put me between two, two really giants, Mahesh and Heman. I'm a small fly in between. I'll put some, add some more virus if later on required. Okay. Let's do the sizing now. It was not intentional. It was for logistic purposes. <laughs> no, no, just that's for the, in the lighter vein, obviously. They are telling the same thing that you have put us on either side of, you know, <laughs> Anup. <laughs> so size three and another concept of mechanical alignment is to downsize, take this part of the tibia off. To make the, lig the, uh, the ligament balance equal and isometric, but ligaments are not isometric. We'll discuss that in a moment. Three, okay. This is 1.5. Love it. Very good. So that's my flexion space. As you can see, flexion space is trapezoidal. Now, that brings us to principle three. Now, can you see this? That's the intact PCL. And what it does is that it maintains the trapezoidal space of flexion, flexion gap. 
as soon as you take off the pcl the the gap becomes unequal sometimes it will increase medially sometimes it will increase laterally but the pcl is intact it retains the normal trapezoidal nature of the flexion space that's the way the flexion space should be 8 9 mm here 11 12 mm here this is not instability as is vijay there is vijay there yeah yeah i'm here anup yeah so vijay you i have uh, i have heard you talk about instability in flexion i think uh, you are uh, pretty cognizant of that fact but as we will see here the poly is not going to come out is going to be rock solid but maintain a trapezoidal space of the flexion gap no no the, 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 the point that i mentioned in amritsar boss yeah, uh, yeah. The, the lateral space can be 4 5 millimeters lax but your medial has to be very i think yeah. both are both are there you are going to get flexion instability yeah so, absolutely people take half messages and said right. i can leave uh, the lateral 4 5 millimeters lax you can leave it provided your uh, medial is very snug yeah absolutely i agree that is the point i was trying to make because there are certain points that uh, that are in our mind from the previous meeting <laughs> So I was just it's mentioning tight. that the medial cannot be tight. Also, yeah, absolutely, it can, it's not tight. Yeah, the poly should go in easily. Yeah. So what is demonstrated? That? The isometricity of the collaterals in extension, the collateral ligament tension makes that the medial and lateral gaps are closer Balota. to each other. Lateral is little bit lax. In flexion, lateral is much more lax than the medial side. That's right. That's, That's right. right. Trying to retain. If you change the femoral joint line or rotation. Then the collateral isometricity is gone because now the uh, the point changes, so now it won't work. So therefore, it is essential that you maintain the femoral uh, cut joint line angle as well as rotation. That's, That's right, right. Perfect. perfect. That's right. That's why the depth of the cut, the varus valgus of the cut, and the flexion of the femoral cut is so critical for success of kinematic uh, alignment. So we didn't talk of the flexion of the femur cut. The flexion has to be between one and three degrees. If you flex more, it causes patellofemoral instability. So uh, Anup, I, I we have a diff slightly different concept on that. We look at a combined sagittal angle. That's right. Robotics, like just like you're looking at a combined coronal angle. That's right. Uh, LDFA and MPTA, which must be within three or four degrees of neutral to make sure that the implant lasts. We also That's look right. at a combined sagittal angle between 0 and 10, which That's is the right. combination of the tibial slope and the femoral flexion. Yeah, but tibial slope is 7. So, 7 plus 3 is 10. So, that's what I'm saying, not more than 3 degrees. That's what right. I said. So, but it's it's all about combined parameters again here also. So, you have to look at the combined coronal plane, combined sagittal plane and combined rotational plane. So, these three you have to see and uh, right. optimize it for that particular patient. Correct. So, it has to be personalized. Different for every patient and needs some bit of calculation there. I'm just removing the posterior osteophytes. Unical beta is going to Sakaro, Sakaro. Ignit, bone nikalo yance. Nibler do. So PCL integrity can be checked with finger or by just putting some saline and seeing the integrity of the PCL. But usually it's intact except in severe inflammatory disease. Hmm. Beautiful. Now you need to see the bleeder in extension because the genicular sometimes comes off in extension. So we always check the bleeders meticulously in extension because we don't use a tunique and we don't use a drain. So this is classical. Dikhao, dikhao, yaari, bohut zaruri hai. Ye dikhao. Boss, ye dikha sakte hai, kya? Nahi, nahi, aayega na, yaar. Dekhne to de, koshish to karne de. So this, this is the bleeder that you can see sprouting beautifully. And sometimes it is missed in uh, flexion. So you need to take the knee in extension and cauterize the bleeders. Yeah. Oh, yeah, na? Oh, yeah. Chalo. Beautiful. La dikha. 3, 9, and D. La. 
ये पकड़ो तो एट द टाइम ऑफ ट्रायल्स वन इफ यू आर फोर्सिंग टू हार्ड दैट मीन्स द गैप इज टाइट एक मिनट इसको निकाल मैं दिखाना चाहता हूँ कुछ इसको निकाल नहीं ऐसे ऐसे रखो नाइनटी पे नाउ यू कैन सी दैट एटलीस्ट नाइन मिलीमीटर नहीं कहाँ दिख रहा है जूम इन करो और इसको सेंटर में लाओ कैमरे को सेंटर में लाओ हाँ बस 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 बहुत बढ़िया इसको थोड़ा ऐसे जूम इन कर ऐसे कर हाँ बस बहुत बढ़िया ठीक है सो नाउ यू कैन सी दैट देर इज अ स्पेस ऑफ नाइन मिलीमीटर हेयर इफ यू लिव इट टाइट देन यूल बैंग इन and you you may avoid the pcl so never trial with tight spaces so now you can see vijay's point here so vijay so now you can see that yeah. so this is not coming out neither medially nor laterally and it's rock solid nor there is lift off so it's not tight it's not loose either okay nikalo isko put the arrays please tracking is beautiful too hmm now let's focus in extension yahan dikhao beta extension mein dikhao extension dikhao नहीं 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 आपको क्या ये कैमरा ये ये दिखाओ इसको ला पारे किधर नाउ एक्सटेंशन एज कृष्णा वॉज राइटली मैंशनिंग देर शुड बी नो लैक्सिटी मे बी अ मिलीमीटर लैटरली अदरवाइज इट शुड बी स्नग दैट द वे द एक्सटेंशन गैप इज सपोज टू बी नेचुरली इट इज स्नग देर इज हार्डली एनी मूवमेंट वन मिलीमीटर मे बी लैटरली बट आई एम हैप्पी टू सी नो मूवमेंट बट कंप्लीट एक्सटेंशन नाउ शो दी स्क्रीन टू नाउ यू कैन सी हेयर कृष्णा दैट वी आर इन Three four degrees flexion and two degrees varus. That is what we tried to achieve. That's excellent. Neutral knee and one seventy eight of H K. Okay. Yeah. Let's erase it, brother. Kinematics, see. Let's see. Now let's see as the knee goes in flexion. There is a beautiful railroad sign, and what that means is that in flexion again the lateral space. Are you showing screen to the house? Can you see the computer navigation screen on the to? Can you see the navigation screen right now? Yeah, they need to make the screen bigger. We can see it, but uh, they need to switch, make the navigation screen bigger and the surgical. Make screen. the navigation screen bigger, please. Okay. So that's the range of motion. That is that all right, Krishna? Yeah, we can see, but the, yeah, now we can see one thirty degree range. Yeah, and two degree the, varus, little bit lax on the lateral side. Yeah, that's the point I was trying to make. Is three point five and two on the. Uh, in flexion and 4 and 2.5 in in extension so that's the that's what we tried to achieve is 4 degree flexion 2 degree varus and now come on the operative screen again please come on the operative screen again okay and you can see that the patella is tracking beautifully no problem with patella tracking in spite of uh, keeping so called internal rotation isko nikal de beta All right, and that's the range of motion. That's the AP stability, and that's our knee. That's excellent, Anup. I think we'll leave you to cement it. All the principles have been nicely cemented. Yeah. Thank just, you very much for a fantastic surgery. Yeah, yeah. Just two minutes. I have drawn two more diagrams. So give me a minute more. Yeah. And this is principle three. I already showed you principle four, but principle three is that in mechanical alignment by cutting equal. perpendicular to the mechanical axis you leave the gap medial gap tight and then you are forced to release and make the gaps equal and parallel which they are not this is the way gaps have to be and should be maintained and we have to reduce or eliminate our obsession to a straight hk which is the principle of mechanical alignment and get to kinematic alignment where the hk has to be what it was pre arthritic maybe 176 177 By restoring the MDFA and MPTA, so we have to eliminate or stop our obsession with straight HK. That's all from my side. If you have any, thank you very much. Uh, that was an excellent demonstration of maybe what I may say is a restricted kinematic alignment. It's not an unrestricted. I assume uh, my uh, Anup, uh, but would you be doing unrestricted kinematic alignment as well? 
yeah of course i would be doing unrestricted also but i would limit myself if it the angles are beyond 5 degrees in severe deformities then i would limit then i would come to restricted but i would i would choose to restore the pre arthritic alignment to deformities under 15 degrees but for severe valgus severe extra articular then then we have to uh, go for unrestricted so sorry restricted kinematic thank you anup so we can switch to the revision case i think mahesh is ready with uh, what he has done and then we can go on to uh, dr hemant's case mahesh can you hear me yeah yeah i can show them let me get the screw driver the audience is not really interested in knee replacement but anup showed a fantastic kinematic alignment so they got engaged for a while but now we are back with you that's as good as it's going to get let's show yeah full this wash please yeah section yeah let's do it don't wait now yeah let's put the central part hold on to this sister or you can hold on to this yeah can we put the central liner as well now it's like a more biology liner liner no final yeah we can put the yeah yeah let's do it we can't do a trial on this is it okay yeah the fresh mop sister thank you guys we had a uh, your extra scene very good mop yeah thank you um can you see anything now uh, um, krishna yeah thank you so so we got the mrs titan cage now we yeah. put in a bone graft superiorly this is a cage which has got coating from outside yeah looks good so that was available so we are just going to put the final thing in and do a trial reduction now did you use an augment or you just use a no we used a bone graft okay so that same uh, morselize or the figure of 7 uh, no we put a big a small piece in the defect superiorly and then a morselize bone graft uh, in the rest of the cavity yeah that's good no that's good Link, link. Can we dial in? Uh, that is all the version that we have. Is it now? Yeah, yeah. Posterior superior. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So this uh, cage is called as a MRS uh, Titan cage. Yeah, made by Peter Brown. and uh, it's different from other cages is that it's not a bridging cage like the uh, bur schneider it's not cannot be used for discontinuity it is another um, uh, what shall we say concept of handling defects instead of using augments so basically you're putting screws elsewhere and putting a cage therefore uh, it'll take care of defects instead of augments so different yeah. principle of managing augments so my age has put that cage in with screws so it's got this uh, liner inside where you can dial the liner based on how your non cemented uh, poly is going to go so you can sort of dial it posteriorly or superiorly whatever that you want to and lock into the cage and that's what is doing now you can see that yeah and then it gets locked based on where you want to uh, you know the face of the liner to be so it's got some adjust adjustability there now this is not sitting because cages typically go where the bone is you cannot uh, uh, you know direct your cage now you can see how the liner is different from the cage so any cage that you use you must have some freedom of putting the uh, liner independent of the cage orientation that's the fundamental point so this is a good cage but uh, important thing to remember is that it is not uh, substitute not a bridging cage it's only another concept of handling why is it tilted it's not tilted but this particular uh, defect that mayesh had is an excellent option because he had a defect anterior superiorly Uh, which had to be managed so uh, one of the ways of handling this is this is elegant way of handling it i think uh, vijay we were just lucky that it, this was available here thank you krishna for keeping it keeping it here yes just yes, hold on to the cage 
Is there a torque in it? Yeah. This is Tirupati. Uh, uh, Blessings. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a trial liner. Mahesh, if it were Medicover, then you would be stuck with the standard cage, you know. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I think I have to thank Dr. Deepak here. Yeah, Deepak, who's agreed. Venu, you have to thank because yeah. in Bird Hospital, because Bird, you can do anything. Let's have the same trial that head we took out. It was minus, yeah. So this is a minus four head now that we've got here. Sleep position, flexion to nearly 90 degrees with massive internal rotation. The hip remains stable. I just want to check that we don't impinge posteriorly in extension, external rotation. But otherwise, this looks good. Can you just put some traction on it? I just feel it's a bit lax. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go for a zero trial. Adek. Adek, adek. Yeah, that's it. So the, the, the face can be changed once you trial it. Then you change the face to wherever you want. You want to take that. Yeah. I think we are pretty happy, Vijay, with this one. Yeah, um, I don't know whether you can get a view, uh, which is a zoomed out view. No, no, we can get a very good view, yeah. So we have a decent amount of antiversion, flexion, adduction on through this one. It's just that the liner is moving inside. So that is why um, we can see the liner flipping out in extreme positions. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. So I think we are going to use the, uh, this um, liner now. And then I'm going to do a final trial reduction. So can, 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 can. I think, we, yeah, Vijay, you were saying something. Wash. So let's take the final liner. There's only one option, isn't it? Yeah, take it then. <laughs> we are not going to change it. Suction. No, no, suction. Is suction is blocked or full? You can go into the operator part. That, that, that hook is not a mechanical device. It is a... It is for making sure you don't go high. You want to come back to the true center. That's the purpose. But it doesn't get any inferior fixation. That's why it's not a bridging cup. So whenever you have a discontinuity, you need some kind of uh, fixation in two hemispheres, upper and lower hemisphere. But here we get only fixation in the upper hemisphere. Is one more wall lower one is a uh, location hook. Or is sure it you don't go high. The trial is different, is it? Goes into the skin or yeah. Um, artery, please. Your long artery. Um, let me have that plastic to uh, protect the trunnion. Oops. Uh, this is a very popular cage in the Germany. As yeah. you know, you know, the augments are very American uh, designed. So very popular. The, the American concept is using yeah, augments. Let's have that plastic to... German concept is using this yeah, uh, that's cage. Yeah. Yeah, relax. Yeah. So let's have a Homan. So we're just going to put the final liner in now. Wash. Yeah, maybe take a hook, bone hook. <laughs> Fresh mop. There's no sleeve. I'm just going to use a head. Fresh mop. So we are happy that we got this thing here. Eh? And you allowed us to use it. Yeah, no, it's expensive. Poly, please. Not available. So now the poly is uh, going in. Is there something else for impacting? Is that it? Is it? Yeah, that's it. Give me a long artery. This is the only cage which got a non uh, non cemented poly option. Yeah. All other uh, trial uh, head again minus, which gives you the freedom to move it. Minus head. But this one uh, is a non cemented uh, uh, liner. Sister, you got everything back, plastic, swaps, gauzes. Yeah. So I think this looks good.
just give some traction. It's a bit lax. I'm not bad. Yeah, that, that's fine. What so let's go for this. Head, uh, Mahesh? Sorry? What size of the head? This is a minus head. No, no, uh, 28 head, huh? Yeah, 28, 28. 32, zero. Oh, sorry, 32, he says. <laughs> it's 32 head, Vijay. 32, 32 head, yeah. Yeah, so let's have a 32 zero. You didn't, Wash, try, you didn't try a plus zero? This is 32 zero head. Oh, zero head, okay. Yeah. Fresh mop. Yeah, take the head. Don't take ceramic, take metal head. Yeah. Why, why I'm using. That? Why is that? Uh, your better chance is ceramic, uh, I would say. Uh, the problem is, Vijay, we have a stem which is made by Exactec. That's exactly what I'm saying. Mm. So, if you have a mismatch, uh, the ceramic would be a better option. I'm worried because the trunnion is damp. Uh, maybe microscopic damage is there as well. So, whether I would prefer trunnionosis or a risk of ceramic fracture is what I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I would go ceramic for this case. Yeah, because... Uh, if you have macro, very severe damage, then uh, thing is... Uh, there is no dog. severe damage here. You got severe damage? No, 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 we don't. Uh, then then, then uh, ceramic, uh, we'll ask... Uh, from the then 32, out. 0, ceramic. 12, 14, taper. <laughs> we'll go for it. But otherwise, it's looking decent. We got good fixation superiorly as well. Give a right angle. So we got decent fixation of the cage superiorly onto the posterior column as well as through the ring um, itself. Yeah, it is turned out to be a savior actually. I go for ceramic, Mahesh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, uh, I mean, uh, these are all well, uh, I mean, uh, fresh, the algorithms fresh, are there. So, if you have a very macro damage, then ceramic is dangerous. But if you have micro yeah. damage, uh, ceramic is far better than a metal uh, option. Okay. Thanks. Punch and hammer. Wash again, please. Okay. So, I think that's it. We are going to close here. So, I don't know whether Dr. Vakankar is ready to get on with his case. Magesh? Yeah. Rajkumar here. Did you, did you ask them whether they had the sleeve? Sorry? Did you ask them whether they have the sleeve for the uh, trunnion? Options. Yeah, actually. Did you get the sleeves? No, no. Did you get the sleeves? Anyway, it's too late now, Rajkumar. Okay. <laughs> they have their sleeves, but I don't know whether they've got it here. They say no, not yet. Okay. So I think um, the learning point for me is, and as we know, that the osteolysis what sees, is seen on the X-ray is actually much worse when you get there. And this exact tech poly has been a nightmare. Yeah, let's have some number one vehicle, please. Mahesh, that looked uh, very brilliantly done. It I was tricky, it to was, say the least. Very well done. Thank uh, you. Good, uh, good execution. I think. Uh, Thank you, guys. Brilliantly done. Just one or two questions, I think, from the audience. So, if you didn't have yeah. this case, number one, MRS, MRS Titan, what would have been your plan B? No, no, my plan B would have been uh, a highly advanced growth in growth surface cup. And just in case uh, there was a discontinuity with that fracture shifting or moving, I would have just gone for a cup cage. But the, or, um, with, the, with the size you got, 52, 54, a true cup cage construct wouldn't have been possible, right? That, that, now th I start, started thinking, because for Indian patients, I think the cup cage is a challenge because of the mismatch between the cup um, that we can use and the cage that we have to use inside it. Correct. Um, so so I think a half cage, half cage might be a good idea to be honest. So you're talking about a traditional type of cage. 
No, no, just a cup, and then you can cut the cage or use a half a cage like uh, one of the. Oh, like the exact tech or the. Uh, yeah, the Smith and nephew has a half <laughs> half cage now. Half cage is available from the other. That cross is available from the other. No, company. that there are a lot of even strikers. Can you touch uh, the needle it's with the cotton to make sure that I'm not through or close to sciatic nerve? Staying evolutus has got st mm -hmm. striker has got. But it is all not that biological. It's all stainless steel. It is not really stable. Yeah, let's close it now. So, so thank you very much, team. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mayesh, for that excellent demonstration. Yeah, thank you. And uh, sorry for dealing with everything. Looking forward to return to this case to see what happened. So I yeah. think over to Dr. Krishna to move to the next. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thanks. Do we have extra? So everybody has seen yesterday's cases. Who has not seen? No. Yesterday's cases, everybody has seen? <coughs> That's fine. Then go on. Do the case. Share the x-rays with me later. This. Do the case presentation. My x-rays, unfortunately, you don't case, see. Uh, Dr. Heyman Vakankar will what has gone on. TKR. So, uh, case details will be shared with you. Case presentation. Sixty-one year male, status post of antibiotic spacer implant revisioning, plan for revision uh, total knee replacement. Uh, right T care has been done in two thousand nineteen. Uh, he has come with a discharge following which uh, we have done. Uh, Antibiotic spacer on uh, 29th April. These are the X-rays. After two culture negative this swaps, we have posted him for total uh, revision replacement. What is the ESR and CRP? ESR 8.96 and uh, sorry, ESR 110 and CRP is 8.96. Is there a declining titer of the... Yes, sir. At the time of admission, we had somewhere around 45, 46 and all. Now it has come to 8.96 ERP. ESR, ESR is too high. ESR was around 190 before it's 110 now. We even uh, suspected TB and we have sent, uh, but it was negative for uh, tuberculosis. Good. Ready? Time. Okay. Hmm. Okay. 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 Are we online? Oh, only the video. Uh, we are online. Uh, uh, Anup is there. He's finished his semantic. Yeah. Hi, Krishna. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Yeah. So I think one point that I wanted to make earlier was this internal and external rotation should be restored of 14 degrees. Thoda zoom out. Kariye. Zoom out, please. Zoom out and show the leg. So more than 10 degrees of internal and external rotation you need for, for proper flexion in internal rotation and external rotation. So this on medial pivot, it should rotate 10 to 14 degrees internal and external. That's one point that I wanted to make. So we have finished our cementing and uh, anything else that you may need to add or ask or anything. Looks very good. I think uh, all principles are well illustrated. Thank you very much once again.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it Hagna? Is it? Is it? There is, I think, five minute delay because uh, the case has been has been ready, and Dr. Hemant is scrubbing up. So, any questions you guys have, you can ask. Anything? Any questions? Yeah. Is that to me, Krishna? Yeah, uh, Anup. Uh, yes. They want you to summarize once again. Okay, the principles. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. So, can you can you focus here on this? So, the first is, don't look at the overall HK neutral. That's not the target. That's the wrong goal that we have been trying to achieve for for decades now. And once you do that, what you're trying to do is make your gaps equal and parallel. And because you take your cuts in mechanical. in mechanical alignment that is perpendicular to mechanical axis you will end up releasing the medial side because there is no other way you can make gaps equal and parallel while in kinematic you restore the mdfa which is invariably in 2 to 3 degree 4 degree valgus and mpta which is invariably in 3 to 4 degree varus when you do that you restore the normal length and laxities of the ligaments of the collateral ligaments when you do that you don't need any soft tissue releases for deformities under 15 degrees mostly in coronal and sagittal plane both now how do you achieve that you achieve that by cutting your distal femur meticulously and measuring that you cut equal from the lateral and the medial side so 8 mm from the lateral side 5 mm from the medial side Add to that one millimeter of saw curve and the lost cartilage. So kinematic alignment, that's the green line. You cut in two to three degree valgus and calculate accurately from a good full length true AP view. And the green line in the tibia shows that as you can, as you saw in the surgery also, we cut in two to three degree varus at normal flexion and the slope of the tibia and the femur. So one to three degree flexion on the femur. Five to seven degree slope on the tibia, depending what the pre-op arthritic alignment was. Restore the or keep the PCL intact. So when you do that, you restore the normal trapezoidal flexion space, and which is more laterally and uh, less medially. That doesn't mean you leave the medial space tight. Not at all. you have to keep it 19 and 21 22 23 whatever that space is of that particular patient when you do that that ensures that the patient gets good painless range of motion regarding the rotation part you don't rotate 3 degrees but you cut equal that's the green line that you cut equal medial and lateral forget about what the jig shows don't worry about it don't worry about the insole boot don't worry about anything just cut equal medial and lateral when you do that your rotation is invariably zero to the pca now what that means is because you given valgus to the femur you don't need to externally rotate and centralize your femur component and not lateralize it because lateralizes causes tightness of lateral retinaculum and increased lateral retinal release and of course we mentioned that you don't need to release any ligaments anything to the soft tissues for deformities under 15 20 degrees so those are the five principles we can discuss more but see that was a summary hello i think they have gone there uh, anup one of the one of the audience want to know can we do a ps knee well uh, kinematic alignment actually recommends a cr knee not a ps knee because the trapezoidal nature of the flexion space is destroyed so so that's what steven howell and all the all the champions of kinematic alignment say that as far as possible retain the pcl only then and then only you can restore the trapezoidal nature of the flexion space okay go on okay thank you
थैंक यू सो यू शुड नॉट कंफ्यूज द थिंग वी इफ यू आर एमिंग फॉर मैकेनिकल अलाइनमेंट यू कैन नॉट एक्सेप्ट टू मच लैक्सिटी इट्स समथिंग रॉन्ग This is something different. He is talking about. He is talking about a millimeter or two of laxity. It's very difficult to calibrate without technology, and uh, you must be cautious when you are em- embracing these sort of technologies without, you know, having instruments. Ideally. Oh, hang on, hang on. It's too time, maybe. Native uh, flexion space is relax uh, laterally for a native knee, and you are reproducing the same. Now, if you are a mechanical guy, you get worried about it. But here, you don't worry about it. The trolley, I need to. But me. कैमरा पीछे ले लो अभी ट्रॉली सब आने दो इधर एंड इट्स नॉट कवर्ड हियर ट्रॉली या सो ये ये लेने है नहीं लेना है हां तो कवर कर दो और प्लास्टिक ड्रेप भी डालो उसके ऊपर राइट आर वी रेडी कैन यू कैन यू हेयर मी Right, you need to focus on the X-ray now. Right, can you hear me, guys? Any feedback there? Uh, yes, sir. Ready, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Yeah, Ajit, sir, moderates. Hello, hello, hello. Can you? Uh, yeah, this is Vijay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, hi, hi. You can hear me. Okay, like. Right, I think you've seen the X-ray already. Can you reduce the volume here? Yeah, reduce that. Yeah, significantly. I can hear myself. Don't worry. Yeah. So if you can uh, see the X-rays, are you focused on the X-rays now? Yeah. This is the second stage of uh, two-stage revision for infection. The patient had Staph aureus infection about two months back. Had uh, implant removal and a static spacer has been put in. Now, static spacer here in this case has been used as dynamic spacer because patient has been flexing the knee. Uh, I know that uh, I've been sent pictures. The patient is flexing to about 90 degrees. The problem with that is that you end up losing some more amount of bone, especially posteriorly, as the you know the cement tibial cement spacer grinds on the posterior condyles, because this is not designed by shape to you know flex. So here I would expect a significant bone loss posteriorly, as you can see on the X-ray. There is bone loss on the medial tibial side. And uh, uh, otherwise, the canal is quite roomy. It will take uh, signal, you know. Uh, good 12 uh, 13 stem possibly we'll see uh, and i think uh, we're ready to start any questions before we start yeah inflate please no ready ready to go hemant yeah inflate please 280 yeah that should be okay yeah inflate please uh, right double knife we are going to excise the scar here done not yet done okay let's do that let's go we'll need double uh, knives please right so you can come there you can try you can come here right can you yeah that's okay but uh, is sister going to come in the way or you are okay with that Okay, so we are going to exercise this scar here. This double blade technique is a beautiful technique. Yeah, you can remove that now. Give me only one knife. Yeah, give me only one knife. Okay, okay. Peel off. Yeah, you can focus the lights here. Brother. 
brother. Yeah, have a syringe, please. We're going to aspirate the knee. Yeah, I'm told that aspiration has been done and it's negative for uh, culture. So that's good, but we'll just send the fluid anyway as a part of the protocol. Right, syringe, 18 gauge needle. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a, got it. 18, 18. We got a big needle. Now, usually when you're exposing, the first decision to be made here is whether you're going to need a rectus snip or not. Now, this knee has been flexing, so we're, I'm not expecting a rectus snip here. That's not 18, that's 21 spinal needle. Yeah, any IV needle, pink needle. No, I can't aspirate, there's no fluid, so that's okay. That's okay, don't worry. There's no fluid coming here. So we are can't aspirate. So that's a dry tap. That's always a good sign in a way. So important thing is to palpate where the medial patellar edge is. See if you can expose the muscle, the vastus medialis. Because most of the times you have a lot of fibrosis in this area and you can't differentiate. I'll need a marking pen, please. So I'm palpating the medial edge of patella and going here. And then I will see where the vastus medialis is. If I can just faintly see here, maybe that is where it starts. So give me a deep knife now. Just change this blade. That's it. Fibrosity. Yeah, let's have some fluids. Yeah, take that needle. We don't need the needle now. Send it off for culture. You know, periosteum elevator, please. Sorry. Just a tiny hand one. Uh, I'll need the spikes, please. Yeah, you got thin, smaller spikes. Leave that there. Give me a 15 number blade, please. Yeah, just hang on. It will not rotate right now because it is still very tight. 
and we need to we might need a snip we'll see we need slightly longer incision skin knife hai pehle wala yeah that's fine all right so we'll just take it slightly longer and okay you might need a snip here yeah snip uh, can be done very uh, you don't have to think too much about a snip Which yeah no big deal it doesn't change anything so uh, now i'm telling for the benefit of the audience here man so snip is just uh, you can do it doesn't change anything yeah it facilitates the surgery great deal so yeah, no so question if you ask me uh, i would invariably do a snip in uh, most revisions 90% of revisions right it doesn't change it doesn't have to think much right first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to excise all this fibrosis in the suprabadal pouch basically that will debulk the caucus please let's have a caucus or a at least whatever uh, so called gutter clearance medial and lateral that's the key to uh, all revision surgeries no, so that's not that's not that's which hemant will show us so i'm going to clear all the gutters now with all all the fibrosis because that you know will get me the space to work as well and as you keep clearing you will find uh, you can get more and more flexion uh, very nicely every time you clear more and more uh, more and more flexion you will get and usually we work in stages generally uh, caucus good caucus this i think is uh, bending nicely suction please let's suck the smoke most of them see a lot of fibrosis thick fibrosis here You usually see a plane. You see this plane now between the muscle and all this fibrosis. Yes, sir. Plane. Again, second debridement, like. Yeah, but it's not debridement exactly. It's the excision of this fibrosis. Not holding. Text like this. Okay. Yeah. This Alice is not holding. We need caucus. Yeah, a good caucus. No, this is not strong. That's the problem. It deforms. Yeah. Okay. This side as well. that's fine let's have the periosteum elevator please slightly broader one yeah that's good Okay, let's have osteoderms now. Okay, right angle here. Okay, 
let's have osteodomes. Yeah, straight one, straight. Bada bhi chalega. That's fine. Yep, that's lovely. That will give me space to work. It will allow me to clear. Why, why? The reflection bag. That's okay. It will be. Excellent. Let's clear the lateral gutter now. So give me a periosteum elevator, please. There was one here. Yeah, I got it here. Yeah, let's get that done. Yeah, the anterior side is completely cleared now. So let's see if you can mobilize the patella now. Yeah, I'll have one more of alleys or caucus, whatever it can. So patella is yeah, that's that will be they're just what like that. That'll be the best. Yeah, give me 15 knife. 15 knife forceps. No, there's no caucus, so it's okay. Yeah, forceps, please. Yeah, just watch their finger. Never trust a surgeon with a knife. Don't put your fingers close to the knife. Yeah, let's have something to hold on here. I'm going to excise this fibrosis. Yeah. 15 knife forceps, please. Yeah, thanks. Give give me in the kidney dish. Don't give me in the hand. I don't like knife transfer hand to hand. Yeah, we are okay. That's okay. We are okay. So we can actually do the patella now because it's quite worn out. And let, let me let me take out this fibrosis. Yeah, please inform me when every half. Let's take that out. Okay. That should be good enough. Hopefully. Now it's spike, please. Lateral spike. Fine for the time being. Yeah, that's okay. Nibbler, let's clear things from here.
Okay, let's clear the tibia on the medial side. Uh, you can reduce the volume of the speaker in the OT because I, I don't need to hear myself. Put in figure of four and clear the posterior middle corner. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. No, no, hang on, hang on. Yeah, just keep it there. Fifteen knife forceps. No, don't give it. Don't give the knife in the hand. I'll I'll collect it from the kidney tree. Please remember, most accidents happen when you have knife transfer hand to hand. So, as a rule, nobody should give a knife in the hand. And nobody should receive it in the hand. A friend of mine got stabbed in the thinner remnants. Yeah, Spike, please. Yeah, so let's decide whether we need to do anything more. That should be adequate, I think. Right, let's have a right angle there. So let's have, uh, let's adjust the lights, please. Okay. Yeah. Ostrom, please. Yeah, mallet. Yep. Okay. Right, let's clear this fibrosis away now. Forceps, please. Forceps. Cautery. Yeah, we need to clear some fibrosis from the back of the femur as well. So I like to use the curved osteodome and use cautery on that. Curved osteodome. And either peel away with the curved osteodome like this or use cautery there. Let's see how it works. Yeah, we'll just use cautery now. Okay, let's have forceps now. Forceps. Yeah, got it here. A little clearance required still on the medial side, posterior medial side. So let's take this out. Let's put it in figure of four and clear this out. 59, please. Yeah, hold this there. Yeah. Kidney trick, kidney trick. That should be okay. Okay, fifteen knife. Okay. 
सुपरी प्रिंसिपल फाइन बोन एंड स्टिक टू बोन राइट सो वी आर रीजनेबली क्लियर ना there is fairly deep rims on both sides here so we'll see how low we oh, we'll try and minimize that yeah curry so do you have the full uh, augment here or only uh... we have both sides both sides we have to put full nahi hai na okay medial lateral ne full nahi hai na full uh, tibial <laughs> complete nahi. no no that's fine that is okay okay we'll see it get it can you turn the tourniquet towards me please Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, let's have the starting punch. Starting drill, Devan. Okay, cue it again. Yeah, let's do that. Let's give wash. Yeah, pulse lavage, pulse lavage. So the original implant must have been a CR knee because there is no box here. So that small mercy in life. sir please explain what you are doing sir because most of them are primary guys here three muscles yeah nine three hello sorry sir please explain what you are doing sir okay because i we had complete silence so we don't know what was going on right i basically cleared out all the You know, surface bony surface is all the fibrosis that is there. So use curet. I have cleared out the posterior corner, and now I have drilled both femur uh, and tibia, and I have started drilling. I am just going to do drill both simultaneously in order to save time. Okay, I am just going to feel what feels like a good 
Yeah, so this is now snug. You know, I can feel it that this is just gripping the end of steamer. Yes, got it. Yeah, so I'm just uh, gripping the end of steam here. What size is this? This is 12. So important to understand your instrumentation system here. Uh, so our, uh, in, uh, you know, stem start at 7.5, then we have 10, then we have 12.5, and then we have, uh, no, so 12 and 13.5, right? 13.5. So they go up in 1.5 millimeters, not 1 millimeters. So let's have 12.5. So 12.5 reamer was gripping. Let me see what depth it was gripping because that would be important. Now, uh, so what system you are using, sir? The PCK you are this using? Is, this is PCK from Max. All right. And uh, there are some features of this. So this is the, at the depth of this. 50. This is 155, but 155 from the jig here. So it is still not gripping. So that is 12.5 is not gripping on. So this is 130 depth. The important to understand what the depths are. Now, have me give me a scale, please, and show me a tibia. Show me the tibia. No, no, try the tibia. Yeah, and scale. I need scale. See, if you can see this, the trial, you know, this is the trial tibia. Now, tibial uh, from the bottom of the base plate to the the key, uh, keel is about 2.5 uh, centimeters. So that is 25 millimeters. Yeah, you need to move out. I can't see. Hello. Yeah, we can see here. Yeah, you can see that there, 25 yeah. millimeters. Yes. If I don't do the uh, offset, so that is what my stem is going to be. The stem now, this is uh, 100 millimeters. Okay. So total is going to be 130. Yes. So, so from the uh, joint line, uh, from the tibial uh, the line to the, the to 130 millimeters should be my reaming. Yeah, that is the basic understanding. Now, if I use an offset, now I'm going to have an offset bushing that will come here. Right. So, an offset bushing will add another uh, 2 centimeters, 2.5 centimeters. So, you have to add say, almost 30 millimeters to that. So, if I'm using an offset, then I need to add 30 millimeters to it. So, this is about 130, then I'll have to go to about 155. Because this is 125 right now. Yeah, so 125 plus 25. So, 151. 28 millimeters is the offset bushing. So you have to ream to about 130. So, but I am at the moment, uh, I have to decide whether offset uh, is going to be required or not. Now, important thing to judge why, whether offset is required or not is uh, put it on. Now, let's, um, let's, let's clear this out first. Give me a saw, please. Saw with narrow blade. Central spike dinner. There's a lot of extra bone on the rim on the lateral side. I'm going to take that down. No, no, no. Gently. Yes. That's it. Yeah, that's us. No, not this narrow. Throw a beach alone. This is extreme narrow. Yeah, that is fine. Perceps knife. The question from audience is why why not uh, the, the cut uh, instead of a free hand can you do with the intermediate logic itself 
intermediate you can you can do it with intermediate logic as well i'll just show you how i do this uh i find see ex- most of the times the proximal tibia it does not have good consistency and most of the times i find that after you take the jig out and it's resting on the pins it's not very secure or stable that is the basic problem in in revisions that the yes. proximal tibia is very patchless and not very nice so i you can uh, put the jig on you want to try that on we can try that on because i i never use the jig for this particular step i don't use the jig uh have the reamer ha uh, 12.5 okay. let me put 12.5 so magashi kithe hota 12 so the way to do it is leave that uh, you know reamer in place put the trial to be on on of that and check if it is in the center of this base plate can you have another uh, light from no, no, no. so one way to do it is you know, put this i put this in here and i think this is right in the center of this uh, if it was sitting eccentric i would have used offset if it is sitting in the center i don't use the need to use offset i need it if you have a top view that can actually there is no light handle to camera so so this way you can see that if i'm perpendicular to the jig i'm going to be left with a medial uh, you have uh, you, augments there medially yes, yeah give me that uh, neutral uh, bushing flexing yeah yeah and then neutral bushing yeah this is the neutral bushing that i am putting and that seems to give me a good coverage both medial and laterally i am actually happy with that position now let's have some pin please now many a time because of uh, poor bone uh, quality pins do not engage so usually it engages laterally very easily and no put this one put put this one is it engaging no it's not i just need to do this because i need to uh, prepare the keel of the tibial base plate <clears throat> okay i yeah, just hold it then now here i have to be careful about the rotation of the tibia i am quite happy with that rotation tibial tibia rotation okay no, give me this mallet hold it yeah take it out now give me size 3 tibia and uh 12.5 stem yeah take this out it's going to rest on the rim here Yeah, give me four steps, please. Yes, suck that, suck that, suction, smoke. Okay, fine. Yeah, put that away. Either it, you have a quiver. That's fine. Now give me that priority, Bia. Now this is twelve point five stem, hundred mm. 
12. 10.5 and 12, no? Okay, so this is 12 stem. And the easy thing to do is you have to see where it's resting or where it is obstructing. There is some soft tissue here. It is almost about four or five millimeters off on the lateral side as well. So I need to clear this soft tissue away. 59 forceps. The jig and multiple slots that I have MMM slots for augments becomes very fiddly. Right, you're not hearing them. See, it's now resting on the lateral side. Uh, let's look on the middle side. And let's see if it will be resting here. Yeah, we just need to trim a little bit on the lateral side so that it gets more uniform. Mallet. Yeah, have saw, please. That's it. Yeah, I have a 10 mm augment nibbler. Yeah, we can't hear them at all. Is there anybody there or all gone for tea? Uh, no, uh, Hemant, we are all uh, watching very carefully. <laughs> okay. Because we are not getting anything. I think we are not... Uh, we are spellbound. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is a big... Shut up, you ready? Uh, how do you plan to make up for the defect? Uh... Yeah, that's what I'm... I have, we have options of uh, augments in the medial sound. The beauty of this system, and which is... You know, one of the uh, useful features here, which is not there in other systems, is that these augments are stackable. If you can see here, there are two augments that are stacked on one top of, on top of each other. Yep. So, so we can even go for, uh, you know, this is, uh, what size? This is size one. One, two, three. Okay. No, you can, you should use three on this Sir. and then two on this. One set. Yep. Stacked. Yeah, but, but this can, you know, I want this to one foot with this. Yeah, three and two. No, this is going to be too thick. They give me only one. So you can actually stack them uh, in the, on the medial side. You can recreate the tibial shape on the medial side. So if it is a tibial base plate three, the first augment can be size three. The one below that can be size two. And then one, if required, even one below. So 15 mm can yeah. be even one. Yeah, that's a very useful uh, thing to have. Yeah. So let's have only one augment, five mm. Yeah, give me three mm, three uh, sorry, size three augment. Doctor Heyman. Yes, please. Uh, Rajkumar here. Hi. Ah, uh, so uh, uh, can I ask? Yeah, sure. Uh, no, the thing is now when the by principally when we are moving. Uh, more towards biological in the form of sleeves and cones. Yeah. So now you you were using a lot of cones before uh, for all your major defects cases. Yeah, now yeah, with, yeah. The, with the augments, yeah. uh, will you say that th this augments will be of on par with your uh, cones Th and these sleeves? are not augments, they are wedges basically. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. The no, no. I mean, basically, see, uh, it's a different concept altogether. If when you're talking about trabecular metal, so trabecular metal, trabecular metal is a bone substitution system that is not part of the implant. Okay, so whenever you use a cone, that is uh, being used to replenish the lost bone there. We can actually have one more. Let me just give me a, one more augment in my hand. So the is a philosophical difference. The philosophy of using trabecular metal cones is bone replenishment. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it is not to be considered as part of the implant system. It's part of the bone. The, so thing, is, know, the thing is, so can I ask more as well. Yeah, this will go. So I just need to trim it. I need to go. Yeah, let's have the. Put that on. 
so here to put this wedges put two ones put two at one point of time we will be removing some bone to make it yeah but it is at, i am not going to sacrifice huge amount of bone maybe a millimeter on the front but that's it i don't need to sacrifice if i need to sacrifice bone that is again uh, self self defeating but there is huge bone loss on the posterior side so uh, a sacrifice of 1 mm anteriorly is not a big deal to accommodate for his uh, augment so if you have the need to sacrifice more bone will you change your plan or no no in fact for using trabecular metal uh, you need to most of the time sacrifice lot of bone you have to burn away lot of bone especially from the you know medullary canal because you know the smallest of trabecular metal cones i have tried to use in fact uh, is too big for our patients yeah uh, yeah we also had the experience our uh, trabecular metal cones are just too big for our patients yeah, yeah. but if the <laughs> sleeve sleeve in fact we don't need to remove any bone at all no raj let's put the three concepts are there you can do a sleeve you can use yeah, a cone or you can use a wedge and sleeve. all three uh, all three work different ways no sleeve is again a different concept sleeve is not considered bone substitution no, sleeve no. is part of the implant the concept is different but but anyhow we will manage the bone defect that is the point yeah i mean if you are using sleeve you are using a sleeve so let's not talk about trim cone <laughs> it's a part of the system that you choose yeah give me that again we are almost done here yes yeah, see here most important thing to see is that it is resting laterally i don't know if you can see that here it's I resting yeah it's nicely resting laterally yes yeah. so nicely resting laterally here these are two augments i have used one is a size 3 augment second is a size 2 augment so that actually recreates the medial uh, sloping tibia yeah? yeah and there is obviously going to be some defect on the medial side which is going to be filled up by uh, cement So I'm happy with that tibial reconstruction. Let's move to femur now. Any questions on tibia? Uh, no, that's uh, very good. Yeah. So the the first thing I look at is my flexion space. Now, if I pull down here, that uh, you know is uh, maybe we like accept maybe fifteen uh, poly. If I use the same size, uh, let's say femoral sizer. most of the times you have significant bone loss on the posterior side and you end up upsizing the femur okay so ideally this would take size b femur you know this is just right for size b but size b is accommodating for the bone loss i am going to upsize the femur and see because you can always come down on the femur you cannot go up on the femur so i am going to put size c there is almost a 4 5 mm gap posteriorly this is an anti reference so we'll see Let's have size three. No, I'm not. I'm just going to have reamer. Now the way I do it again, you know, I'm not going to do any distal femoral cut here. Ultimately, it is the intramedullary stem that dictates your valgus angle and the position. So it's the uh, geometry between the femoral implant and the intramedullary stem that decides your valgus angle. So we are not going to, you know, look at medullary canal guide and so what size is this? Sorry, twelve, na. No, but twelve is you know. So I need to go higher. So yeah, if, yeah. Give me go to thirteen because twelve at one fifty five depth is loose. I can feel it. One one useful trick that you just you know reamer in. And it'll come to canal. So I can actually feel that you know the what I was feeling uh, was gripping the end of stem was actually. So for the length of the stem, hundred mm stem. then i'm uh, you know trying to see at that depth how much is the toggle there is toggle so i'm going to go for a higher size so give me 13 that is not by okay now show me the trial femur as well yeah some point to be made can you give me a scale please yeah so important to appreciate that we have this uh, you know bushing where the stem is going to articulate now if you look at the depth from the uh, join, you know joint line this is 4.5 mm sorry 4.5 cm so 45 and show me the stem trial yeah 100 yeah, this is 100 right yeah so if i put 100 stem here so 100 plus 145 that is going to be 145 and then if i am using this on top of my instruments if i am say having my block here you know block dikha 
AP cutting block. Yes, because it depends on uh, how deep you are judging your medullary canal diameter. Yeah. So this is the usual cutting block that is put on, and you are judging the uh, you know putting the reamer through there, and then you are judging the depth from here. So assuming that this was here, so it is not going to be exactly that. It is going to be all right. You know, more uh, deep uh, by this much. So what is this step? So you need to understand the instrumentation to so 35. So if you put this on and then try to judge the depth at which streamer is, you have to consider the whole equation. So I actually avoid doing all that because, you know, this uh, let us be up uh, you know, in a complex case. So what I'm going to do is, let's give me a 13.5. Reamer. Okay, let me. I'm going to put thirteen point five reamer on this here. Yeah, so it is just engaging now, and then we can have this on and see how it feels. Uh, Hemant, uh, question is uh, from the audience: Is how do you decide the length of the femoral stem? That's what I'm saying. I'm engaging the and if you look at the phrase, the you know, femoral canal is quite capacious. It is not narrow. Most of the times you end up uh, having 13.5 or even sometimes 15, 16, if it is very wide. Now, it, it goes by the feel. You have to feel the, you know, uh, no, end of... Like, he's talking about the length of the stem. Yeah, length I'm talking about the length, length of the stem. And, you know, you have to decide where you engage. So, uh, with the length of the stem, uh, if it is too short, then you will not engage either the you know cortices. You will be you know in the middle very canal. Will be loose. Uh, you have to go for a very thick canal stem. It also it also depends whether you are using a cemented or an uncemented. So, so your plan is a cemented stem here, uh, Hemant? No, I am going to do metavessel cementing. I'm not going to do full diavessel cementing. He's not doing diavessel cementing. No, no, I don't like to do diavessel cement. Yeah, just give me a finger. Finger, the finger. So, see, this is the nice that they have here. You put it through the anterior slot and it rests on the anterior cortex. You see where it is. It, you know, the cortex is let's, let's have that. Let's have the saw. So, the uh, femoral rotation and the anterior cortex is a good uh, landmark. The tibia is a good landmark because you don't have the other uh, landmarks. So the tibia is a good landmark for you. The anterior cortex of the femur is also another good landmark. Now, let's have that on. Rotation. So I'll be looking at the epicondylar axis. So do you have a mark pen? So I'm going to part. The lateral epicondyle is like a knuckle. So it's a point. And medial epicondyle is uh, like a, a tip of your thumb. So it's, it's a much wider area. So you have to take the center of that area. Then I will judge my rotation here. Yeah, let's have the pin. Yeah. Yeah. So with this, let me have a finger. Now, remember, this is size C that we have chosen. No, no, not that, just uh, angelic. Now, with size C femur, there is a significant gap posteriorly. Okay? Now, if I have to use size C femur, then I have to use, put augments on both sides of at least 5 millimeters. That's what I'm feeling right now. So, I'm not engaging any bone with zero cut with 5 mm. See, you have uh, 0, 5, and 10 slots here. Yeah. So, I'm with zero, I'm not touching the bone at all. There is a gap. With five mm, I'm just touching the lateral side and um, yeah, touching the medial side just about. So, with if I use this size C femur, I have to use five mm augments to start with. But that is a good point to start because you can always go down on, uh, you know, from C to B, I can go down. The difference between C and B is going to be four millimeters. So it's always better to tighten the flexion space and uh, you know go start with the higher size. And uh, we, what we can do is we can just uh, you know let me just uh, make sure that is flush. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what Hamilton good. is demonstrating is that in revision, you have to always first do the flexion space first. Yeah. Uh, then we work out the extension take space, unlike primary where we do the reverse. Take out, take out. So your flexion has to be snug uh, in revisions. And typically, most revisions, you'd like to put the highest femur size that's possible based on, uh, because you want to make the flexion space. Uh, yeah, you need right? and stem. As a general rule, 90% of revisions, the uh, flexion without box. be larger than extension space. Box already had there, no? Yeah. box Yeah. Yeah, yeah will you will. Thanks. If required, you can always go down on B. Yeah, give me the same reamer. So I will, you know, prepare for size C femur. Posterior just about touching it. Prime and augment lagnar posterior. Yeah, give me the reamer. Give me the same reamer again. Yeah. Now here, important thing to appreciate that I have not my extension space at all. Now, I, I don't want to go to the full depth of this because it might be too deep a box cut because I might be actually needing to put uh, distal, I mean, distal augments as well. Let's just let it on. Get it on. You don't need this. Yeah, take it on. Usually, chamfers are not required for... Uh, yeah, very rarely. So, I'm just going to put, put this about uh, 5 or 10 mm distally. And uh, have the pins. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, stop, stop. Put this on. So this is only going to be, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, just leave it, leave it. This is only going to be provisional kind of. A, this is not going to be my definition because I, I don't know how much oxidation augments I'm going to need. Or distal augments I'm going to need. Yeah, take that yeah, yeah. Uh, take this. Yeah, tiny blade then. Recipes are the recipe done. It's a tiny blade then. What's the tunica time? Fifty-four. Okay. Yeah, take the sorry. Yeah, I know. We'll have to ream that. Yeah, another point is that the that that sorry, yeah, we'll take that out. This diameter is 17 millimeters. So you need to ream this depth to uh, 17 millimeters. Yeah, let's have the saw, please. Yeah, nibbler. It'll come out. Artery then. Artery, artery. Yeah, we'll take that. Artery forceps. Chota. The bone in the canal. Nibbler, please. Yeah, let's have the trial femur. And we need to ream first. Yeah, let's go on. Reamer then. Give me remiss. Free and free and. What size is this? 70. 70. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, mallet. Punch. Yeah. 
going. Yeah, there's some bone here on the middle side. Extra extracted this. The soft tissue is stopping that. Otherwise, this rotation stability is very good. Yeah, extracted then. Extracted then. Yeah. Yeah, this, this. Yes, uh, give me saw again. Yeah. They clean car, there's no, there are no teeth there. Yeah, there most likely it's still out message yeah. so nibbler please posterior is using so it's bone here as well 15 knife four steps okay that's fine let's try Okay, let's have uh, 12 polyon, 11. Give me 11 poly. Let me try that. 11 normal uh, poly, PS poly. Uh, do the trial with PS poly. I don't want that uh, peg to regarding stability. Let's do the trial with PS poly so that peg is not snug fitting. So as far as the flexion is concerned with PS poly, it is very nice. Can you appreciate that? Yes. Yeah. There is no medial lateral toggle at all. So this poly, 12 poly in flexion looks good with this construct. Now just let's judge what this extension. I'm, I'm pulling down the ankle now and trying to see if there is any laxity there. There is laxity. So please pull the ankle down. And uh, I'm going to actually destroy, uh, get the femoral component outwards. We have a um, uh, punch or something. No, no, no. Something, something, or uh, metallic. Some bone punch. Okay, the bone punch. Then. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this. Uh, I, I'm going to distract the joint by putting on the ankle. And I'm going to push this femoral component downwards. And see how much gap I am left with on the middle. Now there are marks here. I don't know if you can see these marks. Yeah, we can see the yeah. marks. Yeah. Yeah, and that I can I can actually see the gap between the distal femur and the prosthesis here. Give me a, a finger. Yeah. So if I you know put my cautery down here, that's five millimeters. So definite five. It's between five and ten. Yeah, on the medial side. Similarly, on the lateral side, the gap is between five and ten. So I might actually end up putting four augments here, uh, two uh, you know uh, two distally and two proximally. Now here I've got a I got a rectus snip here, so that is why patella will tend to sublux. But uh, if I'm sure about my rotation, tibia is absolutely fine, no problem about the rotation. Femoral side also I was good, and if I put my thumb here, I can I can get the knee to ninety. This. Patella will tend to sublux because of the rectus nib. So don't uh, be too worried about that. Uh, uh, very important. Uh, and of course, we need to look at the joint line now. Uh, so the uh, commonest mistake we make is we elevate the joint line by proximalizing the femur. That is a big no-no. You should make sure that you are uh, slice the femur and uh, the joint line is restored. So let's now have, uh, yeah, let's get this poly out. Let's have uh, distal augments as well. Let's have uh, two 10 mm augments distally and see how it works. Yeah. 
Yeah, permanent extractor, please. If you see here, it's a laggy guy. Yeah, laterally five. Yeah, let's have two five mm augments. Yeah, two five mm augments distally. So put all of those on and give me the femoral component. It could be our final construct. Yeah, give me the curate, please. We are planning four augments to proximal and two augments on the tibia. Six augments. Distal and posterior. So four augments on the femur, two on the tibia. Full whamming. Still a lot of fibrous. Because soft, soft, soft tissue is not reliable. So, generally, so we are not hearing them. But it's important to trial with the PS body just to make sure that we are not depending on this as first step. So, if you can see two augments, 5 mm each. Does this go in or does this not go in? This is prominent. Yeah. Punch the bone punch again. Take it. Take this. One hour, four minutes. That's fine. Okay. In there, so how prominent are Huh? Okay, yeah. That's a so it is so you, you see this four augments, two posterior and two distal. Yes, yeah. All are five mm. Yeah, and the fit on this side is very nice. And definitely you do not need any offset because this is sitting right in the center of the theme, center of the end of the femur. Yeah, it's stretching laterally. Maybe medially, laterally, we might need 10. It is touching. It's actually the bone there. See that? So, we do, yeah, that's okay. It's resting on the bone there. So, we are good there. Give me a 12 in your trial. Sorry, what am I saying? Okay, that's fine. So, let's check our final position with the trialing. That's full extension, no FFD. And stability is decent. We'll still be using a PCK. So when the final poly is used, it is going to be PCK poly. This is a PS, but PS also gives me good stability. So PCK is definitely going to be better. No question about it. Now, the only thing I judge here is gaps are going to be left. In spite of the augment, there's still gaps. So all those are going to be filled up by bone cement. So this is where it's going to rest here. You, you make a mental note of that, even medially. And another point or important thing to do is a marking pen. I have a marking pen. I mark the periphery and you know on the anterior cortex. So that's kind of a judgment when you're cementing. Sometimes you might just end up uh, knocking it deeper. So that's good. Take the implant, please. Yeah, spike. I'm going to only do metaphysical cementing. I'm not going to do, uh, you know, all the way. We're going to use two types of cement, one each for tibia and femur. So first we'll do the tibial cementing and we'll do the femoral cementing next. And then last will be poly insertion. Uh, do you aim for full extension in uh, revision, uh, Hemant? 
I mean, I don't leave a comedy here. It depends on what the soft tissues feel like. I mean, th these are good soft tissues, good quality soft tissues, particularly lax or because sometimes you know the elderly females if they are undergoing revisions, the soft uh, soft tissue quality is good. Those actually can stretch out and slightly become lax over a period of time. They end up with maybe five degrees of effect. But yeah, I would like to correct the comedy. Yeah, let's take that now. So that is the tibial constant. As I said, one augment is a size three augment, size three augment, and underneath is a size. Three. Okay, so we are going to use, recreate the medial tibial slope. Yeah, and this uh, is this is a straight stem, non-offset stem. All uh, the implant tibia. Yeah. And just start moving first. Yeah. So we need to do use infiltration. Okay, let's have the pulse number. You infiltration? No, whatever you know, cocktail. No. We use ropioquine, you know, clopidogrel. I think what clopidogrel? Clonidine, ropioquine, adrenaline, and uh, make up the 60 cc with the line. Sorry? Uh, whatever is there on the trial. Yeah? Okay. I think Patela also should be done. Let's do Patela. Patela is primarily not done. Patela is down to bone here. So let's have two, two alleys or car. Give me a near Patela. Karna hai. We'll do Patela with tibia. So don't mix cement. Give me vernier, please. Vernier. No, yeah. Because patella is down to bone. This. Yeah, patella is completely down to bone. I don't resurface patella normally, but this is completely down to bone. So. From below, yeah, that's lovely. Then I like to put it so let me just measure it. What's the tunica time? One or ten minutes, one or nine minutes, 69, you know? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we are good with time. You have a good uh, uh, cutting blade, probably. If you have a thinner one, that will also do. What size is this? 0.9. Eh? But what instruments are you? I need to measure before I cut. Good thickness. This looks at least 24. Since uh, let's get this X fibrosis out in the meanwhile while we are waiting. Hmm? Lights, please. Yeah, hold on. Start. That's good. Questions until now? 
No, we are not hearing them. Yeah, we can't hear them. Vernier, yeah. eh? Yeah. But, yeah. So I'm it's 23, that's good. I was 324. So that's reasonable. Yeah, short, short. Thing. Give me Vernier again. Still long way to go. <laughs> Normally, the level of the quad is extending. There's still about two millimeters away. Yeah, that's 16 millimeter down further. Yes, comfortable. Hold that way. Fibrous is all done. Yeah, give me the particular preparation. Yeah, cure it then. Give me the biggest patella you have. Uh, Dr. Hemant, we'll be showing you picture in picture what you're doing. Thank you very much for the live surgery. We are ready with yeah, the video. No problems. Yeah. So, Thank you. Yeah. So, can you show the details of the next case? So, we have two more cases left. I think the uh, audience has been exceptional. They've stayed uh, awake throughout the session. Eight surgeries are over. Nine, 40 is fine. Two more surgeries. So just yeah, give me 40. Half an hour late. So, I never use this. Work by the faculty as well. A big round of applause. Yeah, give me that. Really complicated <laughs> cases. Uh, they have dealt very, very well. Here are the details of the next case. It's a 53 years old male uh, diagnosed as left osteoarthritis of knee. So, we have planned for left total knee arthroplasty. Uh, he has a comorbidities of hypertension and his range of movements are 30 to 110 with FFD of uh, around 30 degrees and varus of around 20 degrees. These are uh, his knee x-rays, AP and lateral view, showing uh, medial tibial defect condyle. His full length x-rays. And these are the pics showing his uh, ROM. This FFD and flexion 110 degrees. His blood report CRP was 6.7 and DSR was 18. It's a video we took to show his ROM.
It's a great video. Which, uh, which we can see the virus deformity. Thank you. Deformity is much more. Chief operating surgeon for the case is uh, Deepak sir, Deepak Shoratri sir, and uh, moderator sir is Dr. Mahesh Kulkarni. Sir. Hello. Hi. Can you hear Hello, me? Dr. Deepak. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, we can Great. hear you. Yes. So basically, I've just made the standard midline incision and the medial parapetal incision. So yeah. held the caucus with the meniscus. I'll just show you. I mean, no, still now it's not a straightforward approach. Yeah. Uh, the only thing with this is the fixed flexion deformity and the varus that we're going to correct. How far is that varus correctable? Uh, it's hardly anything about five degrees correctable. That's all. So there's at least a fixed varus of about 20 degrees and a FFD of about 25, 30 degrees. Okay. So the key is in the medial release. We'll start doing this. As you can see, I use diatomy uh, and try and make a pocket right under the rim of the osteophyte where you can put your homans, which gives you the next le level of exposure. Homans, please. And all we need to do is to just open up the attachment right at the rim as as far as the equator and that's what is required as of now which is more or less the standard approach for most knee replacements you can take that out Omens, please take that out that's I think the brightness is a bit too much. There's a lot of glare. Uh, so if the camera person can uh, reduce the brightness, please. This guy is quite tall. Actually, the table is fully down and it's still coming up to my throat. Yeah, that's better. Knife, please. Another home and stick this up. No. Knife again. I clear the suprapatellar pouch so that we can get the correct sizing of the femur. Are you a CR or a PS person? I used to be a very CR person when I was in England, but now I've become a totally PS person purely due to the logistics sometimes. Uh, but yes, I, I love to do CR anytime. But uh, this is not, I, th I think in these cases, it is easier to do PS. It's not that you can't do CR in these cases, but I think it's technically easier to do a PS in a very high fixed flexions and very high virus deformities. Nibbler? So just taking the medial large osteophytes off.
I think there's a best taken off. Uh, even if it's not fully, you have to take it as much as possible so that when you make the cut, there's no, it doesn't break off accidentally. So draw the white side line, make the standard dent. I use my thumb and my index finger to feel the shaft of the femur. Drill, please. The drill is apparently not sharp and hence I'm using this. So the idea is to put the rod right in the middle of the bone. That's the whole thing. So my thumb and my index finger guide me to that. So one of the things with fixed flexion deformities is about uh, resecting extra, two millimeter extra. If the FFD is less than 20 degrees or 25 degrees, there's no need to do the extra resection. But in this case, because it is uh, more than 25, 30 degrees, we would go for 11 straight away. Mallet? Okay. So the virus remains the same. It's left five degrees here. Mallet this so that it, the block sits right on the bone. And we are taking a 11 mm cut according to this jig. For 11 mm. Yeah. Uh, for uh, severe FFDs. Yeah. Do you straight away go for uh, an extra 2 mm cut, or would you first like to do check, uh, do a posterior capsular release, <laughs> check the extension gap, and then revisit again the distance? Yeah. So basically, if it is less than 20 degrees of FFD, then there is no need. I still go with the standard 9 mm cuts. But yeah. whereas if it is more than 30 degrees, like in this case, then we can just as well go for 11 straight away. Just double check on the angel wing. This is 11 mm cut. It should just about cross the notch. And that's where we are, which looks good. Place the oblique pin, please. Not at this stage. I mean, if you do the angel wing again, so just double check your cuts, which looks fine. That looks good. That looks good. So please. Let's try down the middle. Thing is, if you do the if it is still like very tight, then you straight away go for a distal cut, uh, extra cut straight away. Is the pin stopping me? Huh? And remove. So we leave those pins there just in case we have to come back again. Uh, forceps. Okay. Now is the fun bit. You can take this out. Keep that. So clear the notch. So that we can put our first omen. Okay. 
Okay, the first hormone goes in the middle. Try and get behind the tibia. Hold it there. We've got a huge defect in the fem. Okay, the other one goes there. He can hold. Can hold both if you can. Could get us the nibbler, please. I just like to take the entire lateral meniscus off in one shot. Forceps. Are there any big osteophytes in the posterior medial corner? There is actually. Uh, there's a huge defect. We'll just be about to see in a minute. I think we'll need a stem for sure. Uh, another forceps for him. Just retract that with. Just trying to take the meniscus out. Another homens, please. Uh, straight homens. So the key is to dislocate the knee, and most of the times it does not dislocate because we have not released enough on the medial side. Maybe those osteophytes are uh, blocking it as well. Yes. It. So stop it there. So start cleaning up those osteophytes in the front. It's stuck on the rim. Sometimes a curved osteotome. Yeah. Gently, gently tease it along the M MCL on the posterior middle corner. It will remove some of those osteophytes. Yes. So that tightens on the MCL. I'm just able to see that now. Osteotome. Osteotome. Nibbler. What a smaller nibbler. There's a piece of the posterior medial fragment of the tibia which is broken off. I mean, the large osteophyte and is just jammed under the condyle. That is, that is usually the impediment for Correct. subluxing the knee. Is there any meniscal attachment? The lateral no, meniscal no, not at all. No. That's Can you see this uh, defect? No, Can everybody see the defect here? Yeah? Uh, clearly. Uh, maybe the, uh, yeah, the camera can, yeah, that's better now. Yeah. So this is the. So that's supposed to meet this. it. Yeah, exactly. So the whole thing, there's a big crater here. So what we'll do. And feel this piece of the bone which is blocking it, but
Okay, let's take a preliminary cut and then we can get access to that place a bit more. Nibbler, get the jig twist, you will jig. Finish the femur, yeah. Other thing to do is to do the femur. Complete the femur, femoral cut, you'll get access to that corner. Correct, yeah. I just wanted to do the tibia cut and see if we can get that. Hit the tibia, please. No, it's okay. It was just a preliminary cut. Got a very prominent tibial tuberosity. Angel wing, please. Is that the tibial tuberosity? It's unusually big. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is really big actually. So I'm not able to push the jack right back because of the prominent tibial tuberosity. Yeah, so let's get the angel wing again. So reasonably well aligned. We'll just make this preliminary cut. Another pin, please. Drill again. So sometimes with this hard bone, it's best to drill rather than hammer. So let's see. Hawkers. Remove. Homans. Get this woman's here. So even this is a piece of the bone there. Most of all, just stay close to the bone. Osteotom, please. Small one is there. Yeah. 
a huge posterior osteophyte here. Vibla. Slowly getting there. So we'll recess the PCL, we'll probably reset the PCL and the posterior capsule. Another moments, please. So you had only taken a provisional TPL cut? Provisional TPL cut, yes. So are you planning to do more resection of tibia? I think so. Happy uh, with the thickness of the bone resected now? Uh, I think we may have to take another 2mm, but uh, I'll check once I finish this. I just want to see the back of the tibia. It's still a huge... Uh... Relax. Okay, stay there. Another moments, please. So that's the piece. Yeah. Action, forceps, please. Relax. Yeah. Hold on. Nipplet. Looks like there's a piece behind this which is not coming out. What we'll do is uh, I'll just have a look at this once again, just take it down. We'll just go ahead and do the femur and then come back again. Uh, let's have a look at the femoral sizes, please. How, how is the extension gap now? I mean. It is just about uh, there, but uh, obviously there's a lot of virus uh, correction that needs to be and done. So the TPL resection is not enough. Not enough yet, yes. So we'll just uh, go back to the femur. We remove the posterior cuts, and then we'll see if we can get access to that. Sizer, femoral sizer. Move the pin, pin remover, please. Remove the pins. Sir. So we'll have to put the pins again to do the. Just a femur cut. In case. Hopefully, we'll not have to cut more femur. More femur, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. You had already taken 11 mm, isn't it? Correct, yes. Okay. Don't think it's a good idea to keep resecting femur. Lift it up. He's got a tall guy, so it should be a F or something like that. Lift it up. Yeah, good. Remember to get behind the condyles. Probably the biggest. 
It's going past G. Hmm. Just lift one second. Just straighten this one. Lift the leg up. G, please. Pins. V. So three things to look at, the medial lateral width, the notching and the extension gap. Unfortunately, because you have not corrected, I would rather normally see the plane of the cut being parallel to the tibia. But in this case, we just have to accept this for now and then come back and recheck. Um, another homans, please. Pins. Yeah. Okay. Hospital. Um. So sometimes they dig in if it's very hard bone. So it's best to lift it up with the osteotom and then make sure you don't notch too much. So? Osteotom? Hold this saw. Clean mop. Sharpen it from bottom. And then we can come back in the slot again. Hold this one. Can we get a bigger homans, please? We get the screws. It's best to put the screws now so that they don't jump out. Okay, leave it for now. We'll take it next step. Saw, please. If you get a grand piano seminar into the topics. Pin remover. Oh, get us a driver, please. So, time for cut. Okay. 
Notch one, small blade. Pin remover. Pin remover. Oh, it's okay. The medial side was a difficult one. Okay, let's have a look. Usher tone, please. Nibbler. Nibbler gets stuck into this. Okay, let's have an osteotum. Lift the femur up, please. Okay. Can you appreciate that now? Yeah. Take that out. So, posture tone. Hopefully, you'll be able to sublux the tibia now and yeah. get the back of the tibia. Yes. Is is there still an osteophyte left there, or you? There is. Yeah, there is still a piece of bone there, and a very tight capsule, obviously. Yeah. Uh, homans, please. Three homans. Okay, it's coming this, into this view now. Attachment there. Okay. Another homans. Forceps. It's not a matter of patience. Four ships. So gently release this rather than pulling it off. Another woman's please give me this one. It's okay. So that's the bit which was come up in pieces now, but
Another piece of bone there, Homans, please. See that? Just it's quite a big osteophyte at the man. Yeah. Perhaps that was the one which that was, was the one which is causing, and the defect is what's causing that exaggerated virus, I guess. That must have been the uh, defective piece which got correct. Yeah, it's all the, I think that whole thing which have taken in pieces now yeah. is probably from the posterior medial tibia which has fragmented. There are cockers which can hold. Forceps. So now we are seeing the back of the tibia. A piece of bone here. Okay. So now the knee is completely subluxed and we can see bits and pieces. Uh, Right, nibbler, please, or rush it on. I'm just trying to release the capsule again. Small piece of extra piece of bone here. I don't know if you can see that needs to go as well. Osteotome. Hammer. Wibbler. Really working right at the back of the tibia now. Okay, wait, there's one more piece of bone there. Catch that. Talkers. And this is the capsule, yeah. the posterior capsule, which must be resected. It cannot be released. You know, I think you just have to release, cut this out completely. Yeah. And that's what gives the correction. 
cockroach you think most of these osteophytes are uh, removed now I, i think everything is out now maybe I... maybe we can check the extension gap now before yeah. going for the tibial cut again yes exactly i'm just trying to make sure that this entire thing is released okay let's see still tight on the medial side yeah. and there's hardly any extension gap uh let's make the give me the homans again homan the sorry another homans roughly how much was the thickness of the tibia which was removed the provision uh it was about uh, 7 mm or 9 mm on the maximum side we'll just recut the tibia now and then re try and rebalance the whole thing give me the jig again just the block So placing it to plus two angel wing. can you remove so one of the things i used to check the tibial cut is the attachment of the ilio tibial band which you can start seeing that it's going to come into way now oh one please so the moment the tibia starts getting attached to the tibial band that means that the length of the tibial cut size is pretty much correct um cockers forceps so that is where the tibial guard is tuberculis can you see that perhaps that, that is the limit of tibial resection that's the limit of tibial resection yes okay let's see where we are take this up one second so we're just getting about to zero now let's see we need to release more and may have to no if you give some traction how is it like is that no it's not but it's about there but i don't know if we have to cut more of femur but let me see if i can release more here so there's still more tightness on the medial side compared to the lateral side Moments, please. We lift the femur up. Let's do one thing. Let's do the box and take it from there. How how is the flexion gap? The flexion gap is okay. Uh, lift it up. It's again. It is still. If you can see, the flexion gap and extension gap is more or less equal at the moment. I don't know if we have to cut more tibia, but let me just clear the back of the femur some more. on the posterior medial aspect of the femur we have cleared the tibia but not exactly on the medial side of the femur so
पंच How far is the distal femur from the epicondylar attachment? It's uh, it's still far away. I mean, it's uh, as good as normal actually in the sense about a centimeter. I don't think there is more distal femur to be cut. I think it is uh, because the flexion extension gap is more or less equal on both sides. I mean, saw please. There is a small saw. Osteotum. small blade. I think that a lot of work needs to be done on the posterior medial femur. Uh, I think there is a bigger ostified there at the posterior condyle. Which... Pin remover. Pin remover. Okay. Focus. Hello. Yes. Uh, Dr. Deepak, uh, actually, the next case is about to start. Okay. The case of the day. But however, your surgery will be uh, displayed here, picture in picture on the screen. Sure. So you can continue. With it, yeah. I, I think I'm just yeah. next step would be to just clear the medial distal sure. femur. Sure. And I will show you if there is anything which sure. is... Sure, we'll uh, be following it up, but at the same yeah. time, we'll be switching over to the other theater now. Sure, no problem. Thank Lift you. Lift the femur up, please. You have to focus on the X-ray. And can I see what you're showing? There, there. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> so, let me know when we can start. Somebody from the... Dr. Harish, you can start yes. now. Yes. We are just uh, give us a couple of minutes. We will take the audience to the uh, case details, and okay. then in a couple of minutes, you'll be live. Okay, great. Let me know. Yeah. Uh, we need to have deputy cup. Deputy cup. Female with the post up right. Deputy cup. cup. Exit. Grip. Gription cup. All cup. Our plan is right. Total. So can you open that? And the deputy guy, who is the deputy guy? The patient had a history of trauma two years back, right? PFN was done two years back at some, elsewhere. And patient had a pain and discharging sinus in the right hip after one year after surgery. Implant removal done in our hospital at April 2023 due to inef infective non-union. There's a shortening of around two to three centimeters on the right side. This is the post-op, I mean, X-ray when the patient arrived to the hos our hospital after one year. We did implant removal, PFN removal, and kept an antibiotic spacer. Is the fracture united now or not united? No, no, sir, not at all. Not. No, oh. And the culture was like uh, E. coli. Now, yes. what is the ESR and CRP? These are recent CT images. Some medial calluses. Yes, it looks almost united. So this is this is a series of ESR. Now the recent ESR is fifty two and CRP is five point two eight. Great, uh, Dr. Harish, you're live. Uh, Dr. Anil will be moderating the session.
what you are showing i am seeing it there harish and no, no, no. what you are showing to them i need to see here so i can explain them on the screen i need to see your camera your camera should be on the screen also uh, Han- harish uh, 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 harish this vijay yeah. here that's Hi, not vijay. Po- that's not possible so you will see only what is on the okay uh, okay okay that's fine that's fine camera fine. okay so show them show them here because i want to make out few points now this is a lady who is about 5 feet tall quite large no, no. bulky even that shows only the top camera can you see the x ray uh, not yet uh, can the um... Yeah, we people show us the X-ray, please. Show the, the X-ray yes. on the screen. Yeah, we can see it now, Harish. Yeah. So this is a short lady, about five feet tall, quite uh, overweight, and that's not a very easy or difficult case to do, even in a primary scenario, because they usually have very small cup. Cup size doesn't go beyond forty-two, forty, forty-two, forty-four, and we cannot use very large head. Now this lady had a fracture, and if you can see the fracture size. it was a it plus subtrochanteric fracture the intertrochanteric area was split into two part the medial part which you can see here it is continuation of the medial calcar and the whole entire medial flap right down up to here so this medullary cavity which you see distally up to that point it is open it is c shaped cavity is not going to hold my implant my entire hold of a implant will come beyond this point which if you see on this x ray can you point you point it here on this x ray can you point and focus so the medullary cavity is starting from that point if you see the lower part it is very narrow cavity she was treated with a interlocking nail which probably was size 8 or 9 and the smallest stem we have here in bimod is 12 so i will have to now somehow get this rimmed with a power rimmer i have asked them to keep the power rimmer straight because we have to get it at least to size 12 now the proximal part looks reasonably okay but that is not so there is split into two part if you can see this cavity this is actual cavity with the anterior part and a medial part as one piece and a trochanteric part and this as a separate piece and it is opened up like that so inside the metaphysis is completely open so when i take the neck cut probably i will have one piece in the front which is the antero medial piece right from here now this part is healed to the shaft so patient is able to move the leg there is no mobility so i will have to detach this area and a posterior part of trochanter with this is again separate so i probably may not get a, any hold of my proximal ha coated component of the stem on this i may have to just wire them together so technically we will have to use a fixation which is down there try to get size 12 at least inside and then wrap these two pieces around the proximal the cup the size looks very small probably maybe 40 42 44 i hope i get up to 44 so i can get 28 head because with 22 they don't have any option of a neck they have just one neck option so uh, let's start now Uh, harish uh, even though yeah. the uh, the 12 uh, say size 12 12 is not the distal bit yeah so uh, uh, distal bit is only 7 7 so okay you should be okay with suddenly with the 12 for this patient yeah but why don't you leave the medial uh, bone intact and just do like an etu on the lateral side you'll get access and uh, you can just put your stem in there's no need to uh, take no, no. down the medial bone is access if you see lateral view the 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 proximal dimension give me artery the proximal cavity is in a different direction there is a posterior sloping cavity here can you focus on this if i enter i'll go out and this is a piece no, that, that's easier. okay but what you are saying is uh, like an etvo you just take the lateral fragment out and then you'll get access to your uh, distal canal and then you leave the uh, medial bit intact and then you can go without away without touching I mean, anything and, uh, without touching yeah. the medial side and uh, cut it over here etvo the displaced lateral side and then you just carry on like that i will see because i am yeah. not very sure whether this part will come in the way of my reaming yeah if it comes in the way then you got to remove yeah but uh, otherwise think... yeah otherwise you can go by posterior trochanteric etiostomy that, that, that's see right after right. i ream this because this there is a hole here the trochanteric part there was a the, the, there is no x ray there but there was a interlocking nail going from this area so you you will need to displace the lateral uh, part of the trochanter and the 
short eto you have displays yeah. Yeah. then you get access to your merler canal okay can you now see here back to the screen now normally if you can see your marker see this is your tip of the trochanter somewhere here because of the interlocking nail the incision is too far anterior if i go that far it's difficult to expose the hip posteriorly so this is your trochanter that's going to be your shaft over here so our incision ideally should be like this so we'll see sometime i take an incision starting from here and reflect this flap back and the facial incision goes along this line so i do not damage the edge of a skin here Can you pull? Can you pull there? Back in back, back in back. One, 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 one retracted here, one there. There will be your. Sucker, can you suck? One of you can suck. Knife, knife. Suck, please. Suck, retract it. Attack. Knife. No, I need the previous one. This is too small a knife for this patient. Can you get a bigger knife? Do you have broader, bigger retractors? Where is the knife? One more thing. Let's act it here. You have a self retaining system, bigger one. One put here, two self retaining, broad one. One more.
This is your gluteus maximus with the fascia. It is necessary to identify various layers first so that you know exactly where is your gluteus medius and then you can protect it during dissection because usually in this patient with a interlocking nail insertion, some amount of damage to gluteus medius has happened. Sister, keep mops here. Keep more mops here. These are gospices, mops. Knife for me. Retract it here. Please. Here is your those cement spacer beads. We'll take them out later. We'll let us see the. You have got a big retractor. Can you retract it here? Behind. So this is your posterior part. And you need to explore the posterior part of your trochanter. And go down and see where is your gluteus maximus tendon here. I would like to release that so that you can get the flap properly exposed. So if you can put it down here. and put the retractor down here, okay. Do you have a cautery? Yes. So this is your G max, keep it a little longer. Can you all see that? It is important to release the gluteus maximus tendon so you can get the flap behind, especially in a post pre any previous surgery is there, then the whole thing is stuck very severely. You have got a marking pain, marking ink. We mark the muscle when it is cut. Easy to repair it afterwards. Pull. Sister, do you have? Uh, Cut rice. Take it a little longer. There. Diamond for me? You don't have a longer one? Okay, this one is only there. Okay, can you contrast? Stuck there. Take me. Contrast. Contrast. 
David. More for me. Pottery. Stuck there. Yeah, that's good. Now that we have identified, that's the posterior trochanteric margin over here. You can see the gluteus medius. Can you see that? That's the gluteus medius, which is intact. There is some amount of damage going to be here because there is a insertion point. And uh, we'll remove those antibiotic beads. Mark for me. Can you pull there? Pull there. Can you lift it up a little bit? Thoda, sister, can you lift it up? There, wonderful. Little up. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Put a retractor there, higher up. Mop for me. Keep the mops here. I can pick it up myself. Go deep. You have got a nibbler or a holder. Can you just hold and pull it out? Give a gentle outward traction. So I can feel where it is coming. Now don't keep twisting it. Just keep gentle traction. So I know exactly where it is going. You have to suck. You have to suck. One hand, give one, put one retractor with one hand, go there. There you are. And uh, just give a gentle traction on that. Don't twist it because it will. Okay. Can you put below this? That, that too. Can you see? Hold, grip, and hold, and then give attraction. Right? Uh, go deep there. Wonderful. A lot of fibrosis around it because of previous infection. The whole thing is stuck in the soft tissues. You have to remove them, protecting the gluteus medius also. We have to make sure that we don't damage it when you are trying to remove these beads. How have they kept it? There has to be another line, right? Oh, 
more here behind. You have to pull there, pull in the front. It is the, it's going in the front there. Can you, yeah, can, can you take this? Oh, give it to me. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, and six. There are only six, right? Okay, great. Are there seven? If there is a seven, that must be left inside as a remnant of the previous surgery. Anyway, we'll not worry too much about it now. Huh? Are there seven? Are there six? Let's try to check. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yes, there is seven. So there will be one somewhere inside. We'll see if it can come very easily. It, yeah, there is something here. We will find out. It, it must be somewhere nearby. Where is the cautery? Good. Suck, 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 suck. Suck there. It cannot go too far away from. Take me. No, there are all hardened fibrous tissue which initially feel like beads, but yes, you are right. There you are. Good. Seventh one is out. Let's see. Now, this is the basic anatomy. Now, as you can see, once we have removed these beads, identified the posterior structures. Do we have a Chanley retractor system? Yes, yes. Can you get Chanley? Yes. Hmm? Chanley alone won't be enough. Uh, I like it from the top because then it doesn't come in the way of your reaming. You have a larger prongs of this Chanley, bigger prongs, deeper prongs. Hold it. Don't put too much pressure because you are on a soft tissue. That fat will tear. You know, you are not on the fascia. That's it. That's it. Just hold it. It's holding. Don't retract it too much. It will damage the tissues there. So, can we see now? This is the gluteus medius portion of that. Can you see? Let's expose it a little bit more. Knife for me. I'll go little proximal. Retract it there. Retract it there. Deep retractor. Deep broad retractor system. That's a too small. Get a broad one. And if you don't have an adequate, then if you have divers, the divers, those circular ones they use in a general surgery, get the set of divers system. Pull it here. Okay. So now we can see that's your gluteus medius. That, Diamond, diamond forceps. Touch me. Cauterize. Good, good, good. That's enough. Okay. Cauterize again. You have to cauterize on the top. You don't have to go deep. So now we will go from here. Can you all see the gluteus medius here? That's the back of your trochanter. I suppose. 
Yes, sir. You can see. You need to have retracted down if you can get. There you are. Get that long narrow retractor. Long narrow. Keep the retractors nearby. Long narrow. Hold it there. Leader somewhere. You have to retract this. Okay. Sister, you got a long cautery tip. Can you give me? Or the pencil tip. What is the blood pressure? Can you keep it around 100, madam? BP, can you keep it around 100, 90, 100? She's a young patient, shouldn't be a problem. Harish, you have uh, already released the glute max, I presume. This is a posterior flap which you are reflecting from the, this is a part of a, Posterior edge of a trochanter. Yes. This is a gluteus maximus tendon which you are detached. Yes. These are the uh, quadratus femoris. I take everything together till the gluteus minimus. It will reflect the posterior flap and see the bone from the posterior part. So we'll be going by the posterior approach. And then I may go in the front where the beads were there as a part of a tent approach. So we can get both side exposure for the acetabulum. We do that only if it is required. We'll see how the things go. That's me. Got rising. That's me. Keep, keep, keep contrasting. So you got a curved osteotum, broad curved osteotum. You don't have one with a larger wooden handle. This is not very deep system. If you are operating on an obese patient, you must have a deeper instrument, you know, which can go deep because there is a pad of fat which is almost about eight six to eight inch deep and then you are going to do something and then at the bottom you have got a very small acetabulum so retract cautery mm -hmm. you have to rotate it this way okay Sister, you don't have a longer one.
you need to have cotridy which is flat you know you can bend it and go below that curvature there is a beader there i need a diamond this Okay, give me something longer, sister, because it is not going deep enough. I think he's okay, now. There is a beader over there. Touch me. Cauterize. Suck. Somebody suck, please. Suck there. You have... Cauterize. Keep, keep cauterizing. They're fine. Oh, please. You know, somewhere there. Extend and do that too. You have to put a retractor there. One there. And you have a long one to go behind. You, you Did you get the dewar, sister? Suck inside. This channel is not working very well. Can you do that? When you retract there, be careful there. Huh? Don't. Yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine. You got a flat tip one, Cotri. Long flat tip one. You got the long handle this because it's not I'm not able to control it so far down. Right angle deep, deep right angle. You have to show me there. Can you show me there? No, you have to do it. You can do it better. From Okay, we are going there. So you upgrade it, upgrade it. Suck there. Hmm. 
lot of scarring posteriorly harish sorry i am trying to expose the posterior flap the tissues are quite a uh, lot of scarring vascular come again there is lot of scarring because of the previous operation and there was an infection which was removed and debrided so it's little bit of a vascular uh if you can see now i don't know whether you can see from there this is the posterior part of a neck i am exposing the back of the now can you see that see somebody has to tie it up it is going down just tie it up properly this is the neck that's the acetabulum edge okay i'll expose it below this make a vertical neck in the infra acetabular area put my blunt hormone over there and go in the front to release the antero superior part over here and then i'll dislocate the hip i'm just so being little slow because like you able to dislocate the hip with the uh, scarring and things or would you consider uh, no, i will see me. most likely i would be able to do it okay but we have to have a little bit of a patient i'm little hampered because i don't have a long handle instrument yeah no 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 perfectly understandable because it's not a it's got a lot of residual scarring hello sakri so this is the infra acetabular space where your tear drop would be lower down you have blunt homan blunt homan this guy he got him take this back so this is your inferior part remove this now can you just give me a gauze or a pack sister do you have a pack just hold it down here now you have to this is the abductor can you see doctor this abductor you are reflecting it up you are also going for darshan and you are reflecting this posterior flap behind here you with me tomorrow morning you you doing sir it's easy for you to pull this down that's fine wonderful deep is not there that is first time Itemala, give me a curved ostrum, long handle curved ostrum. If you are straight one, also will do this. Ha, huh, that's better. See, now we are exposing the upper part of our acetabulum. Can you see that? This is your neck. That's the portion of a labrum. Now you can see the head, right? Head is damaged because of the infection. The cartilage is gone. can you try to reflect this up now you have to go deep and reflect it up wonderful and tuck there you can see now the joint fluid coming out that the simulation of abductor hold this now give this to me hold it here now this is tight over here so we'll go and release from the front give me a pack or a mop one of the reason the hip doesn't dislocate behind is your anterior capsular fibrosis which prevent it from going behind remove this that is because of the previous surgery from the front yeah so we will go in the front release from the front and we'll see whether we can uh, get the head out harish i would uh, suggest yeah. that you do the eto now only like the eto uh, that lateral fragment will be displaced now then there is uh, everything will uh, be very easy for you there is a this is they are connected to each other should sure.
So um, if you put a homens under the vastus lateralis, mm-hmm. then you will know where your uh, sort of uh, fibrous union is there, the lateral fragment. So I can feel that fibrous that is here. Yeah, That's then if you just problem, protect right? the vastus lateralis, then everything will fall into place. Yeah. I normally like to see from the front. Hold it like this. Okay. So, is this a cautery for me? A regular, this thing? Retractor here. Remove this. Deep retractor. So, this is your anterior lap. Mm-hmm. One retractor here. Get one more. One here. Yeah, this is not helping us at all. Coming in a way. Just hold a broad retractor, broad one. That's it, that's it. Deeper one. Leave it deeper one. Just hold it there. So this is your sub, please. Give me a glove. Seven and a half. Here you are, Topic. Left. Diamond for me. Touch. Pottery. Yeah. Yeah. Rotated externally.
रिटेक्ट है गोडी Go deep here, go deep here. So this is your anterior flap. We are reflecting everything from the anterior part of a neck. So we can get the anterior exposure to the hip. Now let's see where you are. Okay, there we are. You can't go deep than this. Lift it up. There is a leader somewhere. We need to retract. There. You have to go deep and take all the soft tissues which I'm reflecting it from the front. Lift it up and you know, Give me a long ostrotum. You have to pull, you have to pull. Can you flex it and rotate it externally? Flex it, come. Oh, no, no, no. External, external. External, yeah. And flex it a little bit. Wonderful. And pull it there. So this is the anterior part of a neck. Rotate it externally. There you are. Can you see the entry capsule? See this? Yeah. <laughs> rotate, rotate externally, externally. Try to get gently a figure of four. Try to get gently a figure of four. You won't get it this way. This way. There you are, there you are. Now we have released the capsule from the front to the acetabulum. Can you see that acetabulum? Yes, yes, Harish. You've shown us from the anterior now, right? Sorry, we are now in front of the neck. There's the entry part of a neck. You can see when we remove it, there's, there's going to be the head. Can you so see the shiny part of it? You think it'll be easier to dislocate posteriorly, or are you so going now? To... Once, yeah, now once I release the entire capsular attachment here, usually it is less difficult to detach on dislocate behind. This entire tightness, entire capsular thickness usually prevent the posterior dislocation. Let us see. Hold it like this, now. Hold it like this. 
इधर ट्रैक करो इधर now we are going against behind you need a broader attack like this you have a lever yeah the broad one can you hold one lever there there or there pull okay just a minute hook for me Hold it, hold it. If it comes, then well. If it doesn't, then we can cut it from the front and from the back. Blunt homan for me. Yeah, that let it be. Leave it. Leave this. And down. Is there a retractor here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hook for me. No, it's very stuck somewhere. We'll cut and then get it out. So for me, no, Mala, the broad retractor. You need to retract and show me the inch. Broad, broad, broad. This way, and you have got a straight homan, straight narrow homan. Just protect it there. So, we'll cut the neck. Own hook. Hold it. Pull in the front. Pull in the front. Give me a gauze. Take me. Sorry, sorry. Leave it. Put into this. Now you can easily pull. Pull. There you are. You need a. This is not adequate. Deep retractor. Deeper. Deeper. There. Pull. Release. Relax it. You don't need to do this. Pull there. Oh. Full. It happened to me. You mean you have owl? Uh, they put a cage. Uh, some the cage got box crew. Put a two hundred mm cemented stuff. Full. Full. So, when I was on leave, we went somewhere. No assistance from the. Bit 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 over. The big E T O attack everything out. At the end of the big at the end of the big accident. Hammer. Revise the stem. It's a killer. Hammer. Pull, karo, pull, karo. Hope challenges. I had one knee revision that day. I finished the femoral cementing, tibial cementing. I see insert head. Then I had to do a femoral revision on table. I think I no choice. But femoral dal dia, tibial dal dia. You have that? The trial is. Trial pura kar diya. Trial pole andar chhod de. Baad mein. Oh, 
पॉटरी फॉर्म ही रिट्रैक्ट इट देयर तो मैं किया क्यों है तेरा हुआ है तो यू जस्ट डिड ट्रायल यू पुट क्लोज द वुंड मेंटेन अगेन हां ओके बाहर चीज कर रहा था It's all a fibrous tissue inside. Why God? This will hold. It has a handle, right? The knee, knee sir. Show me the head. Show me the head. Take all the soft tissue out. Harish, all, uh, yeah. can we go off uh, live for a few minutes because we just want to hear the completion of the knee surgery that's going on in the adjacent theater. Harish, we'll come back to you. Yes, go ahead, uh, Deepak Anil here. Go ahead. Uh, hi, Anil. So we managed to achieve full correction. so that's a full extension we've got so what exactly for the benefit of the audience what exactly was done to so basically there was a large and your so there was a large osteophyte behind the posterior medial femur and also the tibia obviously tibia we saw that that was a broken fragment from the osteophyte from the medial tibia but there were a couple of large osteophytes on the medial femur side as well blocking the extension we had to recut the tibia uh, but not beyond the level of the iliotibial band insertion and i just had to um, release a lot on the posterior side before i could get full extension there was no need to recut femur as such as so to how did you the achieve the extension gap and how did you balance it with the flexion gap so basically the flexion the distal femur we initially cut 11 i don't know if you were there we cut 11 yes. initially yes. and then we had yes. made a preliminary tibial cut yes and uh, then the where the extension gap was very very narrow very very tight yes. yes yes so the i just had to clear the posterior aspect of it more importantly than recut the distal femur yeah we were had, uh, i rechecked my distal femur again mm -hmm. i put the pins again just to make sure that i have cut enough uh but uh, just reshaping the distal femur that was not the important point the most important thing that uh, i was not doing was to clear the back of the femur and the tibia so you make which eventually we achieved that okay so now can you take it through the range of flexion extension please so show that uh, this thing camera so we are in full extension that's how it's going can you see yeah we can see that i think there so was can you show the sagittal prof from the lateral side so that... why the patellar tendon is appearing lax yeah on the extension it is appearing lax and that's probably normal because of the way it was in flexion for so many years uh but there's a good flexion extension balancing the tibia looks straight i mean the knee looks straight can you just show the lateral side of it Can you see? Yeah, we can see. We can see that well. Okay, because I am not able to see the monitor deformity. Yeah, that's fine. That looks good. That looks yeah. tracking well. So this is the extension. Can you see the extension, which is zero? Yes, yes, it's fully corrected, and you yeah. got a good range of flexion with good patellar tracking also. Yeah. So that was what it was. Actually, it was more of the distal cuts, the tibial cuts. Uh, I had to do a tibial cut because that was a preliminary cut. but apart from that it was the soft tissue and the osteophytes at the back which needed to be cleared yes and that's so probably the most important lesson the take home was that it was a flexion deformity fixed flexion deformity of 30 degrees approximately yeah an extra 2 mm of the distal femur correct cleared the posterior osteophytes correct the posterior capsule and thereby achieved a balancing of the extension flexion gaps correct 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 and the so the take home message is not to recut again and stop sorry residual patellar tendon laxity is probably due to the fixed flexion deformity correct where a little bit of aggressive physio before the quadriceps reaches its optimal strength correct correct so no. the take home message basically is not to go on recutting the tibia or the femur it's yes. about releasing the posterior aspect and the medial aspect thoroughly yeah. and uh, make sure that is completely free don't keep on cutting 
distal. So the more distal femur you cut, you elevate the joint line. You exactly the joint line. That is not warranted. You have already yes. cut two millimeters. The next That's step more than you enough. Do, yeah. Release the posterior capsule. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak. Uh, good, Thank you very much. Thanks. For a good demonstration. Thank you very much. Thank you. We go back to Harish, who's uh, just osteostomized the neck and exposing the acetabulum for reconstruction. Yeah. This is your anterior one. Harish, you are exposed from the front and the back. Yeah. Right? There, are, there is a lot of fibrosis, and the whole thing is stuck. Very well, we can see it from the front, but this is a significant deform. Two pieces are actually separate out like that. The trochanter is out and the lesser trochanter like this. So we'll have to disconnect them. Otherwise, we can't access the distal femur. So what is your plan? Uh, you've uh, exposed... So we'll dis yeah, expose this part and then disconnect them. So you plan to now like, disconnect the fragments to get a better yeah. exposure? Yeah. The trochanter is with the proximal one. If we dissect it over here and get osteotomy, my fracture stem is somewhere at least. Nice from here, uh, pottery. Nice. Now for me. It right here. That's it. So yes, what is the plan now, Harish? You are planning to disengage the fragments? I'll disengage. I'll take a... Because they are osteo... I mean, they are fused. They are not uh, independent. They are not, <clears throat> not healed. Diamond. Can osteotomize from that area up up to here. 
hold it and it should come in that area right up to here pottery retract it here give me osudum you have broad one broad and curved one hammer You have curved or shouldn't? Broad curved. Curved or shouldn't? Mm -hmm. Hold it, rotate it a little bit. Hammer. Not have to go all the way down. Take it over there. Hello, loud the phone, loud the phone. You want to talk to me? You ask him. Why are you doing the cross leg? You will get upset. You might, you might have another surgery. Doctor, both are like every job kill them. I have two hundred. I have two fifty. No, you push. Push a six meter. Possible that we can just keep the distal part stuck there, hmm. or should we detach everything because it's easy that way. Non 
he said he was very angry also everybody told him, don't even touch him let him do what is aisa mer ko bola main chup ho gaya tha malum hai प्रैक्टिकल जो वन ग्राम प्लॉक्स वन ग्राम जेंटा व्हाट एवर एंड वन ग्राम मेट्रो टू बी रिपीटेड एवरी टू आवर्स व्हाट एवर जोकिंग जोकिंग या इट इज डन एज यू विश फ्रंट रिट्रैक्टर ब्रॉड रिट्रैक्टर पॉट्री is why say there are people with rectory in fact significantly deformed heads coming walking sitting and squatting i said i don't need anything in now because we've gone to somebody and said no no i'll do da and all no i said no no we are not treating x ray we are treating the patient no, no, no. but what i'm saying is they so i said sir udhar bola tha emergency kar rahi hai ye bola i said no we hold it we will respond to this no give me a uh, right angle chota small retractor right, smaller one yeah a little bigger than that any pull no that's okay mri yeah this classical no two mri blown up with arrows showing some <laughs> that is your superior capsule we are reflecting the this is the medial portion along with the lesser trochanter we are reflected that the trochanter is like this the lesser trochanter like this they are split out like this so we went like this lifted the trochanter off so now this fragment contain the neck portion the lesser trochanter and it goes down but it is not a end the cavity is the third portion shaft is the third there are three part things so this is one part the second part and down will be the shaft that we have to still go and see so first we have to just release this so that i can identify get it in the front and we can finish your acetabulum first dinner idhar hi hai dinner idhar hi idhar nahi pata bahar okay leave it leave it that's fine now can you pull little down remove this now remove this no 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 we are getting it out now in the front hold it just like a one second set the fixation you are talking about the fixation okay not the fixation phone hook for me Can you pull it down, yeah. or take a right angle retractor, small? Yeah. Hold it. Just give a gentle pull. 
Harish, you're working your way now anteriorly again. Uh, because the trochanter is gone. See, this was the trochanter here. Yes. And this was the anterior part and a lesser trochanter. Mm -hmm. This fragment were split and they partially were healed. Now, this okay. fragment is not going down into the shaft. This is the entry slice. My shaft is somewhere here at the third fragment. So, I have taken this thing out. I am reflecting it up. Entry, there are, this is the entry part of a neck. So Once I release this capsule, seeing... I can bring it down. I can get acetabulum as a more direct exposure. Okay. Once I finish this, I will go down here. Here mm -hmm. will be the shaft because this fragment is not a part of a shaft again because it is shattered and gone out. The no. shaft is over here. You follow me? Yeah. Definitely. So it's a three pieces deformed completely and the proximal part and of the is split attachment. into two pieces. Sorry? So this is the capsular thickening attachment to the anterior portion. If I release it, No. Okay, that's okay. Really, this chodo chodo. Now this, mala osudam that's it. Give me osudam. No, sorry. So, hold it there. Hold it there. This is the entry part of the head. Take this. Yeah, that's fine. And that, that's okay. That's okay. Do you have a bigger hook which can pull it down? Now you can see the acetabulum. Somewhere in between the two. It's too big. This is a wire passer. You have, give me the retractor. Cool. Uh, this might be better. This is better. And just to pull this with this. Sorry, not this. Pull this. <coughs> pull. There you are. Wonderful. Okay. Mala, give me a Chanle pin. Superior pin. Chanle pin, the one with the chain. Okay. Blunt woman for me. Gently hold it. Holding it. Hold it down. Don't pull down. Pull. Okay. Uh, you don't have one with a handle. You have one with a handle. No, not that. There is a channel pin which has got a chain and other end. No. Okay. This you cannot negotiate because you don't have a you don't have a handle on this. Have to give me handle. No? no, that is, but it doesn't give a grip. You are standard, just just a stamen pin, ordinary stamen pin. No, no, the handle is required. Hold this. Pull, pull, pull. One sec, one sec. There you are. Hammer.
ओके ये छोड़ो डाउन एंड होल्ड इस यू हैव गोट राइट एंगल होमन 90 डिग्री होमन शार्प होमन 90 डिग्री होमन एंगल्ड होमन दिस इज नॉट द वन चलो रिट्रैक्ट यस When you hold this, you have to push it in and down. Sister, leave it. He will hold it. Push it in. Push it in and down. No, it's too big, too thick. It, the acetabulum is very narrow, very small. Okay. So you need to go be big, deep inside and reflect in the front. Uh, could the cameraman increase the brightness of the light, please? It's a little dark. Okay. Panjan holder. Change it, sister. Don't keep. Get a new one. Panjan holder. Two hours. Two hours. Here, 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 here. Down. राइट एंगल रिटेक्टर डीपर बिग ब्रॉड वन ब्रॉड एंड डीप कैन यू रिट्रैक्ट इट देर फोर से You got osteotum, sharp osteotum. Give me another os. Uh, no, no, no. The diamond pin. One more diamond pin. Ten diamond pin. You don't have right angle homan, ninety degree homan, sharp one. T K R के लिए आप use नहीं करते. This is too big. The problem you know with this, I'll break the posterior wall, mallet, and then it comes in the way. Hold it. ये छोड़ो. Hmm. Hammer. Hold it. Gauze. Hey, children, it's not required. Can you hold? Push it down and gently. No, no, no. If it do this, now give me gauze. Gently. Okay, with a finger gently. Forceps. You have to go and suck there. The acetabulum is filled with a lot of fibrous tissue. We have to identify the edges. And then remove all the fibrous tissue inside it. This way, this way, this way, and down. You have got a long nibbler system.
So please. Either, either you can retract. Broad retractor. Deaver will do. Yeah, give it to me. Can you just take the fat out? Gently, gently. Not too much of a pressure. Can you see that now? I am clearing the acetabulum of the fibrous tissue, which is completely filled it up. Nibbler. Panjan holder. Can you get a clean? Mm -hmm. We are somewhere now seeing semblance of acetabulum there. Okay, great. Forcep, long forcep. Sir, please. Thank you. Give me a diamond. Thank you. Don't suck when I. Uh, Panjan holder. Long handle knife. Problem, you know, the fat just comes inside, you know. Sorry, I need a nibbler. Now, this is the posterior wall of the acetabulum. Yeah, just, just hold it, just hold it. There you are. Thoda andar ja ke na? Haan, there you are. Don't pull too much. Just to take that overhanging fat away because it just goes inside your field of vision. Then you can't see anything. Take this. Four step for me. Take that out. Yeah. You have a blunt hormone? Thank you. Can you pull there? Pull there? Pull, pull, pull as much as you can. Just put full hand and then pull properly. Pull that anterior flap. Wonderful. Very good. You are doing a good job. This is a reflected head of rectus femoris. If you release this head, the anterior flap goes very easily in the front. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, yeah. This has to go, this has to go in. 
now go pull pull that way there you are there you are you are doing good job all did yeah very good very good wonderful okay so we have defined the acetabulum nibbler for me sponge on holder and start with reamer what is the size of the head ah uh, spike will break the tissues are tight the bone is osteoporotic if i put a spike to reflect my tissue it will hinge on my anterior wall and before i realize it will break in so you have to struggle unfortunately so that others can see you know and uh, i don't have much of a leeway because the acetabulum looks very small ah uh, 39 i thought so so now we have to try to get at least hopefully 44 you know so we are going to play to the edge start with 39 please curate for me first sorry broader broader acetabulum curate not this one अरे बड़ा क्यूरेट है ना टी हैंडल वाला दिस इज अ स्पून ब्रदर दिस इज नॉट अ क्यूरेट द बिग एसिडेबल क्यूरेट विद अ टी हैंडल ऑन द बैक देन ही चेंज ओके लेट मी गो देन ही शिफ्ट आस्क देम शिफ्ट द पेज देन आई सेड व्हाई आर यू शिफ्टिंग यू कैन इवन पोस्ट इन योर केस इट्स आ दैट इज द वन देयर यू आर नो यू हैव टू जस्ट लिटिल फैट आउट दैट्स इट बिकॉज़ ऑल आर क्यूरेशंस देन इफ आई माय केस इज पुश्ड आई विल बी डूइंग इन द नाइट ट्रीमर फॉर मी you are taking uh, depu right yeah this is 39 no sir, no no i give me 39 give me 39 don't give me too small prima. now this is a acetabulum sorry so you define the margins you're starting where you uh, decide the margin i have seen the margin i have seen the inferior part that's a tal if you can see in that soft tissue there somewhere down the line no protrusion no the floor is looking a little there is not significant protrusion is on is floored on the bottom means i do not have much of a medial depth so this is 39 are you on remor or no no looks like you're going to be with a small okay. cup, harish 40 i have no option but to at least try to go to 44 where i can get 28 head uh and then that head could be then ceramic they don't have 22 ceramic head and she is a very young patient so cup i will see 41 increase by 1 please increase by 1 you gave me 40 before you have the depu bantam cups available they have from 40 onward they are there See, I hardly rim. I can see black sponge and holder. Can you keep two, three sponge and holder ready, brother? Sponge and holder. Can you keep two, three ready here, and get me a little fresh mop? No, I need this before I actually rim. Get two, three of them. Beta, idhar dekha, dekhega tu. Then you can see later, right? uh enter i am already on the edge 42 okay be careful i am trying to cheat on the posterior side that's okay that's okay you have to use a the reamer there a uh, right, retractor pull pull deep retractor can you go on the edge and show me this edge can you see that can you see that if you show me that edge that will be brilliant forty three 
we use 43 and then I use 44 trial. Okay. Give me 44 trial. Gription 44, if you have one, let me check first. Okay, great. Just hold it there. Hammer for me. When you hammer, never use handle of the hammer. Use head and gently tap the position. You have to suck, otherwise it will splatter on our face. Can you suck? Can you suck? Yes. Suck deep. This sound looks good to me. Pakado jara, pakado. And you have got, can you see? Adequate up and so down. Good fit. With the 44. So you got a good capture here. It's 44. It's 44 right? I will not increase the size to 46. Right. Because I will remove probably the front by then. The head was 39. So open. this is a 44 cup? 44 cup. Gription open please. Yeah, Pakado. Panjan holder. Oh, nice. We came back together. So we went into the city. I know this was too much with us. They have nice kidney. Nibbler for me? Very good. Can you go deep and take this fat white thing out? No. There you are. We have to be gentle there, huh? Gentle. Something will break. Defect like that, uh, it's always not. We are almost bottomed out. Can you see that? There is no yeah, medial the flow. Correct. Uh, bone, cancellous bone, but anteroposterior superior is adequate cancellous bone. So I wouldn't like to deepen it more. I'll just see what my 44 gription cup. Hey, see that, Karo. Yeah, there you are. Now, anti-origin wise, I do not worry about origin. All this. Now, I am very rigid here. Should be okay. I wouldn't put screw at this stage. Trial liner. We'll have to see what liner we want to use. We have got two options here. One is neutral liner, one is plus four offset with posterior wall. Uh, neutral will give you better range, plus four will give you maybe little posterior laxity. You can see the acetabulum is now flush. Can you see that? You're not uh, using screws, Harish, and you're using the trial liner? Uh, no, no, no. This is trial liner. I'm going to put trial liner. Okay. Usually, I don't use a screw if I get a good anteroposterior and superior capture. And okay. there's a gription, so it has got a very good scratch fit. So usually it works very well. No need for a cup. Uh, no need for a screw in many cases. So we'll wait. We'll uh, Harish, considering that she's a small patient, uh, plus four offset and they're going to use a distal fitting stem, I don't think a plus four liner would go. So you need to go only for a standard liner. You may as well as finish it. And ceramic, I may not use ceramic liner. I'm just use poly. No, not ceramic. Poly only I'm saying. Huh. Plus four offset will be too much because it's a very small socket size. Therefore, it's a low offset patient. And you also need to use a distal fitting stem, which have intrinsically high offset stems. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I have, that is the reason I'm not putting any liner now. No, what I'm saying is, uh, as well as put the real liner inside, I'm saying. Uh, well, it'll take hardly two minutes to do it. Of course it does. Hello, mop for me. T-handle, Colonel. You have something to hold and remove. Liar, cuddle the. If you have a channel pin, you just have a handle and rotate and it comes out easily. Here we are spending yeah, more time. Yeah. This. Right. Yeah. 
Hammer. All this. Mob for me. Fresh mob. Now the fun begins. Okay, remove, remove, remove. the cockery, keep it back. Now we have either Karo. Mop for me. Yes, the pocket of. So this was the posterior fragment which were partly removed. 